Happy Valentine's Day, everybody, and welcome to the Fearless Floyd Show. As always, I am your host, Fearless Floyd. And today is Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2023. And to each and every one of you out there, happy Valentine's Day. May your day be safe, harmonious, <laughs> gentle, kind, with peace. Uh, no drama, and uh, everybody gets home safely <laughs> or goes to sleep safely. Uh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> it is Valentine's Day. So you see, I got my little Valentine's Day red shirt on, you know, Valentine's Day colors. So uh, I'm in the festive spirit with you guys. So, uh, I hope you enjoy your day with your loved one or loved ones, uh, depending on if you're a Mormon or not. Can't leave them out, right? Okay, today's show, <clears throat> action packed lineup. Today is girl day. I like girls. Ladies, girls, women, we like them. <laughs> So at one o'clock, I have Ann LaFleur, as always, coming on, give you updates. She's at one, two o'clock. America's mom, Erica Kilday, will be back with us. Uh, I don't know exactly what she's going to cover today. Um, she, I'm sure she'll send me a text here in a minute and let me know. And then at four o'clock, I have a special guest for you guys. Um, her name is Kayla Fitz. And uh, she was apparently arrested and taken into custody in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Spent six months in jail. They took her children away from her uh, just for asking questions. Uh, of course, she uh, somehow obtained the body camera footage. And, you know, you, you see this sergeant in the background, you know, big old white guy, big old big fat belly like they all have because they can't keep themselves in shape because they don't have any discipline. Um, they lack fortitude. Uh, over them sovereign citizens. Uh, this is a commentary on you, bro. That just shows you how totally stupid and ignorant you are to use an oxymoron to describe somebody that has two opposite definitions. And I can be more than happy to go get the depth though dictionary and look up the two words and prove it to you but next time you hear somebody use that just tell them hey, you are the dumbest mother in the face of the planet okay and we're going to leave it like that okay because there's no such thing as a sovereign citizen it's an oxymoron so anytime you hear somebody use that term oxymoron as a sovereign citizen correct them don't ever use that term again okay it's, it's persona non grata it's the, they've they've taken sovereign citizen and they've adapted American state national with those two terms. OK, they don't know what the hell they're doing. They're just reading these blotters that come across their desk. And like, OK, American state national is a new sovereign citizen. All right. Well, that's it, boys. That's what I'm going to do. That's it. Thank you, Southern Poverty Law Center, for everything you don't do and uh, all those rights you don't uphold. Yeah, I'm going to call you out every chance I get because you guys you don't help people. So the Southern Poverty Law Center does not help people. Absolutely not. They pick and choose which cases they want to go represent so they can justify their existence. That's my commentary on the Southern Poverty Law Center and the oxymoronic term and the usage, ignorantly, of sovereign citizen. So there's your little tutorial for that. Uh, yeah, I've kind of had a wound up day. I was up till, I don't know. Oh, God, at past midnight talking to uh, Dr. Mary Dressler in Hawaii. She's four hours behind me. So, you know, it's, you know, casual night for her. For me, it's late. And then, of course, uh, just my mind, I was up till 420. Uh, that was the last time I looked at the clock and fell time uh, before I went to sleep. And then, of course, I was, you know, up at about 745. And I uh, came downstairs and answered emails, telegrams, uh, had a couple phone call conversations, and uh, had a doctor's appointment, and we went over my brain scan. I know. 
that was my pineal. We, we addressed. Uh, it's, it's pretty much, uh, we're going to go over it. I did record the video. I did get permission. I told you guys I was going to document this. So I want to see, want you guys to see what it looks like for me, because I am patient zero in this. Uh, and it's going to be real neat uh, to be that particular, that person. Uh, so I'm excited about doing it. Um, yeah, I think you should be excited about doing it because uh, uh, the knowledge he gains from doing research on me with my whole mouth, almogram, metal, mercury fillings uh, before, you know, while they're in my mouth. And then after I have them removed and replaced with uh, a non-toxic uh, filling cap, crowns, whatever that looks like, because uh, there's going to be a lot of it. Uh, that will uh, allow him to be able to gain more insight and knowledge of exactly what this is, does to people. Um, the uh, rate of deterioration, the time that they've been in my mouth, um, just all kind of things, uh, all kind of variables. So um, all it does is benefit you guys, your kids, your kids' kids, because this is, you know, Technology is going to come into the future uh, based on his research. He's dealing with dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, all these brain issues that we have, uh, chronic wasting disease, which are the uh, mad cow disease, but, you know, it, it, we have it. It's prions, and that's why some of these people are, you know, they, they, they just go nuts so quick uh, because the um, encephalitis prions are in their brain, eating their brain. Uh, and creating and make, make basically making Swiss cheese out of their brain. Looks like a sponge. Um, so that's where it starts doing those disconnects with the cognitive ability and functions, motor skill functions, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm real thrilled about that. Um, I will have Dr. Ron eventually on the show. It's, that's a scheduling thing. That guy's super busy. You know, when you're a world renowned brain specialist, you were, uh, you know, uh, you're always busy. So we're going to dive into Kayla. I will have her back um, probably Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Uh, probably Thursday at four. I'll uh, have her come on with Jesse, Brian, and Eric and talk about their case with those two guys. Uh, I have my own input to do, I have my own pathway to take um, simply because. This event happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, I'm going to show you guys a little something, something. You know, tell you guys all the time that, you know, I, I'm just kind of a unique person. Um, just, it's real weird. Um, you, you'll never meet anybody like me or who's done the things that I've done. All right. This was uh, issued July 9th, 2020. Uh, McGirt versus Oklahoma Supreme Court case. Okay. Basically what this is, is uh, let me find held. For MCA purposes, land reserved for the Creek Nation since the 19th century remains Indian country. Okay. Now, to back that holding, because that's what this whole case is about, and I'll, and I'll read you this. The Major Crimes Act, MCA, provides that within the Indian country, any Indian who commits certain enumerated offense shall be subject to the same law and penalties as all other persons committing any other any of those offenses within the exclusive jurisdiction of the United States, Title 18, United States Code 1153A. Indian country includes all land within the limits of any Indian reservation under the jurisdiction of the United States government, Section 1152 of Title 18, which is interesting. They have that under a criminal code. Petitioner 
Jimmy McGirt was convicted by an Oklahoma state court of three serious sexual offenses. He unsuccessfully argued in state post-conviction proceedings, which that was rid of habeas corpus, that the state lacked jurisdiction to prosecute him because he is enrolled, he is an enrolled member of the Seminole Nation and his crimes took place on the Creek Reservation. He seeks a new trial, which he contends must take place in federal court. Okay, Congress established a reservation for the Creek Nation. An 1833 treaty fixed borders for a permanent home on the whole Creek Nation of Indians <clears throat> after they freaking walked us across the United States from Alabama and the Trail of Tears to Oklahoma. Yeah. Thank you, Congress. Appreciate you doing that to my ancestors. That was real sweet of you guys. Why don't y'all uh, go take that walk today and see how it feels? And promised that the United States would grant a patent in fee simple. Okay. Now I want you guys to listen to these words. Granted a land patent in fee simple to the Creek Nation of Indians for the assigned land to continue so long as they shall exist as a nation and continue to occupy the country hereby assigned to them. Uh, it at uh, seven statutes at large, 418, at 419, the patent, the land patent, formally issued in 1852. <laughs> now I know where to go to look. Okamulgee, Oklahoma, please beware. Fearless Floyd Pleasant Tarvin IV is coming for our land. So. Fair warning. Though the early treaties did not refer to the Creek lands as reservation, similar language in treaties from the same era has been held sufficient to create a reservation. C, uh, Menominee Tribe versus United States, 391 U.S. World War at page 405 and later Acts of Congress referring to the Creek Reservation. Leave no room for, for doubt. C, e.g., example given, 17 statutes at large, 626. In addition, an 1856 treaty promised that no portion of Creek lands would ever be embraced or included within or annexed to any territory or state. Statutes 11700. Ooh, David Hill, I may just file a lawsuit against you, sir, and the Creek Nation for violation of the treaty because you have ceded, okay, <laughs> our land over to the state of Oklahoma and all, all those de facto corporate government counties, towns, parishes, townships, whatever that looks like. Mm, ah, did you get permission from the people to do that? Because I don't think you did. And you serve the people because the people elected you. Right, David Hill? I'm calling you out, bro. If you're going to be a chief, be a chief. Sounds like you're being an Indian and you're subservient to the man, Uncle Sam man. All right. Congress has since broken more than a few promises to the tribe. Really? Not Uncle Sam. He's so honest and truthful. He wants everybody to come join the military. Nevertheless, Creek Reservation persists today. Once a federal re reservation is established, only Congress can diminish or de-establish it. Doing so requires a clear expression of congressional intent. Oklahoma claims that Congress ended the Creek Reservation during the so-called allotment era a period when Congress sought to pressure many tribes to abandon their communal lifestyles and parcel their lands into smaller lots owned by individual tribal members. Missing from that allotment era agreement with the Creek, see 31 statutes at large, page 862 through 864. However, is any statute invincing anything like the present and total surrender of all tribal interest in the affected lands? And this court has already rejected the argument that allotment automatically ended reservations. <laughs> and I can keep going on and on and on and on and tell you this story. But what really happened is, of course, the case got reversed. Uh, Justice Gorsuch, Associate Justice Gorsuch, delivered the opinion of the court, which Ginsburg, Breyer, Sotomayor, Hagan joined. Chief Justice Roberts filed a dissenting opinion in which Alito, Kavanaugh, Associate Justice joined, in which Justice Clarence Thomas joined, except as to footnote nine. Justice Thomas filed a dissenting opinion, which I have read this opinion word for word, cover to cover, many, many, many times. Okay, because this deals with me. So what happened is Mr. McGirt apparently committed some crimes on Indian land. He was tried in state court. 
state court did not have jurisdiction. And in this action, it realized, the United States Supreme Court realized that Congress didn't recognize all the land that was ceded to the Creek Nation. And in doing so, we received back, I think, three something million acres. Uh, let me see if I can find that number in here for you guys. An astounding amount of land. And I'll show you a map. <laughs> Um, I'm looking for my Muscogee Creek book there. Take off my background. I'm going to stop here so you guys can see. Clean this up. All right. See this map? Okay, that's Oklahoma. This is the Texas Red River. That's Texas. Okay. Up here, right there at the very top. That's Tulsa, folks. Okay. Basically, Okmulgee right there in the center. That's our capital. All that land is ours. And we own, get this, the entire eastern half of Tulsa, Oklahoma belongs to the Creek Nation. Absolutely. So what is Chief David Hill doing? Is he collecting taxes from the city of Tulsa, Calweta, Akmolji, Dewar, Okima. I mean, I just go on and on and on. Uh, what about all these oil and gas wells that are on here? Are you collecting revenues from those people? Are you taking over our stuff and giving it to the people? You're not, David Hill, because you're running a corporation. You have created a de facto Indian nation, not of the people, by the people, for the people, but it's for the government, the Muskogee government, okay? The corporation, because you corporatized it. It's incorporated, absolutely. I'm sure you're registered with Dun & Bradstreet, right, David? <clears throat> well, that's not how Indians roll, right? You have casinos up there. You're generating income for the tribe, right? You have all these taxes you're letting go to someone else. You have all of these mineral rights and mineral revenues that you're just letting go to somebody else. So, David, we need to have a meeting, okay? And we need to find out why you're doing what you're doing, why the Muscogee Creek people are suffering, why they're sitting in jails, addicted, and being mistreated. Still, to this day, racially discriminated because they are Indians. Absolutely. And you're allowing that to happen. That's on you, David Hill. And I'm calling you out, putting that on you. Now, so y'all want to know who David Hill is? Well, this is who David Hill is. It's David W. Hill. He's the principal chief right there for the Muscogee Nation. Calling you out, bro. Remember, I'm a card-carrying member. Can't wait to get my new card. Don't be denied now. Oh, they better not. Better not. Yeah, we have more call him out. I'm gonna call a spade a spade when I see a spade. It's a spade. It's not a club. It's not a heart. It's not a diamond. It's a spade. Yeah, absolutely. No. Jesse's over here doing laps. Man, I got him so excited. He's like a puppy dog running around. Indian blood is running around. Indian blood. Uh-oh. Let me see. Let me go. Get my back drop up. We're doing some planning. That's why I've got this uh, big calendar behind me. Uh, okay. Let me uh, get to where I need to get. Show what I need to show. And I'll get over to the chat here in a minute. So anyway, I got Kayla coming up. Four o'clock. 
So we're going to talk about all of that. And of course, Valentine's Day, I've got to give the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, it's so wonderful. I wish it would hurry up and get here. But today is, uh, and I missed it yesterday, your Christopher Allen Hauser update report from the Tennessee Court of, or Tennessee Supreme Court. No opinion has been filed yet. And we are uh, approaching into the 11th month. So we're two days into that. Uh, so Chris, I know you are sitting on pins and needles just waiting for this to come out so you can prove your point that you claim jurisdiction and state had no jurisdiction over you and you're going to get your case dismissed for want of jurisdiction and never once mentioned jurisdiction how does that work if you don't ask for it you don't get it right it's like the lottery if you don't play you don't win so anybody 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 <clears throat> here's a challenge i'm gonna start throwing challenges that you got okay i'm gonna have to start backing it up with some real fucking money <laughs> I'm gonna have to start showing you guys cash money. Make it rain. All right. So here's the deal. If somebody can show me in Chris Hauser's paperwork where he alleged that he's claiming that there's a jurisdictional defect, that the state of Tennessee uh never established personal and or I'm giving you an and or subject matter jurisdiction over his person and his subject matter, his offenses, that they didn't occur in Tennessee, ah, hmm, what's that worth? What's that worth? 100 bucks? 100 bucks. Show me in Chris's paperwork filed by his court-appointed public defender, Emma Tennant, that they raised the jurisdictional error. Jeez, I'm being just flooded. My phone won't stop ringing, right? <laughs> I'm going to prove to you guys, beyond a shadow of a doubt, okay? Chris Hauser's a fraud out of his own mouth. And you guys still want to listen to him and follow him like, oh, he's a guru. He's a guru. Everybody worship Chris Hauser. Let's go to his house and worship Chris Hauser and bug his wife and make get his wife all pissed off. So he's got to go on and do a YouTube video just about why people are showing up to his house and telling him to stop. Okay. I've been doing this for a lot longer than Chris Hauser has. And you know what? I've never had anybody come to my house ever. Not even try, not even attempt, not even call me up and say, Hey, Floyd, can I come over to your house and see you? <laughs> I've had people say, Hey, can I meet you? I need some notary work done <laughs> or can we go do lunch? So, yeah. Chris, dude, you're killing me. You're just, you're, you're, you're perfect, man. You just set yourself up as a punching bag and just leave yourself wide open. You're no defense. So appreciate that. Um, you give me plenty of fodder, cannon fodder to shoot at you. So, uh, what? A, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's the Chris Howler story. You guys already know, already went to McGirt. So let me jump over here. Ah, and this is, uh, of course, February 14th, 2023. It is uh, roughly 8.25 in, uh, p.m. in Iraq. Al-Sadani directs those that fail to implement the recent decisions. Let me sh share my screen here for you guys. So you can see what I'm doing. Right here, February 14th. No lie. Here, I'll even refresh it for you guys. So you... Uh, no, I'm not bullshitting. All right, here we go. Prime Minister Mohammed Shah al Sadani directed those who failed to implement the recent decisions related to dealing with the exchange rate fluctuations and their violation of issued instructions be held accountable. Prime Minister Mohammed Shia al Sadani stressed the need to expedite the implementation of the previous decisions of the Council of Ministers, which he took in the session of last January 17th regarding the work of electronic card points of sale, POS, which are supposed to be implemented. Hang on, I need to mute my mic. All right. 
Uh, let's see where it was. Sorry about that. My roommate has uh, zero respect for what I do. <clears throat> so it's tough. Uh, all right. So regarding the work of the electronic card points of sale, which are supposed to be implemented by June 1st, 2023. All right. So they're supposed to have these exchange, basically ATM type machines that do money exchange. And uh, they want them to be able to uh, input dollars or the uh, current currency that they're using that will be exchanged for the new currency when that is issued. Um, let's see what else. I had a couple more over here that I wanted to go through with you guys. And they just they pulled uh, a woman out from the rubble in Turkey after 205 hours. Kids, that's nine days. That's nine days. It, they're pulling babies out. I pulled a baby out after a week. That was just stunning. And then watching that 15-story building collapse. Did you see that? I had it on yesterday. Oh, yeah. From the earthquake. I had it on video down, down, well kind of a side fell off and then just crumbled and then they didn't even know if anybody was in it realistic building was going to fall because of the natural not man they explode yeah so you like, did it crank and yeah, yeah. <laughs> it did it did not collapse in on itself yeah no uh yeah let's see where's that at uh Stony. Just read that one. open this one up. I haven't even looked at this one. Let's see if this one has any uh, good news in it. Uh, the Council of National Security Agents held today, Tuesday, the third session of the current year. The National Security Advisor stated in a statement, Councilor Kasim Al-Araji presided over the session in the presence of all members of the Council, discussed the issues on the agenda, and took the necessary decisions and recommendations regarding them. Well, they don't tell you very much, do they? The session discussed the issue of electronic lease contract and directed the council to approve recommendations submitted by the military ministry of communications public peace company, which is consistent with the governor's government's directions for the regover for the e-government project. The council also decided to approve the conclusion of a memorandum of understanding between Iraqi national intelligence service and the state committee for national security in the Kyrgyz Republic. Hope I said that right. After amending it, according to the notes raised in the session. So uh, that's not what I was looking for. Uh, and basically this one right here talks about uh, the exchange rate. It's still the same, nothing new there. Bounce over here. There are several articles in this one I wanted to read to you guys. All right, it's the cradle. Uh, I read this to you yesterday, right here. Big stiff. Uh, Russia, Iran dumped the dollar, plus U.S. sanctions. So, U.S. sanctions, that's a big issue. All right. Um, how Britain trains Jordan to spy on its citizens. Yeah, imagine that. Uh, here we go. Iran, China signed 20 cooperation agreements in uh, Beijing. And this is a big issue right here. Okay, because I talked, I told you guys yesterday about the the Russia, Iran, China, and India 
those four countries, because with just China and India, you have one third of the world's population, just with those two countries. That doesn't include Russia and Iran. So they, um, Iran and Russia have developed a cross-border platform payment. Uh, China, which I talked about yesterday, has one of the, uh, the best in the world. Uh, so they're trying to link all this up through BRICS. Over the last year, oil exports from Toronto to Beijing reached 12.6 billion. Chinese President Xi Jinping received the Iranian counterpart Ibrahim Rasi on 14th February in Beijing, where the two signed 20 cooperation agreements to bolster relations between Iran and China. The two met at the headquarters of the National People's Congress of China to discuss improving bilateral cooperation in the fields of crisis management, tourism, communication and information, technology, trade, agriculture, exports, healthcare, media, sports and cultural heritage. Rasi thanks Xi for the constructive support from the National People's Congress of China in advancing the strategic ties between Tehran and Beijing. Rasi described Iran and China as two friends in hard times, emphasizing the necessity of using the capacity of regional and trans-regional mechanisms regarding joint cooperation. Xi also affirmed his support for a proper resolution of the revival of the Iranian nuclear deal with Washington and expressed Beijing's support in safeguarding Tehran's rights and interests, according to Chinese media. Xi further assured Rossi that China would continue to participate constructively in talks and resume negotiations on in implementing an Iran nuclear agreement. After their meeting, Iranian president told reporters that China and Iran have similar perspective on fighting unilateralism and inter at the international level. Last year, Iran was officially included in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO, which I mentioned yesterday, as a permanent member. The nation later applied to join BRICS, which I just discussed. The two international organizations in which China and Russia play a significant role, which I just told you about. China remains Iran's largest trading partner and leading buyer of its oil. Over the last year, oil exports from Tehran to Beijing reached $12.6 billion. Wow. <laughs> Iran also plays a crucial role in the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. LJ led these acronyms. A mega infrastructure and economic initiative launched by Beijing to link the economies of Europe, Asia, and Africa with an eye on expanding into Latin America. Here you go. Okay, They're taking over the U.S. territory. Slowly but surely, inch by inch, uh, we will no longer be a superpower in the world uh, if we continue down the path that we are currently endeavoring with this current. And I, it's hard for me to pick out an adjective to describe the current uh, executive administration on the federal level of the United States of America because it's a failure on all fronts. Judicial branch, the executive branch, and the legislative branch, you have all failed the American people in 2021, 2022. And in 2023, calling you guys out. All right. In 2021, both countries signed a 25-year strategic cooperation pact with political, strategic, and economic components. Rossi's visit to the Asian giant is part of it. his administration's look to the East policy, which seeks to build alliances with non-Western world powers that bear similar political structures to Iran and opposed U.S.-led Western domination of international affairs. Okay, I'm telling you guys what's coming. So when you read these articles and you read them with me or I'm reading them to you, that's what's going on. Uh, let's see. Is that? Uh, there you go. Okay. Uh, the United States currently has sanctions on Iran and Syria, as well as Russia and China. Uh, Syria welcomes Iraqi PMF uh, breaking the U.S. breaking of U.S. sanctions siege. Last week's devastating earthquake has shined a spotlight on Washington's brutal economic sanctions on Syria, while encouraging solidarity between the country and its neighbor Iraq. And this, excuse me, this is from the news desk. February 14th, a member of the Syrian People's uh, Assembly, Mohammed Fawaz, lauded Iraq's popular mobilization forces, PMF, 
for their success in breaking the harsh economic sanctions imposed on Syria by the United States. The PMF sent aid and delegations to Syria to assist in the wake of last week's devastating 7.8 magnitude earthquake. Bawaz said on Monday, 12th of February, that Iraq is a strategic depth of Syria and its back. And this was embodied by the entry of the popular mobilization convoys into Syria, breaking the unjust siege on the Syrian people and in defiance of the Caesar Act. He added that the visit of the Iraqi deputies to the Syrian People's Assembly came as a political condemnation of the inhumane sanctions on the Syrian people as ra- and raised the voice uh, from Damascus of the need to speed up the lifting of this ban. Another member of the Syrian People's Assembly, Nasser Yusuf, praised the PMF and called for strengthening cooperation between the brotherly countries of Syria and Iraq. U.S. planners imposed additional harsh sanctions on Syria in 2019 through legislation known as the Caesar Act. These were added to sanctions imposed at the start of the Syrian conflict in 2011 to complement the U.S.-backed jihadist insurgency in the country. The act was named after a report uh, issued in 2014 claiming to show evidence of the of industrial-scale killing by the uh, Syrian government. The report, authored by the U.S. law firm Carter Ruck, claimed to verify photographic evidence provided by a defeated Syrian, Syrian Arab Army SSA photographer known as Caesar, who had smuggled 55,000 photographs out of Syria. These photographs allegedly documented the Syrian government's torture and killing of some 11,000 detainees. However, as journalist Rick Sterling has detailed, over 46% over 46% of the photographs, 24,568, did not show people tortured to death by Syrian government. Rather, they showed dead Syrian soldiers and soldiers and victims of car bombs and other violence. Thus, nearly half of the photos showed the opposite of what was alleged. After reviewing the Carter Ruck report, Dan Murphy of the Christian Science Monitor similarly concluded that Carter Ruck report and allegations made by Caesar were not credible. In addition, the U.S. imposed sanctions to Syria. U.S. planners have sought to block trade and cooperation between Syria, Iraq, and Iran by maintaining a military base on the Syria-Iraq border at al tam While the Israeli Air Force has regularly bombed PMF and SSA targets on the same border further to the north and near the town of al Bukmal, Bukmal, with U.S. approval. <clears throat> okay, so... <sighs> You know, there's a bunch of crap going on. Uh, let's see. Here go thirty five thousand dead. Dump. I think there was one more that I wanted to teach you guys. That was yesterday. Saudi Arabia eager to join SCO and BRICS. I talked about that already. China and Qatar close in on 30 year liquid natural gas deal. Okay. So anytime you see this, that's not the United States, you know, holding that supremacy. That's us shedding our supremacy. We're no longer looked upon as the uh, supreme authority or moral and ethical uh, and just country or state uh, due to what's going on. Uh, Iranian president to visit China at Xi Jinping's request. Wow, that's news. And I believe that's it. Yeah, these are all older. All right, so that was the cradle. Where else did I want to go?
Mm, cover McGirt. Okay, I think that's everything I covered. Let me uh, jump over here. I don't want to go. No idea where this is rubbing. All right, here we go. All right, kids, I'm over here at the chat. Let me uh, get in here. Uh, hi, Lisa. Hello, Taryn. What's up, Ray? I missed you yesterday. I didn't see you. I am a sovereign of one without any subjects. Okay. Richard Madison. Hello, sir. You ever did an arbitration? I have not done an arbitration, but I definitely want to do an arbitration. And uh, FYI, did you know the International Court, Criminal Court, has uh, an arbitration division in The Hague? Absolutely. And that's where I want to go. Because most of your arb arbiters uh, here in Texas, anyway, are licensed bar attorneys. So I really want a licensed bar attorney mediating my. Uh, my issues and my claims. So I don't think so. Um, North Carolina Republic. Okay. Uh, all right. It's got confirmation from Ann to be on at one. And of course, Erica will be here at two. And then four o'clock, I will have uh, Kayla Fitz on. Uh, North Carolina Republic. Martha Sullivan, <clears throat> would you please contact me in Telegram and uh, send me a uh, direct message? Iowa, uh, I'm going to self-identify as innocent. Hmm, that's a good self-identifier. I'll go for that. Um, see, what else were I going to talk to you guys about? Do you have any questions or anything? What did y'all think about yesterday's show? Uh, what y'all think about Kia, Dr. Kia Ebling, and uh, her stuff? Would you, uh, hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, I need to edit the video and get that cranking for you guys. Y'all, uh, give me something in the chat. Let me know uh, what y'all got. Oh, that's the wrong one. Change. All right. Uh, all right. Got that. Oh, I've got to go back and edit the um, the description and get that down to five thousand words. I forgot to do that last night. So, uh, well, let me. Pop this open real quick. I don't know. Make a cascade of stuff here. Ten thousand calendars open. Pretty crazy. Oh, here we go. All right. Uh, yeah, I already have today's lined up. Let me see if I can uh, scrape uh, 5,000 word characters on here. Copy, paste. 
Cross your finger, kids. What we got. Oh, I'm within limits. Oh, I can add some more. So let me go get more. I can get about 1,500 more. That, that. I'm hurrying. I know. Better hurry. I'm trying. And that put me at 4,000. That's all the stuff that, you know, uh, YouTube makes you play with. And that should be a thousand. I'm just going to throw my copyright on there. And hopefully that'll work. Network. So I'm going to save that. And I'm waiting for it to save. And here, let me show you guys something real quick. All right. It's right here. This is Militia Man. Uh, Y'all go subscribe to him if you uh, are interested in anything about the RV. He mainly talks about Iraq, the Iraqi dinar. He posted this video yesterday, as you can see, uh, and I added a comment. And basically what I've been pontificating for the last two weeks, the waiting game is for the 100 plus billion of Iraqi oil revenues being held via sanctions by the Treasury and the Fed Bank. Hence, the meetings and more meetings that are designed to remedy the money smuggling slash laundering to Iran and Syria. Once those smuggling routes are stifled, and then and only then will the release of the 100 plus billion be released, and then Iraq can RV and fund their three-year budget. And the militia man and crew looks like they are. Okay, so... Boom. There you go, kids. That's what's going on. Say, and I'm being supported by this guy's been in it for at least a decade, I think. Um, so just wanted you guys know that uh, I am uh, I'm cutting edge with everybody else. Sometimes I come out 24, 48 hours before everybody else. That includes Dr. Kia Pruitt, original Mark Z, um, all these different dinar gurus, Seeds of Wisdom, all of them. Uh, because I'm doing my own research. That's how you get your answers. You know, don't re don't rely on what they're talking about and all these chats and telegram rooms, all that crap. Go look for yourself. Go read the articles yourself. Go do your own investigation. That's the only way you're going to get knowledge. You know, let me put this guy. So I don't lose my map. Yeah, and I'm going to call. Um, yeah, this is why I'm doing my uh, right here. I don't, can't see it. Oh, that's right angle. And basically, it's my family tree where I'm tracing my lineage all the way back to a uh, one of my parental ancestors his name is task g p-a-s-k-g-e and his last name or second name was taski utagag and uh, he has a birth date of 1680 and uh date of death don't know uh his wife was sihoy the first which is a uh very well-known name in the Muscogee Creek ancestry. Um, 1670 to 1763. So she lived a nice long life and apparently 
um, made that Trail of Tears movie. Uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, and then her daughter was uh, Sihoi II Kashada. Oh, where have we heard that name before? The Kashada Indian tribe in Louisiana? Yeah, it could be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then their daughter was Sihoi McGilvery, who had a son called, uh, let's see, Alexander McGilvery. Mm -hmm. And then it goes down to Colonel Adam David Tate and C. Hoy Weatherford, or William Weatherford, Chief Red Cloud. And then it goes back to Alicia Tarvin and Teresa Ann Tate. And Alicia would be my great, great, great grandfather who um, uh, he lived in Maryland. And then he had a son, Dr. Marion, Alicia Tarvin, who was actually a dentist in Galveston, Texas, of all places. And then uh, he married Sophia. And then they had Floyd one and then Floyd two and then Floyd three. And I am Floyd four. That's my lineage. Back to 1680, United States of America, before America was even America, right? There you go. That's how far back I go. And I can take it even further uh, across the pond, as they like to call it, over to Tarvin, England, which I have described uh, many, many, many times. It is 1253 and we'll be on here shortly. Let me dive over here, see if you guys have any questions or anything. Um, anybody watching this, um, if you have a topic, an idea, a guest, a host, uh, a sh show idea that you would like to produce or um, conduct, contact me at the Ferris Floyd Show at yahoo.com. Send me an email, call me, text me, uh, hit me up on Telegram. What I'm trying to build for you guys, okay, and this is a show that's going to run Monday through Friday from 12 to 5. It eventually will evolve into um, individual shows on different days, and I'm trying to create each day by genre. So if you notice, you know, Monday, Monday is kind of developing into a meta metaphysical day. And then Tuesday, I have uh, my women on there, my girls, my girl power team. Uh, to talk about uh, issues with the family, uh, children, things like that. And of course, Wednesday is going to be my Nationals Day. And Thursday, I have on Brian and Eric, Pastor of the Way, uh, which we talk about everything uh, legal, lawful, illegal, unlawful, constitutional, unconstitutional, et cetera, et cetera. And then on Friday, we are um, working on that to develop something, uh, I, I don't know if Friday will just be a hodgepodge of stuff, but definitely Buffy Leanne is gonna come on and anchor that. And she loves to talk about health issues. Uh, I've also, uh, like, like I told you guys, I was last night, I was talking to Dr. Mary Dressler in uh, Hawaii uh, with her uh, detox, colonic, detox clinic. Mm -hmm. And she will be on Friday, this Friday at four o'clock. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move her over to Monday. So Mondays are going to be uh, really uh, fulfilling. You're going to have uh, Dr. Kia Eveling come on, Jason McLeod come on, and then Dr. Mary Dressler come on. So, uh, you know, where are you going to have two doctors uh, within five hours of each other that you can pick up a phone and call and ask a question? You can do it here on the Fearless Floyd Show. So that's what I'm trying to bring you guys, uh, some of the top people in their fields, in their professions, in their expertise, in their research. So you guys can uh, become a better person, live a you know, more fruitful, happier, enjoyable, long life. So that's what my goal is. Um, very curious to do the uh, past life regression with um, Dr. Kia. And we're going to do that live on YouTube. So I don't know when we're going to do that. I don't know if we're going to do it today, do it in the evening. So that'll be something special and I'll announce it. I've got four minutes before Ann comes on. 
So let me uh, dive into this a little bit. All right. Um, for those of you out there who have mortgages and you've gotten a loan and you feel that there may allegedly have been fraud, which allegedly every real property transaction contains some scintilla of fraud. So um, I'm not going to say he has a 100% success rate. He has a very substantial success rate uh, in finding the fraud. And it's all he does is obtain the information and then puts it in your hands. And it's up to you to do with whatever you want with it, whether you want to file a lawsuit, you want to make a claim, whatever that looks like. So basically what Sean Adley here at Mortgage Audits Online does for you guys is does the forensic audit of the complete financial transaction and uh, obtains, uh, he has soft, special software that he uses for this and obtains all the, all the fraud, lays it out for you and then um, gives you the file and you can pursue that, that matter any which way you would like. Uh, some people take it, you know, all the way to the wall and uh, they recoup um, all the fraud that they lost. Others, um, they make a choice to where they can't play that long game and they have to play the short game due to economic and financial hardships or maybe even residential hardships because we're all talking about um, uh, real property here. Uh, they, they need to, you know, cut bait and move on. Uh, so they uh, are in agreement to a settlement. So that's what that looks like. So uh, get on here, fill this out, set up an appointment. If you uh, put right here in the message, here goes Floyd, okay, and send that. He's going to send you a um, an information kit. Let me see if I can find it in here. Uh, and it's free. And it's an info kit. I had it. And of course, now I'm looking for it. Can't find it. Uh, let me go home. Uh oh. Pusip level data. Utilize the newest tools available to verify the location of all securitized instruments. Uh-oh, kids, there you go. Bam. Didn't know he had that. So all you people looking for CUSIP numbers and CUSIP accounts, go see Sean. Uh, and I'm looking for this kit. But I believe it's like a 290 five dollar kit or something like that and it's free uh when you submit uh the fearless floyd show um in the message here you go find out if you have fraudulent loan uncover mortgage fraud mortgage lending law violations loan balance reporting errors sales transfer of loans securitization of loans chain of title and more so anytime that there's a uh an error or mistake or disruption in any one of these they can find the fraud and you have the potentiality of obtaining your property for basically what you've already paid for it and possibly get a refund of what you've done due to the fraud. So hit up uh, Sean Adley over at Mortgage Audits Online, put in the Fearless Floyd Show or Fearless Cynthia. You. You'll know who, you, who, who you're talking about. You can send him an email over here, schedule. You can set up an account. You can call the 800 number, talk to Sean. He'll send you the uh, info kit and you can get moving on that. So let me see if Ann has joined us yet. There she is. Hi, guys. <laughs> uh, you're, oh, hang on. Um, I may have you muted. Talk. Uh, what would there you like me to say? <laughs> All right. Okay, what's going on? Um, speaking about mortgage fraud, right up my alley. 
No, that never happens in the United States. There's no mortgage fraud. Everything is on up and up. It's straight, lawful, legal. Yeah, no ifs, ands, buts about it, right? Uh, wish that, oh God, here we go. Internet yeah, no. crap. You look so again. cute doing that. I know, isn't that lovely? Know, Yesterday it cleared there. up. <clears throat> Today it decided it wants to do it again. Oh yeah. my God. Uh, yeah, it has to do with weather, internet fraud, I mean, internet connectivity, and all kinds of other crap. Don't ask me why, but it seems to like it on your show. <laughs> hey, at least you're smiling, so. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like I'm shaking a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I like that hammock you have up there in the back. That's Isn't that, yeah. isn't that great you know right yeah absolutely yeah i mean i want I'm, I'm so different than other people you know and when i decorate my home i like it to look all natural and you know wood bamboo you know stuff like this and i ran into oh there i go, there go. <laughs> i um i was at the store when i was buying the um product to put on the wood and stuff like this and I saw that hammock and I'm like, I want that. I want to put it up in my living room in a, you know, triangle or a, an angle. And I want to put pillows inside of it. And it was a, it was a, an adventure because my boyfriend is like, uh, are you going to let people sleep in that? I go, hell no. I said, come on, there's not enough room in the living room. If somebody jumps in a hammock and it moves back and forth, what are you going to oh, do? Right. Bust the windows? I said it's a decoration. <laughs> That's funny. Jeez. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, inside of it has got pillows of two different colors and it absolutely matches my couch. So let's see if you can see my couch. So it matches over here. Voila. Oh, okay. Yeah. And up in the cabinet, it's got pillows in it. So, yeah, it's unique. <laughs> Jeez, man. It, I still, it, I still want to come visit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, my house is very unique. It fits my lifestyle. Crystals, uh, lava lamps, um, incense, sage, you know, stuff like this. Uh, lots of energy from the ocean, lots of shells. <laughs> Absolutely. Everything <Wow>. natural. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's I'm so lust after living life like that. <laughs> well, yesterday was, you know, one of those grounding days. <laughs> right. Go out yeah. in the backyard and, um, uh, decide to fix the mess that was left for me after rebuilding our home and I had to redo my garden completely. Uh, so yeah, we're working with plants out in nature, grounding on the ground. Uh, Cause I never wear shoes guys. Shoes are the worst thing in the world for your feet. <laughs> yeah. No grounding. Yeah. You're not grounded. I'm barefoot now. I'm always barefooted. I'm always in shorts. <laughs> and I'm either in t-shirts or tank tops <laughs> or bathing suits. <laughs> yeah. I I'm barefooted with shorts with a dress shirt on. You know <laughs> the only way to live, guys, ground yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, That's some interesting information for you guys. Since oh. you're talking about trust. Okay, let's go back to 2008 and the crash of the real estate market in 2008. Why did they crash? Isn't it because of the fraud of all the trusts that were coming after people's homes and closing down their homes? Wasn't that part of it? Boy, did I lose you? I'm here. I'm in the. Oh. I'm in the. Back, I'm in the background going through the chat. Oh, okay. I'm listening. So, wasn't it all part of that? 
Well, guess what? I got a lady who literally bought her home in 2001. One mortgage, one loan, no refinancing, nothing changed on that loan. Wells Fargo. Oh, I love Wells Fargo. Uh, they have so many claims against them. It's totally insanity. So anyhow, she has a trust company that was opened in 2019 claiming her home. And I'm like, okay, how can they do that? You know, because literally uh, we've got the only warranty deed that was done through the court in 2001. And it literally called her and her husband tenants, like we've been talking about. You're not tenants of your property, guys. You know, a tenant means you're paying rent. You're paying restitution to them. So one of the most important things we have to do is correct those damn warranty deeds. And not only that, but they use fictitious addresses and fictitious, you know, coordinates on the deeds when they register up. So whenever you see your address on something, you're in military jurisdiction and they can do what they want to you. So you literally have got to get a P.O. box at the post office and get rid of that damn home address. Correct it. Seriously, correct it. And, you know, put it on to um, your warranty and create a brand new warranty deed. And you guys can write them. It's so simple. You don't even need to be a rocket scientist. You can just basically take what they've written and modify it to, to, you know, to give it what you needed to give or what you needed to say. Now, here's something very interesting. So as I was digging into this company, it's called Mill City. Okay. And uh, we couldn't find anything on it. Uh, we didn't, she, we couldn't, she couldn't figure out who the address was, who, who the owners were, anything else. Well, it's all come down, haha, to a business address. <laughs> and this came off the federal government website, guys. All right. All I did was do some searches and I ended up with a data dump, a dump of 300 and some odd pages that I literally had to weed through and get the information off of it. So um, I don't remember if I showed, okay. Well, anyhow, I could show you some of the data dumps that are on the federal government website that you can actually get into. So let me see if I can pull up one of those. Oh no, I can't pull up two at one time. No. So we'll go, we'll go over this one first. Okay, so anyhow, yeah. on the report, I found out who the company's name was through the federal government, okay? And it tells me it's called Advisor Series Trust. And it was incorporated in Delaware, okay? And they have a signature of uh, Cheryl L. King on it. And they have a vice president called Treasure, okay? Didn't give me much there. Uh, so then I find out that it's all located into a business address. U.S. Bank Corp Fund Service LLC. Look that up. It's U.S. Bank, guys. The company's name is U.S. Bank. Okay? So this, this uh, one pool, we're going to call it a pool because that's what it is. It is a mortgage pool. So in a pool is like I uncovered the fraud of the insurance companies uh, in bonds for the win. Uh, a pool means you have multiple people coming together and putting all their resources into one account, and then they diversify this account. So literally, if a company is coming after you, they have literally claimed, uh, if you go into some of the stocks and the bonds and the international numbers and things like this, they literally are using your property as a security to create fictitious bonds and securities to sell worldwide. This is what crashed the market in 2008. 
and we thought it was gone. Ha ha, it's worse than you think it is. Right. I mean, so it is let, seriously let me, let me, worse. Let me point something out down here at the bottom left hand corner where you see series name hyphen Simper MBS total return fund. That MBS stands for mortgage backed securities. Uh huh. Okay, exactly. so what they do is they take all these mortgages and they package them together and they create a big bulk of mortgage-backed securities and they sell it as a block. So let's just say they might take, you know, a thousand mortgages, bundle them together as a billion dollar uh, fund. And then that's what they're creating here. So that's what you're looking at. Go okay, ahead. so these are, these are just one report I have, one. And this was over 300 pages mind you. So when we look at this report, we're going to find out that they one name, one trust has multiple, multiple QCIP numbers. And they have multiple ISL, ISIN numbers, which is their state license number that allows them to create these bonds and securities to sell to other countries. Okay, now in Europe, I found tons of this stuff where they have bonds that they offer in other countries or they have securities they're offering in other countries. And you know what? They have a, um, a, a date on them of like 2062, okay? Yeah, seriously, I'm not joking here. This is insanity, you guys, insanity. So just take a look. These are just a few of the companies but what comes interesting is these all have one QCIP number. But let's go down to a few companies who have multiple QCIP numbers under one trust. Okay, so that comes down to here. So as we see, this class uh, class coal uh, coal technology company, they're using clean, two clean coal, clean coal technology. Okay, yeah, clean coal. Uh, they're using two different accounts. One, they do not have an um, ISIN number, and it's just an open account they're starting to create. And one, they have a QCIP number, and they have a trading number. So uh, the interesting ones I find out are actually down here a little bit further. Uh, we can see that this company has three, but... There is companies down here that have up to 15, 15 in one company. So Franny May is a really, I mean, sh they're inside this pool. So is Freddie. And so is Gimme, you know? So, I mean, they're all inside these pools. And as we go down, look, look how many uh, this Franny May, this one trust has. And they're done by dates okay so we see a trust of 2019 and ro6 look how many uh qsip numbers that one trust has and look how many trading numbers that one trust has what does that mean to you guys literally what does it mean that they can use multiple different numbers in the field to trade multiple bonds or create bonds using multiple QCIP numbers and multiple ISIN numbers under one trust. Yeah. <clears throat> so I find out that this trust is just offered 50 new bonds, you know, just like the other day. And before it offered, I don't know how many bonds, you know, because I just got tired of digging into it because it's so much fraud. I mean, it is absolutely ridiculously fraud. And the company I'm looking into is called Mill City. It's down here. See, look at, look at, we have uh, F-R-E-M-M-F, Mortgage Trust. Look how many trusts they have. Wow. It's insanity. Look, it goes down. There's more. There's more. And this is, this is, Absolutely, 100% a freaking Ponzi scheme, house of cards, right? Exactly. And I'll show you how I got the information. I'll show you. Seriously, it was not even that hard. 
and it came right, right off of GovSec, GovSec guys. And I did not go in and dump a database that was not given to me. Okay. I don't do that. I, I get all legal data off of the internet that they post. Now this, now mind you, I've been looking into this for quite some time. This is absolutely the first time I have ever, ever seen this data come up. Literally seen this data come up. And uh, I literally copied and pasted it off uh, their website because I couldn't, you know, print it off. And screenshots was absolutely ridiculous. So I literally had to copy over 300 pages of of information off of their website and put it onto a Word document so that I could break it down. And I'll show you what the Word document looks like because I have a 780 some odd page or 750, 60, 70, I don't remember, page. Uh, second pool, it's another pool. And this same company is involved in that pool. Then I have tons of information about the company where they're in all kinds of securities, all kinds of, you know, businesses, all kinds of, you know, things. And it talks about their bonds. It talks about the, the life longevity of the companies. So basically you have to bring them up by companies and you can find this information. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, really crazy. So, I mean, the company I'm really, JP Morgan is in here. Wells Fargo's in here. Uh, Gimme and Gammy and Freddie and me and Freddie and Fran, you know, Franny and Freddie, all these companies are in here. Um, these are huge trust pools, guys. Trust pools. Hey, Ron, and this they is literally, Fargo, literally have so many uh, trusts. A couple weeks ago, talked to you uh, right before I went into the. Uh, so take a look at Magador, this one. Uh, look at um, JP Morgan. Okay. Look at 2018. Uh, good, sir. Give me a call. 2018. Back. Like they have you, one, of you uh, brothers one trust. The show, they have 2018 your, three, well, 2018 uh, four, uh, 2018 uh, six, uh, 2018 uh, eight. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, only in this, they put a, you know, half of their, you know, so 2018 accounts in this one, one but the problems, other one uh, they put them all in on the every single one of them thank you very much you guys so have a great day we're Be seeing safe. you know and all of this stuff day. look at the different ways they identify their trust look at the different ways they call their trust and this is how i found them is just by you know pulling this up and it came up and it gave me the uh federal database where they're all at so the one I, um, I'm interested in is this Mill City Trust, the Mill City Trust. And I've got their numbers, you know, where I can go after them. Now, here, I'm going to show you guys what one of these reports looks like. Okay. So this is what we're looking at. And this is what I found. Oh, God, did I bring it up? Oh, crap. Hang on a second. I got to get in and bring it up. I didn't open it. I, I just put the folder on, but I didn't open it. Just a second, guys. The Floyd, this is ridiculous. I mean, I'll be honest with you. This is insanity. What's going on? And they say that all these, you know, trust accounts and all this stuff is gone. It's not. It's worse than you ever could imagine. Oh, yeah, I totally 100% agree that it's when this when the when the bubble pops, um, people are going to be devastated. Uh, yeah. That's for sure. OK, hang on. Okay, so this is what the report looks like, guys. And this is what I'm dealing with, okay? I highlighted some of this so you can see it. So when I pulled, when I went on the federal website, 
this is what I brought up. And it's all written, you know, in program language. So you'll see down here how the program language is, you know, put together. So basically, this is how it is. You know, in a program, when you're writing a program, you have names, you have the, you know, number, you have the codes and stuff like this to, you know, block them off. So basically, you have to go through this report and you have, <coughs> you, have, <coughs> you have to pull everything off of it. So here, here's the name of the company. I highlighted it in yellow for you guys. And then here's the title. It's called the Franny Nate Pool, FN. Uh, EO twenty eight five, okay, and then they give me my they give me my QCIP number. They also give me my uh, ISIN value, okay. In this report, okay. Then you come down, and then it'll give you what the balance is, what the PA is, what type of funds it is, uh, what the the val uh, SD number is. You know, I don't go into all of this because I am, you know, I'm not really, you know, so I don't really care about so much of that. Um, but here you have the payoff profile considered long. Do you see that? It's all in this report. Everything you need to know about what they're doing is in this damn report. And then you have the, uh, the uh, issuers uh, identification. So you have to understand what these uh, USGA means. So that's, you know, usually in the um, profiles of other companies and how they identify uh, the companies. So they're usually, you know, hedge funds and stuff like this. So they're, you know? so they're getting 5% annualized return on whatever the note is? Uh-huh. And they're using your home to back these notes. Wow. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then they're turning around and because they have, they're, they're claiming your home, they're literally selling bonds, creating bonds. So they're making even more money. And then they're offering, you know, like a 13.2 return on the bonds after maturity. And usually they'll create the bonds uh, the year that they've opened this up. And then they'll keep creating the bonds, you know, as with the same trust, they'll keep creating it. So they'll issue so many bonds. Um, I found them issued in Germany. I found them issued in Switzerland. I found them, they're worldwide. They issue bonds all over the place. And they're on the worldwide market. And they sell these bonds. And then you have, they, they have two parts. Bonds, they put on, they, they sell. And then they have the second part is called securities. So they're selling bonds and securities on the worldwide market. So as you, you know, you come down, this gives you all the information you need to know about that company, but keep going down. Here's another one. Okay. And it gives us the same information and we can scroll down. Here's another one. And we can scroll down. Here's another one. You guys see this? This all belongs to one pool, one pool only. Okay. This is all a conglomerate of putting this together. Now, one of these reports took me, you know, five days to go through it, five days to compile it. So they're not easy. I mean, it, it's time consuming. But if you want to prove fraud and you want to close down these accounts, this needs to be done. Seriously, you have to do a forensic audit and you can audit their letters. You can audit their accounts. You can audit whatever you want. Wow. Yeah. So you want to talk about fraud and maybe I should talk to Sean and give him some of the information I have. <laughs> um, yeah, that would be an interesting show. We, I can set that up. I'm sure Sean will come yeah. on. Yeah. I mean, finding this on just, I mean, guys, all I did was bring it up and believe it or not, I did not even use the the search engine I love the most it gives me everything I just use Google and it was the third one on the list and I looked at it and you know and this mess came up and I'm like okay why is this name coming up under this and it took me three days to find the name inside of it this is what's crazy 
This is where we're at, guys. This is exactly what we're doing. Oh, sorry again, froze. My internet for some reason is not like being nice. It does for a while and it doesn't. <laughs> it's because we we're on a satellite and so we're roaming. So when they switch over from satellite to satellite, which they've been doing a lot lately, uh, yeah, um, we freeze up here. So those, those are our glitches. <laughs> so do you want to know how to forensic audit them? Got that too. That's pretty interesting. Okay. Hang on. I'll bring that one up. All right. Jesse's cutting some paper so I get him all squared up with the paper cutters. Okay. Let's start down here. And then we'll go back up to the text. I did not say see parse syntax grammar, did I? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh boy. Here we go. All right, kids, get out your Go get your pens and paper, pencil and paper, and get ready to take some notes. Because, <laughs> yeah, I can see that where this is going already. So, all right, okay. let's let's get it. <clears throat> all the letters you get are fraud. Okay, you're getting a letter that says our records show that you. Okay, who are they talking to? Are they talking to Floyd? Are they talking to me? Are they talking to my dog? Are they talking to the tree? Are they talking to the house? Who in the hell are they talking to? You know, you have no idea when you get that letter, but because we're so well programmed, we can, we automatically assume it's us they're talking to. They're not. You is anybody in the world. Just like if you go into court and they call Mr. Jones. Okay. How many of the people in the world are Mr. Jones? Okay, we don't know. But yet you want to be identified or they want you to identify yourself as Mr. Jones. Well, if you ask the court, which Mr. Jones are you referring to or would you like to talk to? Oh, man, that will blow up your courtroom and you will be arrested just for asking which Mr. Jones they want to talk to. And just, uh, you know, bringing it out in the courtroom. Do you realize there's probably 15 Mr. Joneses sitting out here in the audience right now? Which one do you want to talk to? My name is James Earl. Are you, do you want to talk to me? No, I want to talk to Mr. Jones. Okay, which Mr. Jones? Identify which Mr. Jones you want to talk to. They cannot. They will not and they never will even though they have it on their damn piece of paper right in front of them, because that's their script. That's how they get you inside their jurisdiction. So be careful when they say you, you did this, you are guilty. Who is you? There's hundreds of you in this courtroom. Who are you talking to? Can you not say my name? Can you not identify me? I'm a person, okay? So this is what these letters are. You guys are getting in the mail, okay? So let's go back to uh, like 1990, 92, before they had GPS and before, you know, they had all these great tracking, you know, apps and all this other stuff to tell you where you're going and what you're doing and where to turn and how to turn and, you know, which exit to take and all this stuff. You had to learn how to read a roadmap, correct? Okay, so what was on a road map? Didn't it have a legend on it that told you what their symbols meant? Or am I not correct? Floyd, yeah, am I correct or not? Don't mind me, I'm giving directions back here. Oh, okay. So didn't old road maps have legends and they told you what the symbols meant on them? Like if you saw a little house or something, or you saw a dollar sign in a banking, or if you saw a little house, it said, or, or uh, you know, a little house with an R, it was rest area or toilet or something like that. 
you know, didn't, didn't roadmaps used to have all those little legends with symbols all over them that told you what you, what was, what was coming up on the road. <laughs> okay. Their letters need this too, because they don't <laughs> tell us what's going on. Literally, they don't tell us. I mean, if you understood the crap that they put in the letters and see, I tried to explain this the other day to my VCR class and all I kept getting is, well, I'm just going to go in and do quantum grammar. I said, I don't want you to do quantum grammar. I want you to do syntax, grammarly correct language. No, it's quantum grammar. No, it's not. Guys, get it through your heads. Um, I'm not an English expert. Okay. I'll be honest with you. I didn't get to America till late. Um, <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. No, Anne is not an English expert. Uh, and there is a loss in translation from French to English and back and forth. So whenever you're looking at Anne's documents, you have to know that she's translating from French to English. English and sometimes it doesn't always come out properly. So be aware of that. So thank you for that caveat. <laughs> okay. But anyhow, um, when I got into, I think it was junior high school, just before high school, um, they threw me in an English class because I literally could speak English because my mom made us learn to speak English at home. Um, but you know, school did not teach us English, you know, that was not part of the, the curriculum. And they didn't teach us all this crap of breaking down sentences. What is an adverb? What is an adjective? What is a, a you know, conjunction, an adverb? We didn't do that crap, okay? But in America, you guys have to. And oh boy, could I bomb that one out. Um, the only thing I actually knew was what a verb was. And that was a person, place, or thing. And all I would do is go through and figure out what everything was because there was tons of things, every person in there or every place. And I would just write V all over my paper and hand it in. That's all I knew how to do. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but looking at this document, I literally could do any document there is. This guy laid it out so well. It was sent to me. And literally, he has his legends in here. Look, zero, you know, zero means conjunctive. One means adverb. Two means verb. Three means adjective. Four means pronoun. Five means prep um, prepositional, proportional. Okay, preposition. Okay, whatever he wants to say. Uh, six is an article. You know, seven is a noun. And it is past time. Then he comes up here. Preposition. Um, oh. for. Yeah, okay. Prepositional phrase, preposition, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> she, she told y'all she wasn't an expert. <laughs> so I'm not going to hide it, guys. And I'm not going to lie to you. You know, you guys have to realize work is work. And it's not so easy. Okay. So, I mean, if I can sit there and do it. I think all you guys can too, unless my brain's different than everybody else's. I don't know. <laughs> but anyhow, all you have to basically do is take their letter, their offer, your assumed debt that you're assuming you owe to them and break it down. And it's so well broken down that you guys can follow this example, even if you're not an English expert like Am, like me, <laughs> and and go through it seriously. Look what this guy did. He he put everything in here. Check out what he did. Look what he gave them. <laughs> I mean, seriously, he told them uh, dated. Oh, it's past tense. It doesn't belong in the system. You know, it doesn't belong in our letter. It should never be dated. It should be date. You know, <laughs> and then what does he say with CEO? It's no, it's no compliance or no offer. Uh, CEO is the number three. It's an, uh, um, an adjective. Okay. Then he comes down nine, nine. What is it? 
future time. So we've got past time and future time in the same sentence. Do you see that? <laughs> I've never seen anything broken down like this before. So this is new to me. <laughs> it is absolutely beautiful. Seriously. And what you put with it is even more beautiful. <laughs> So look, he's got this thing broken down like you've never seen before in your life. I mean, look, four, two, six, seven, zero. Jeez. Right there, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, this guy must be a major English grammar, you know. But anyhow, what I'm saying, guys, is we don't have to be a grammar expert to do this. All we have to do is look at this example, look at our letters, because guaranteed they're copy and pasted, like I try to teach you not to do, and they're sent to us. They're form letters. They're conformed. They're all the same. Every company will use the same type of letter to send to you. So I don't see any reason in the world that people cannot do this. Do you see any, Floyd? I mean, tell me if I'm wrong or I'm over assuming. <laughs> um, if they would acknowledge this as um, lawful, you know, showing the fraud. Yeah, I'd agree with that. But, you know, like I said, I've never seen this before. So this is all new information to me. Um, you know, and I'm no English expert either. You know, I didn't pay attention <laughs> I didn't want to be there, but had to be there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wow. either spent my day, I either spent my days in high school sitting on the grass playing a guitar at the beach surfing or in an art class designing <laughs> or actually right. in college in some, you know, advanced math class because they couldn't keep me in high school because I was so advanced in math. And so <laughs> this is how I spent three years of college in California. <laughs> I mean, it's a high school in California, excuse me, not college. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I got picked up every day to be taken to a college course uh, for, you know, calculus, trigonometry, uh, you name it. I ended up in it, you know, because they had to keep me busy through the three years I was there. <laughs> Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually started understanding trigonometry when I was eight, when my dad had to take a trigonometry class for, um, for his, you know, his job. And he would use a slide ruler because, you know, calculators and stuff weren't around. And he'd make errors in his program, in his, you know, equation and i mean those things are long you guys got to realize how long they are to write one of those trigonometry problems you know and when you can just look at the 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 the, the um question and you can just know the answer right away uh but show your work you know i could just i i knew the answers before i even had to show my work yeah it's pretty easy just to look at them and understand that <clears throat> so anyhow my dad would call me in. I'm eight years old. And he'd say to me, what did I do wrong? And I would just look at his equation and I would point to a number. And I said, that's the wrong number, dad. Change it. <laughs> I walked away. <laughs> yeah. So this is how I grew up. I never grew up wanting to give a damn about all these English languages. I mean, you know, breaking down sentences and stuff. As long as I could, you know, vocally get what I needed out, I was fine. I didn't think we needed all this. And now I'm finding out it was probably a good idea to understand it because then we probably wouldn't be in the mess we're in right now if we understood what they wrote to us in the beginning was garbage. And we accepted it because we were illiterate. And this just proves that we didn't become a, we weren't a major, we were always a minor. Because we, we proved how illiterate we are when we accept these letters and actually pay them. So <laughs> this is funny. I mean, it's, it's sad. It's really sad. 
but it's interesting. And then down here, he puts the other legend on it that literally tells, you know, what some of this stuff means, you know? And when you see like N-O, it comes down here, no contract, okay? And he puts all this on his letter and he sends it back. But what he does is he writes another letter. Now, depending on who you're writing it to, so this is a letter from a collection agency uh, saying that you owe a debt on a credit card, okay? But you're gonna get letters from courts, you know, demanding money. You're gonna get letters from foreclosure companies intent to foreclose. And what is an intent to foreclose? Okay, we need to start breaking these letters down, guys. We need to send them back to them and demand correction, demand they correct these errors. Okay, so let's come back up here and let's go through this. So one method that a lot of people love, you know, like um, I helped a friend do in Canada because they gave them money during the COVID and then they started sending requests that they wanted all this money back and asking for tons of money. And I just told people, don't open the letters, write across it, return to sender. So that takes care of some issues, not all, but I wouldn't use that constantly. It is, you know, an option if you know who it's coming from. So it's like they, it's three offers. And this is what I keep trying to tell people, especially with when you're doing voucher, you know, uh, recovery remittance, okay? Vouchers and coupons and remittance. You have to give three offers and people are just not, wanting to take time okay and they're immediately oh i want a 1099 and i want this and i want that well go do it make yourself happy go do it but it's not the correct way and you're gonna fail because you got to remember how they trap you is three times they give you the offer three times you accepted it it's called mail rules. So now you have to do the same thing. Everything is a mirror, guys. Mirror it back to them. Do a mirrored image. And then start looking at your offers you're getting. Look at the coupons that you're getting. Why is the money right, in a see. box? Why is it boxed off? So realize Anything that's in a box or in parentheses is not part of it. It's exempt. So it belongs to the four corners rule. So start to understand that. Start to understand where you're going and start to understand what's going on. And, you know, we're giving you all this information, all this great information is coming out, but people are just not standing up all they want is us to write the letters us to do the work and us to give it to them so they can reap the benefits well reaping the benefits you're not going to i'll be honest with you you'll never reap the benefits because you never learned how to stand on your own two feet you're still crawling on the ground until you can stand up and do your own work and you know take care of your own business, you're not gonna get anywhere. This is what this whole thing is about. This is why it's so messed up um, because everything has been spoon fed to us our whole lives. We were spoon fed how to think. We were spoon fed uh, what was on television. We were spoon fed the notes. We were spoon fed that mortgages are the way to go. We were spoon fed that credit has got to be wonderful and everybody has to have credit. We were spoon fed that we have to pay taxes. Okay, none of it's true. You got to get out of that. You got to break the matrix. You got to break it in your own mind and stand up in your own being in order to get through this. And we can teach you all this stuff, but until you guys stand up is when it's going to happen. We can't do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. Sorry to say. So anyhow, 
look carefully at your bills and make sure, you know see what's on them. Number one, uh, courts are sending letters requesting money, and you need to consider what is happening inside of them or happening there. Okay, so what what are we looking at? The letters that I just showed you is para uh, no phrase syntax grammar. Okay, phrase syntax grammar. Every single one of their letters that they send us in the mail, whether it's an intent to foreclose, whether it's an offer for a billing, whether it's an offer to pay, everything is written in para syntax grammar errors. And there is at least 15 errors right away. You guys need to start identifying these errors because everything that they're asking us to believe is boxed off. Nothing in the box. Understand the four corners rule, guys. Nothing in the box is part of the offer. It's not. Okay? So all the money they're saying in that box is not part of the offer. It's what they want you to think. And because you've been spoon fed that this is what it is, they made, they tricked you. It's an assumption. So quit assuming everything for phase value. Start looking at it and opening your eyes. You have three eyes, guys. You, you have the two right here you're seeing from, and you have the one in your brain. That's your third eye. Start using it. Guys, start using it. Seriously, start using it. Okay. So uh, they make tons of mistakes. Uh, and fictitious claims against us. And we're just, oh, okay, okay, we'll pay it. Okay, uh, I don't have the money now, but can I make arrangements with you? Or however you're doing it, you know, this is where you're getting trapped. You are totally being trapped and sucked down into that system. And you're being drugged down into the drains, okay? So you need to start swimming your way out. Seriously, I'm not joking. Uh, and we need to start doing this. So now you first, you know, when you get your offer, just, I mean, we'll put the example up. I'll put this up on, you know, the Telegram channel. Uh, I get a lot of flack when I put it out there. I get a lot of people telling me, oh, what good is that going to do? Well, you guys, it does a lot of good. It's closed down a lot of foreclosures. It's closed down a lot of mortgage fraud. It's closed down a lot of things that they're assuming that we owe. Okay? So, I mean, you think that statement, when it says credit on it, you know, do you think that's what we owe? No, that's our credit in the account. Yeah. So, it's just a matter of waking up. It's a matter of waking up and learning. And I can teach, but I can't do the work for you. And I have so many people contacting me, asking me, well, what about this? What about that? Can you do this? Can you do that? I could do it all day long, but 20 hours a day is a lot. And that's what I do it now. So I need people to understand. Um, I'm going to start trying to get more information out there, you know, and try to get more classes written so I can teach you guys so you can stand on your own. Because this is where we're at. We need to stand up and just take control of our lives. Basically, that's it. So um, we can identify the errors in this letter and then we can write them a few questions. We can send them back, you know, information. And we can tell them uh, they have to stop and correct all the mistakes uh, that are highlighted in our, in our you know, letter. And we don't have to highlight them. We can do them in red. And we have to make sure that they have an idea of what the error is. That's why we put the little legend on the top, up in the top and on the bottom of their information, okay? <clears throat> so that, you know, gets us to where we're going. And then we can literally do several things. But the basic one is you're telling them 
you know, you're, you're identifying canon law. Okay. Canon law. You have more than 15 mistakes, which need to be corrected, you know, and you, you let them know I'm a, I'm a living being. I'm not your fictitious dead entity or how you're treating me. And you can quote canon law. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of things, you know, and you can write them in your letter. Uh, is your letter trying to trick me by using boxes and the four corners rule style states meaning of boxes? Is this a mistake or are you seeking to mislead us? Okay, you can ask them questions. They have to answer them. You give them so many days to correct their errors and they don't correct it and you get another letter, you do the same thing and you give them a second notice and you say, look, this is it. Third notice, you have to do threes, okay? You're gonna get three letters, you have to do it three times. Just don't be lazy, just do it, you know? And always get it notarized, always get your witnesses and always send it back certified mail. And always put a postage stamp on it, okay? Because offers and letters need a postage stamp. Needs at least a $1 postage stamp with your three initials and the date in the middle of the stamp. We don't write everything across the stamp. We don't do any of this because you have to look at the, the Postal Act of 1862 to find out how you yourself cancel your stamps. Okay? Absolutely. Wow. That was uh, <laughs> information overload and lightning. <laughs> Uh, always surprising, aren't they? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what. You always come with a top hat full of uh, tricks, for sure. <laughs> wow. So, so guys, I, I mean, I, I can send this to you, Floyd. I'll put it in the PDF. I send it over to you, or we can put it up on the channel that people can start reading it. Um. I've done it on other places. I did it in the uh, UCR class I just taught uh, last week. Oh my God, did I hear it in there? You know, and I'm saying, guys, you want remittance. You want these coupons done. You want this done. You want that done. I can give you the laws. I can show you how to do this. But when it comes down to it, the letters you're receiving are not even letters. And who is you? I mean, seriously, who is you? Are you you? Floyd, are you you? <laughs> Am I me? <laughs> I mean, if I looked at you and I said you, would you know I was talking to you, Floyd? Uh, no. Okay. So why are we accepting it? That's my question. Why do we accept it in these letters? Uh, ignorance, programming, and institutionalism. Spoon feeding. <laughs> we were spoon fed how to think. <laughs> That's how I look at it. And I'm not going to spoon feed you how to unthink. You got to do that yourself. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> That's going to leave a mark. <laughs> um. By the way, I just, just got off the phone with Rebecca Prestwich, and she said hello. <coughs> oh, great. How's yeah. she doing? Uh, things are turning around for her. Um, great. Of course, yeah. she Of course, she got the court order from one court giving her daughter back to her, but she can't fulfill that order until she deals with this other uh, existing litigation. So um, she just accepted a, I guess, a court appointed attorney uh, to handle that particular issue. We really didn't get deep into it because she was contacting me about um, a guest I have coming on at uh, four o'clock, uh, Taylor Nicole Fitz, who was at a, uh, her and her, I believe her husband, um, significant other, and five children were in a hotel in Tulsa. And apparently law enforcement showed up and they asked questions and labeled them sovereign citizens and manhandled them and took them to jail. And um, somebody in the 
Tulsa government, I'll say. I don't know exactly who or where or what or why. Uh, anonymously sent her the uh, body cam videos of every police officer that was at the scene. Ooh. And they are all on YouTube. So let me uh, let me go pull those up for you guys. But um, guys, realize, just let me say one thing. If you guys want to get out of these court cases and you want to get rid of this mess, what you need to ask these courts is one simple, lousy question. Okay, you can close everything down. Will the named building, okay, building, that's what we're in. Will the named building making the claim? Because who's making the claim? Isn't it the, the court of whatever and it's on the name of the building? Okay. So ask them, are you willing to come to a courtroom, to a jury trial, and all people can have their cameras, recording devices, and whatever they want during the trial? And are you willing to testify? Okay. We'll close with that. <laughs> right. These are the body cams. She has uploaded them to YouTube, so you guys can go watch them. And that's her right there. Wow. Wow. And I want, so where are her five children? Uh, CPS took them and uh, adopted them out. What? How and long two, ago? Two of them were six months ago. Two of them were born without any birth certificates, registration, no social security numbers. And now they went and uh, the government went and got them social security numbers, gave them birth certificates. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she is not happy. She would like your assistance with this matter. What I'm doing, uh, I just talked to Rebecca about this, and I talked to Kayla last night, as well as Felicia Beverly. Uh, they will all be on at 4 o'clock today, Central Standard Time, um, to talk about this case. Um, maybe we just briefly discussed doing a fundraiser to raise funds for Kayla and her family uh, to help support uh, their effort to uh, uh, reobtain their children back and get her significant other who's still in Tulsa County Jail, I believe. Uh, Honey, so we need, personal. you know what we need to do? Literally with this footage, with all the stuff that she has, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, it's called 13818, Human Traffic Team. Okay. Yeah. And I have 14 offices listing of them that uh, we just need to compile the data correctly, do the affidavit, do the indexing, do the information and turn it in to these departments to have it investigated. Okay, seriously, Absolutely. because so what, afterwards what, they're saying what, they're, they're what, I mean, they're literally stereotyping these people as what state nationals, you know. They're calling them terrorists. That's stereotyping. That's called racism. That's called, you know, uh, federal discrimination. Bureau. Yes, discrimination. discrimination. Uh -huh. yeah. So there's what, plenty out what, there. There's there's yeah, plenty right. of places that I am starting to literally compile all this stuff with affidavits, affidavits okay. from other people who've seen it, so right. that we well, can start well, sending them out. Yeah, well, well, this is what we're going to do, Ann. Uh, and I talked to Rebecca about this. I also talked to Kayla and Felicia. I'm going to create another Telegram group that is going to specifically be for uh, CPS issues, um, any kind of issues like probate, uh, where you're dealing with your kids, trying to get your kids back, kids being taken away from you, uh, adopted out, et cetera, et cetera, just for these folks who are going through these uh, issues so y'all can exchange information. I'm going to set it up. Everybody will have full administrative access. You can transfer files, videos, open up chats, have discussions, share information. And if we all work together, uh, just like they did for Bonds for the Win, we can create a, um, a protocol, I'll say, uh, to um, annihilate child protective services and the human traffic that go, goes Floyd, on. Floyd, yes. let me put something in here just for one second, okay? Sure. I always had an issue when I went to America. Uh, 
where I come from. Whenever we wrote our documents for school or we turned in our homework, we wrote our last name first, comma, our first name. That was the format, okay? Everything in France, Europe, and all of the countries is done last name, then your first and middle name. That's it. That's the way it goes. And America is the only one that puts your, your name, your, your God-given name and your middle name first, and then put your last name. They programmed you to do that. Because here where I come from, it's gnome name, gnome, prenome, your name, surname, your middle name. Okay, so when they're saying first, that's your gnome, okay, your name. Everybody needs to correct their goddamn birth certificates. Seriously, you need to do a legal name change in the court system. It's not hard. And you do it using three documents and a court document that goes through the probate court. Probate, guys, remember probate? Certificates under seal, death certificates under seal. You probate your birth certificate and you change the name on it. Then you have the then you have yeah, the state change, change the name. We're gonna go to the vape store. Oh. And so uh, we'll So that's something to think about, guys. Do you need to think while we're up? Yeah, he needs um a six pack oh. of coke, uh 10 pounds of coffee. Oh, uh, <laughs> Yes, he was asking me if I needed anything from the store, and I said, All the money in the world. <laughs> Do you realize you generate that with your own electricity and your own body? <laughs> you generate it yourself. You're right. worth more than anything else. <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently, this is them uh, doing an unlawful search and seizure without a warrant. You can see how they entered the house, the keys are in the door right here. Wow. And this guy's got a shield. This guy. And they're has, holding this guy's bag, like, you know, yeah. protecting. Oh, my God. Yeah, that that's the pepper gun, pepper pellets, pepper spray. Holy crap. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's children in this room. Five children. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. E each one of these guys, that's aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, aggravated kidnapping. Aggravated robbery. Aggravated oh, what is that? Assault. Is that is that a stun gun now? Yeah, yeah, that's a taser. Because they're they're asking they're they're back here asking questions, and I, I can't put the volume on uh, due to uh, you know googly eye guy. But yeah, this, this she's got a, you know. Every every one of these officers, she I think has uh, their body cam footage. Wow. Yeah, and I believe it's this guy right here. He's a real dick. He's one of those Aren't ones that all? want to twist you. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm not going to berate every single law enforcement officer in this in the United States because they're not all bad. They're actually no, they're not. really really but really I'm... good ones. He... Uh, you can see this guy's young. Okay, doesn't have much experience. Um, you know, you can see he's terrified. And I guess they're all huddled into the bathroom. Very similar to what you're seeing right here. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. And so all of her kids have been adopted out? Yeah, that's a child. That's a child they're pointing weapons at. Wow. What? Mel would like to know what day she set forth. Wednesday, Tomorrow. Right? Yeah. Okay. Two o'clock central. Two o'clock central. Okay, thank you. Okay. I think okay. your next guest is on, Floyd. <laughs> oh, Erica? Yeah, yeah. Well, Erica want to see this. Oh no, that's the that's the that's her significant other. Wow. Yeah. And, and they're gonna what they're gonna do, they're using static handcuffs that don't have a chain to link them. 
They don't twist. So they lock your wrist in place. See how that see how they have to get it in there just right. Wow. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've been in all this. This ain't nothing new to me. This is there's insanity. Not, there's nothing any one of these guys have, have you're gonna see that has not been done to me. Absolutely. What were their charges? I mean, why in the hell did they break into this hotel? Room? Uh, I believe he's still not charged. And uh, I believe Kayla sat in there for six months without charges. And they finally released her. They can only hold them 21 days. Yeah, well, you know, well, welcome to the corrupt America. This is this is what America has, has evolved to or devolved. Now they're right there, that sergeant right there, that old, that old Peckerwood. He's the one who calls them sovereign citizens. Now look, look what he's doing. He just threw her down. Look at that. Just manhandling her. That's Kayla. Why did they, why are they calling him so what did they do? They threw her on the ground. Because they were asking questions, you know, why are you here? You know, what's your authority to be here? You know, just the standard questions. Well, yeah, who called? I mean, who, who reported them in the hotel I, I don't, room? I don't, we'll, we'll find out at four o'clock. I have no idea. Wow. This is amazing. Oh, and she, you know, she's got tons of footage of this. Wow. Yeah, this guy right here, he's, he's, not, he's not a good officer. This guy needs to be terminated. Is this Tulsa, Oklahoma? Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma, which the total eastern half of eastern eastern half of Tulsa, Oklahoma belongs to the Muscogee Creek Nation. Absolutely, does not belong to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Wow. Oh yeah, and I'm I'm livid that this this crap is going on. You know, okay. um, I need to get you that list of um, addresses and information of where they need to start, you know, getting their affidavits together and sending it in, especially well, with all this video cam footage. Uh, this will be investigated immediately. Yeah, because President Trump made sure of it, guys. Look up Executive Order 13818. I'm not kidding you. It deals with human trafficking. It oh, deals yeah. with PIGA. We, we are gonna hold, we're gonna hold a, these people accountable. So if, if any one of you officers are watching this video and you're in this video and there is evidence, okay, beyond a reasonable doubt that you violated your official oath and your official bond and you broke the laws, you'll be held accountable, brother. Promise you. I promise you, okay? The du jour status of Americans, we're coming, okay? We're coming for you and we're going to hold you accountable. We're going to and create, we're not pro se. Let me yeah, tell you, we're, we're not courts. pro se. We're going to take over your jails and your prisons and we're going to put you in it. Yeah. And I'm going to recommend, I'm going to recommend that if you get convicted of election fraud for our du jour elections, we're going to cut off your dominant hand. That's your punishment. Oh. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, Floyd, yeah. that's just about as bad as the um, district attorney or the state prosecutor for the guy for um, uh, IRS not filing his tax form has mm -hmm. written. She literally wants to throw him in jail. And she literally put on her, her uh, sentencing um, recommendation. We need to make an exam a public example of this man. So nobody else will do this. Yeah, this she guy right here. In her statement. Yeah, that guy has no business being a supervisor. That guy needs to go sit down somewhere, get him a fat cigar, a bourbon, and a fishing pole, and get somewhere. He has no business being a police officer or a supervisor. Okay, and the reason being is because he's the one who states ignorantly and stupidly they're sovereign citizens. Yeah, I'm calling you out, bro. Put you on front street.
sometime I think these people make it to the top just by their ignorance, just by how stupid they can right. answer or think of something or how well they get programmed on the way up. Okay. Um, yeah, I've got somebody who just reached out to me. They're watching right now. Um, uh, who will assist in uh, getting her significant other out. Um, man, what a beautiful position I'm in. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm thank my creator for putting me in the position to be able to divinely help everybody because this is obviously, as you see, is bigger than myself, it's bigger than Anne. Um, this is just a travesty happening cross country. They're taking people's kids. They're taking people's property, and we have to stop this. Okay, it's up to us. We the people. Nobody's going to come save you. Trump's not going to save you. Your congressman's not going to save you. Your representative's not going to save you. Your sheriff's not going to save you. Your police chief's not going to save you. Your neighbor's not going to save you. It's up to you to stand up for yourself and fight for your rights. Okay. Exactly. That's and I do. I. I mean, I will be honest with you. President Trump did write that executive order, 13818, guys, and he did set up the Department of TIGA, T-I-G-A, yeah, and um, believe it or not, I'm using it, and I am getting response back from it. I actually got a letter and giving me the information, the investigation number, and it is being noted. So they're not, I mean, just reporting these, it's not just going into a file, guys. They are standing up and taking notice. Well, I guess they did on mine because I sent them seven and a half pounds of documents and it was in a nice binder. It had the affidavit, it had the entry letter, it had the index and it had everything in order, correlated in order for them to go through this. So, uh, yeah, I guess um, I made some sort of an impression on them, but this is how it happens. This is how it works. Yep. And you can see he's not being belligerent at all. You know, he's cooperating, sitting there calmly. He's not yelling, not screaming, conducting himself with honor. So sad. Mm, this isn't the first time I've seen that. I'll be uh, honest yeah, with you, it's not. Yeah. And it's, it's you know, it's to the point now where if people do not stand up and literally come and say something to these people, then you guys are the ones who are losing out. We cannot voice the opinion for you. You have to voice your own opinion. And that's what it means by standing up and becoming a major and stop being a minor. Absolutely. Wow. Well, Floyd, gonna run. <laughs> yes. Um, I'll I'll contact you later this evening. Well, actually, we have trust class tonight. At, yeah, uh, I have class with you later this evening or later yeah. this afternoon, my time. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll get on there. All right, okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, All bye, right, guys. Right. And hello for the yes, next guest. <laughs> See you guys soon. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got your text. Hang on, I can only do two, th two things at once. All right, bye. Okay. Happy Valentine's Day to the gorgeous America's mom, <laughs> Erica Kilday. Man, you look stunning today. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I love your festive shirt for the holiday. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> It was actually in the very back of my closet. So there you go. Well, it was worth the hunt. So <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Uh, wow. So what did you think about the uh, well Anne's presentation and then diving into Kayla, which is coming on after you? And you're more than welcome to stay on with uh because Alicia Beverly's coming on, Kayla's coming on, um, and they're inviting a couple other people. I need to send Eric the link right now. He wanted to jump on and chime in quickly. So uh, let me do all this. Um, and meanwhile, while I do that, um, what are you going to talk to us about today? Well, first I want to say um, that was really hard to watch. <laughs> And I feel like I needed a trigger like warning and I'm not a snowflake, but that was really upsetting. So, um, it's horrible. Yeah. yeah I I've mean, I see this stuff and I, you know, I read this stuff, you know, cause you guys, you're always reaching out to me for help. And, you know, um, 
if I could, you know, have a magic wand and solve your problems, I'd love to do it. And I try to connect as many people as I can to assist so we can find remedy and resolution. Um, and, you know, sometimes I'm not 100% effective, but I do the best I can with what I have. Thank God I have people like Erica and, you know, Felicia Beverly, my assistants, Natalie, all that, who do come in here and help me out. So this is something that I think we all need to work on. Uh, Erica, you know, for some reason just found out today that I set up a telegram room for her, <laughs> which uh, I established right after we did our show last week. So uh, we are going to get to that. And uh, okay, there's Eric. Uh, did you want to jump in and chime in, Eric, with something real quick? Yeah, Brother Floyd, I, I just can't tell you guys loud enough. I can't sing this loud enough from the highest mountain. This this thing about your children, this has to do with your religious dictates of your conscience. Okay, it's not your religion because that's a cult. The any religion is considered a cult under under these laws. Okay, as soon as you name the religion, but what is tested is your religious dictates of your conscience, and so people have to start um, expressing their trust that these children. Are, are in these positions because of the religious dictates of my conscience as a parent. And as soon as they do that, they have a right. Because what are you going to say? They, you know, they offended me. They, you know, this is prejudice. Yeah, prejudice on what? What, prejudice? Because what? You know, your teeth don't shine? Like, what prejudice? And that's why you have to establish evidences that your religious dictates of your conscience is the reason why you take these steps. It's just so critical. And when people start writing those words and start speaking those words, that is the expression of the trust. And they can uphold that because they can evidence it in a civil court. I yield, brother. Thank you very much for that, Eric. Um, man, I look forward to you coming on tomorrow. Um, I'm going to bring Kayla. Uh, on the last hour tomorrow at four o'clock and uh, have you uh, as well as Brian and anybody else who wants to come on that show uh, talk more at length. Today at four o'clock will be mainly an introduction to Kayla, her circumstances and uh, what she's currently existing and going through for herself, her children and her significant other. So each, each one of you who have uh, reached out to me or want to reach out to and assist Kayla with the recovery of her family, because that's basically what this is, uh, send me emails, telegrams, call me, text me, whatever. Uh, I will set up a telegram room more likely than not during Erica's presentation strictly for the CPS issues. Um, each individual that I do place in that telegram will have full administrative rights. It is your, your group, your channel to do as you may um, to connect all the other uh, disfranchised families uh, and remainders of those families. And so we can, so we can recreate America like it should be. That's simply as I can put it, not aggressive. Okay, Erica, floor is yours. Well, I think I'm going to have to cut my content. <laughs> Why? So um, I'm going to adjust. I, I was going to make this at my homeschool day, but um, I'm going to share some of the stuff that I've been working on this week um, instead. Okay. And um, I would also like to announce that I have a guest coming on next week, and oh, I'm really awesome. excited because she is um, a like-minded mom and she homeschools. She has a couple of businesses. She is teaching um, her kids her kids to do business. Um, and she's working on that with them. Her name is um, Jill Marie. And we've been in a lot of the same groups and studied all of the same things. And so I'm really excited to have her on and have a, a fluid conversation about how we're approaching um, educating our kids and protecting our kids and what forms we filed and that sort of thing. So um, that'll be next week. So wow. um, so what part of what I'm going to start doing on a, a weekly basis is to kind of update everybody on what forms I've been filing for my kids and then an update on, hey, have these been well received? Have they been received at all? Have I had uh, 
kick back because I think that it is um, important to find out what's working, what's not working, or I had success with this. And so I just want to, um, since I'm actively working on this stuff, I want people to be able to see what has um, generated results. So um, let's see, I'm gonna go back over. Um, we went over the 4-H paperwork in my first, um, in my first uh, time with Floyd this season. And um, I also did the youth group paperwork and I have not heard back from either um, group about those. Um, a little tip that I wanted to share with, um, with everyone was that I, oh, I have a tracker on my email. And if you don't utilize a tracker, I highly recommend it because it allows you to see who's opened your email when they opened it, um, and then how many times it's been opened. And I, when I'm doing stuff for my kids, I'm not necessarily sending everything out certified mail with the return receipt and all of that. So this enables me to get quick access to information. And also it's documentation that an item has been received. So um, I highly recommend that you can go Google, you know, whatever mail tracker might be available um, to, to you for your, um, for your, your email. Anyway, it's been a, a great tool and it's worth, worth spending money on. So, um, so the thing I'm working on right now. And, and how much uh, is stuff, something like that? What's the monthly? Subscription? Man, I think I paid for a year for like 15 bucks or something. It's really oh, cheap. That's totally worth it. Worth it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I digress. So, and, and you'll even see like, Hey, somebody opened up that email from six months ago. And then I, I always find that very curious. <laughs> so <laughs> um, anyway, uh, let's see. So the first thing I want to talk about is my um, the Hunter's class I'm trying to sign my son up for. And Fearless Floyd, I might need your thoughts on this because I'm a little bit stuck. And I think these are the parenting things that we need to sort through. And it is, I need to get my kids signed up for this class. And he just walked away. <laughs> So I need to get my kids on it for this class. Um, I need to, I need to just bust through this because I know this class is going to fill up. But guess what? Uh, the Kentucky Hunters Association or Wildlife and Game or whatever it is that puts on the Hunters class, they need your social security number. And I didn't get anywhere with it last week. I didn't get anywhere with it today. Um, or I'm sorry, yesterday when I talked to them. And I was told to put in all nines on the online form. Couldn't do that. So I finally called in and talked to someone and it did not go well for me. And we could not come to a meeting of the minds. And I was asked, are you an attorney? And I'm like, well, no, I'm just citing the law. And um, they didn't like that. And they kept calling me ma'am, <laughs> which was not fun. Anyway. Um, so I'm kind of at an impasse because what I'm being told about this is that it's attached to your social security number because they attach, they attach the actual license. They attach the license and they attach um, the fact that you've been through the training. So as she put it, it will follow my child for 70 plus years of his life. And it will always be on his record that he went through the, the hunter's class, right? So one on one hand yeah that's that's great i want him to have that attached to him on the other hand when we know that there's some like really bad things happening that will involve tracking that could uh discriminate against certain individuals um that's concerning to me um so i'm honestly not quite sure what to do with that because i feel like i'm in this really awkward place and again, it's, I don't want to give in to something that I feel like is not advantageous, but my child is being prevented from, um, you know, the privileges. And I know that I know what the law says, you guys probably know what the law says, and I've quoted that to, um, their agents. So if it's supposed to be attached to my child, I'm not quite sure how to, um, to navigate that. So anyway, um, I'm, like thinking about it, pondering about it. And I'm sure that I have some helpful things people will suggest. The very interesting thing that this gal told me was that um, 
I could get him what she initially said was an Amish number. <laughs> I'm like, oh, an Amish number, huh? And she's like, yes, that's how we, and then she like stopped talking and she backtracked and she said, I mean, uh, so she called it some other kind of number. And so I thought that was really interesting that they had that available, but it's still a number attached to your child. So Fearless Floyd, do you have any thoughts on this? Um. Yeah, we can set something up. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be in the background. I'm right here. I'm just on the other side of my desk at my yeah. other laptop, and I'm gonna create the Telegram channel for the CPA. That's right. I forgot. Okay. I'm gonna just keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't need you to figure this out. This is just what I'm thinking about, you know. And and I'll I'll get to the solution. But okay, you go do Telegram, and I definitely want to be part of that group as well. So yeah, yeah. um. So another um, aspect that I wanted to share with you guys is that um, just some different things that I'm seeing in my groups and where people are reaching out to me. Um, and I think it's important that um, we're kept abreast of the different things that are taking place. So um, I, I had a, a woman reach out to me about a truancy um, issue that she's having, and she was sent a um, summons for a a hearing um, via email, which is not how you're supposed to do it. Um, and then she she just didn't know what to do. She's overwhelmed. And of course, you know, what strikes fear into every parent's heart is this idea of having CPS um, be called on you. And this woman had uh, two other, so she has a total of three children in the school system. And um, this child has chronic migraines. She has just had a horrible like, cold season. And, you know, we've gone from all the grace in the world for absences and absence, uh, you know, if you have a sniffle, right, to now this child having significant medical issues and they're calling it truancy. And I really see that parents have had a lot of whiplash. I mean, we all have, right? But um, to see the whiplash that's occurred for, um, for families who have their kids in school with everything changing, um, I, I see that that has been difficult. So um, I went in and created a packet for this mom and, um, I started researching before I put my packet together. And what I researched was, you know, all the things under the Texas truancy issues and came up with some very um, like concerning things, like really concerning. So the first thing I wanna say is do not let your child sign anything. Do not allow them to sign their names. At this point, I would say, don't even, don't even teach them. <laughs> I know that's unrealistic, but don't allow them to sign to sign anything because here's what is allowed in Texas. You can give the truancy if you if you're involved in the truancy um facilitation is one of the the verbiage, one of the, the words that they used. If you're involved in the truancy program, two things can happen. Your minor can sign away their rights, like their constitutional rights, and they can do it themselves without even talking to the parent uh, or involving the parent, the child can just waive their constitutional rights if they're involved in um, this hearing process. Um, the other thing is that they can sign away the uh, power of attorney to the truancy board or officers until they're 19 years old. And I saw this <laughs> just, we know that the school district is inserting themselves or in the government is inserting themselves in the place of parents, but just to see this in black and white was really surprising. So of course I went back to that mom and just asked, Hey, has your kid signed anything where we rescinded everything anyway, but um, I just wanted to see what had been done or how that situation had been approached. So um, this is the packet I put together for her. Um, we did a conditional acceptance and I just went through and I poked holes at all their assumptions.
assumptions and presumptions that they were making and even the audacity to send this mom a summons for they call it a truancy tribunal <laughs> just so i mean if you if you don't know how to handle yourself of course i i'm like okay this can easily be solved right but if you don't know how to handle yourself you don't know your rights of course that's overwhelming you know put yourself in the position of I'm a mom with a sick kid. I have two other kids I'm dealing with. I'm working full time. I'm just trying to keep my head above water. And then you get, you know, these ridiculous um, summons in the mail when you're just trying to be a mom. So, you know, one of the assumptions that they're making is that they can make better parenting decisions than you can. This mom had called out every time her child was staying home or was sick. But unfortunately for the school, the school district felt that it met their, um, what is it, a threshold of too many absences. Um, so again, don't let your kids hide anything. So we did the conditional acceptance. We poked, you know, holes in all the presumptions. I did a, um, we rescinded her signature and any power of attorney that was assumed on behalf of the school district. Um, we did a trust for her family and wrapped all the children into that trust. Um, we did a declaration of status, um, a cease and desist with a list of activities, um, a fee schedule. And um, then we also did a no trespass uh, sign for her to post at her home and then a fee schedule. So both of those would be posted um, at the edge of her property. Um, I'm not quite sure what her living situation was, but it was either at the edge of her property laminated. Um, and I sound like a homeschool mom with my whole laminated thing, but really, um, it, a laminator is useful for many things. So this being one, um, you could change your fee schedule out at any time and repost. So, um, and then, you know, to put that at her door as well. And we talked about how to handle things if they come to her door, um, and then, of course, with all of that, um, all the documents she was going to send out, she was going to send a third party certificate of um, service. So the reason why that is important is that someone else is being a third party witness to the fact that you actually did send these documents and um, you want to have that that third party to say, yeah, she did put her declaration or, or her uh, certificate of trust in these documents. And so in adding in the certificate of trust, we wanted to send a message to um, the truancy people, to the principal, to um, the Texas Education Association, which is their like state school board, and then the regular school board for her school district that this, and I also sent it to the health department um, for Texas as well. The message I wanted to send was that this child is held in trust and there should be no question for who the, the parent is or to who the mother is. And so in all of the documents, I, I signed it for her as um, trustee and mother. And then um, for, so the trustee and mother for, and then the child's name and comma beneficiary for family trust, family living trust. And I view the fact that you are identifying um, the child and the parent in their different roles as a, a very important thing because it's just making it very clear about the roles that you're playing. Um, so that's what we did. She sent that out yesterday. So. Um, We'll see how it goes. Um, the hearing is set for the 28th. So that's about two weeks. Um, I'm very curious to see um, what she will hear back from them. And the mom kind of came to the conclusion that, well, I'm probably going to end up homeschooling at this point. <laughs> so um, if anything, it's going to just entangle her and make it that much easier to further entangle and do a homeschool situation. Um, so I look forward to reporting back to you guys on, on how that is going. Um, I also, in terms, I also had heard this week from a friend, so a different situation um, about, she sits on her local library board and I've appreciated this mom's, who is my good friend, I appreciate her ability to support having any sort of material available in um, 
the library system is it's a public library system and anyone can use it and we don't want to be you know down the road of book banning and and that sort of thing right but she found out something interesting this week that I wanted to pass on to um, everyone and that is that if a child has a library card the parents are do not have access to what that child has checked out from the library. Now, I haven't checked to see if that's with, if that's also true of my local library um, system, but my friend happens to be in Mississippi and it was very surprising. So she went and she revoked, um, <laughs> she was like, no, my children do not have library cards. We can all, like we, we they give you tons and tons of books you can check out on just one library card. So she went and she, Whip those suckers back and said, no, kids are not, they don't need their own library card. We're done. So it begs the question, <laughs> what did you agree to when you signed up for a library card? There must have been some sort of power of attorney in place for them to believe that they had the right to exclude the parent from the relationship between um so you have like right the library you have the child you have the parent so they're just like knocking the parent out of the equation what exactly did you sign up for when you signed up for a library card that's a little ridiculous so since hearing this and and coming on today i haven't had a chance to go and, and look this stuff up but that's a power of attorney you guys i i just i i'm so surprised that they have the authority so begs the question also what else can the library um what else can the library do <laughs> and i've never considered that before i've never considered that they would have access to my child or be able to exclude me in the library child parent relationship and um i'll be i'm going to do a little bit of digging on that um and just kind of see where where that ends up the other thing that i'm um going to be looking into is where else you know i mentioned the texas situation where you can sign over the power of attorney until you're 19 again like cutting the parent out and then you can also waive your constitutional rights as a minor <laughs> also very concerning things that was very new information to me so i'm going to be kind of looking into you know what do what what does my library say what does my state say for the truancy stuff um and go from there so i'm kind of nervous and excited to see what I find out here. Um, so I was going to cover um, homeschooling today. And for me, that's a topic I'm very passionate about. So I'm going to need a whole hour to be able to go over that um, in detail. But um, one of the things I'm going to um, talk about now is, is kind of a subsection for me in the homeschooling. And I think that as a lot of parents are, I think in the last couple of years, kind of becoming truthers and um, realizing that we're fed an agenda and we're being fed information that just isn't correct and is, um, you know, we, we look at history and we know we've been lied to about history. The timeline isn't correct. Um, we know we've been lied to about religion. We know that we've been lied to about politics. We know we've been lied to about weather, about health. So as a parent, um, and especially a homeschool parent who, you know, it's my job to unravel this stuff with my, I want to say with my kid, because he's old enough for me to not just tell him this is the way it is, but for us to have intelligent conversation the struggle is for us to say this is what mainstream whatever whatever is saying and this is what my research has been and this is what i believe and so how do you in a very productive way have those conversations with your kids that empower them to think for themselves Yet at the same time, you are combating what their friends and their friends' parents think, what they might learn or talk about in any activities, 
um, and then what they might see or hear on social media or what grandma is playing with CNN, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? So there's all these different voices. And I think, you know, I know so many more than when I was growing up, right? Um, there's so many voices that are, are speaking right now. And um, I just want to acknowledge that it's hard. It's really hard when I'm going through a period of time where I'm realizing, wow, like history is a lie. How do I teach history when I'm having this, you know, mental, mental exercise? And how do I move forward in a really productive way when I'm dealing with a teenager who's embarrassed of mom anyway? <laughs> so, you know, like there's, that's a conundrum. <laughs> and, and what, what do you do with that? So I just want to acknowledge that I think a lot of parents are in this position of, you know, what, what do we teach them about the civil war when it's not just, it's, it's just not simple. So I just want to acknowledge that that's where a lot of parents are at. That's, it's been a lot of, um, a lot of a a challenge to break it down. There's a mom that um, I follow on Facebook and her name is there's no place like home. So she's a homeschool mom of like six or seven kids or something and super smart, intelligent woman. And she's also a truther. So she's exploring different topics, like where there are fairies, you know, <laughs> and you know, what is the real timeline? And you can kind of see her progress over time where she's really talked through and dealt with, with these topics and then her struggle in trying to teach that stuff to her kids. She has a recent video called uh, The Truther Homeschool Book Haul. And she has two videos on that. Um, I would really recommend going and taking a look because she's got some excellent resources there on um, books and different things that are useful for, for me and for different families. So, you know, I, I would recommend her. So she's called No Place Like Home and she's on YouTube and she's a great resource. So, um, The other thing that I wanted to talk about was, um, let me see. Oh, and this is why this was pertinent today. Um, A lot of times you see people wonder like when you have to pull um, kids out of school or when you can pull them out of school and when you can start homeschooling and it's just a really heartbreaking time of the school year um, for me to watch what what happens in the in this specific time because you're into the school year you're not at the end of the school year but kind of at the end of the school year at the t- you're at the the backside right and parents think oh man I don't want to like I don't want to make things difficult for my kid if I pull them out right now um, I don't want to um, cause a disruption. I want them to finish the school year. And I just really want to encourage parents that you can pull your kid out anytime, anytime today. If you're feeling convicted that your child should not be in public school, you can drive to the school, pick up your child and all their stuff and say, um, we're, we're not enrolled here anymore. We are done. We are done with the system. Bring your kid home and, and start your new path to homeschooling it's possible. (laughs) So two of the things, a couple of things I've seen this week that really brought this to mind. Um, one has been the illness thing. Um, I know of someone who was so scared of the school district because her kids had been sick for three days. She didn't have a doctor to bring her children to, because what we're also seeing is that pediatricians are refusing families to, to go in and they're refusing to see families who aren't uh, the V word, right? So families are being prevented from getting health care. So in this case, and it's actually been a couple of people I've talked to this week, the kids had legit been homesick. They were told if they didn't come back within that three days and show their faces at the school, then they would call the truancy officer. So what does this mom do? Her kids are very sick. She drives them to school. She has them go into the classroom being ill 
she has her children, she instructs her children to raise her hand and say, I'm sick, I need to go see the nurse. And then the child goes to the nurse, the nurse calls mom who's out in the car. That's ridiculous. <laughs> like, yes, that's ridiculous. But this same mom also, um, because she doesn't have a doctor who will write her child a note because they don't have the, the V word. So we continue to see ourselves in these conundrums. And I know that that it is my conviction and my family's conviction to homeschool, but that's that's not everyone else's conviction, right? And I, I one of the things I, so I asked, I interviewed my son today and I said, um, because I wanted to include that in part of my presentation today. And I asked him, do you think that everyone should be homeschooled? And he said, mom, no, not everyone should be homeschooled. We're all different. We all have different needs. We should all be doing something different if it suits the kid. And I was like, well, you are right. I am so proud of you. <laughs> so, um, that's phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was pretty encouraging that he's open-minded. Um, anyway, I can share more of that conversation later, but, um, and, and I believe the same thing. Like every kid has different needs, but the conundrum is can't find a doctor that will be accepted by the, the school. A doctor won't see you. So you can't get a doctor's note. So here we are back to, you know, 2020, 2021, 2022. You can't send your kid to school if they've even seen someone who has sniffles that lives next door to you can't be absent for more than three days without a doctor's note. So this particular mom I was just telling you about that had been absent for three days, sent her kids to school. She's planning on homeschooling next year. I, I don't understand. I don't understand that at all. School isn't working for him. Um, why, why not just call it a day? Why do you need to finish? If your child is struggling right now, pull your kid out today. That is an option and it's an option available to you. And I'm gonna tell you how to do it. And this is part of my, my thing today, but I think it's really important that every parent who is wondering, should I pull my kid out? Um, today is the day, go do it. <laughs> There's another child who uh, a mom reached out to me and she said, listen, I don't know what to do. I don't want to pull out now. And you know, that whole time conundrum that, that parents are finding themselves in like, oh, we've done half the school year. We, we just have a few more months left. Well, this child has a tummy issue and the teacher is only allowing the child to go to the restroom on skip two breaks a day on two potty breaks a day. He's in third grade. The mom was just like, I just, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. And I'm able to look at a parent and say, you know what to do. Trust your gut. God gave you that gut. God made you that child's mother. You just need to listen to that. And, and that's, that's what it's there for. We have intuition and we know our children and we know what their needs are. And we just need to follow that intuition and, and do what we know is the right thing to do. So I just told her, go pick up your kid today. It's like 10 AM, what are you doing? What are you doing? So um, hoping that worked out for that family. So let me tell you, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna march into school and you're gonna say, hey, I'm unenrolling my child. There will be a letter that you will need to send to uh, the school district. So my version of the letter would be to send in, um, to look at, at their letter, because there's going to be one on uh, an example of what you should send in on every, um, on every uh, state's website. And you're going to revise that letter. So do you, have a temp, do you have a template of that letter on your Facebook page or? No, but I made one today. <laughs> In the Telegram group that you have, <laughs> I can screen share and show it. Hey, um, there you go. Yeah, okay. You know me and my challenge with screen sharing. Um, let's see. Screen share. Practice makes perfect. I know. <laughs> okay. Is it showing up yet? Yeah. Okay. So. <clears throat> The um, top letter here is the letter of intent that 
the uh, Commonwealth of Kentucky would prefer you to send to them. And it has, uh, you know, the parent's name at the top and it tells you, oh, so helpful, replace with your information. It has who you're sending it to, um, your school's district's uh, superintendent, and then they want you to list out your children's names and ages and then say exactly what you're doing. You know, the school will take place in our home. Below you'll find the details regarding our homeschool, name of homeschool, name of parents and teachers, address of homeschool, and then signing the parent's name, right? Um, and then a reminder of when they want you to uh, send this out. Okay, so now we have Erica's version of how this should be, <laughs> which is different. So again, it's this idea of that doesn't work for me and my family. So let's go ahead and send in what will work. And this is what will work. Okay, so parents, please start using, anybody's, please start using a PO box. There's no reason not to use a PO box. Stop using the address where you live to send all of your mail, to tell the school district where you, where you reside and where you lay your head. That needs to stop. I think it's highly irresponsible. That's, that's my conviction. It is irresponsible to let people know where you reside, to let government agencies know where you reside. You are creating liability for yourself and your family. Okay, that's, you can find out PO box prices on usps.com. You can get a little box for not a whole lot of money. I highly recommend you do that. You can mail forward all of your mail. You can change your address. Spend, spend a little bit of money, a little bit of time doing that. I feel so protected knowing that people don't know where I lay my head. I feel very protected by that. Okay, so uh, you're gonna you're gonna use a PO box when you do your return address. Um, I don't want anyone showing up at my address saying, "Wait, you're homeschooling now? Tell us more about that." Because I live a private life and no one needs to know. So you're going to send, they want you to send it to the school superintendent, but I um, would advocate sending it to the state superintendent because I think both need to go on notice. And I want their records updated in a way that it's not going to be a further conversation. And typically with how, uh, how things are with school districts right now, you have to update every year. And what I say is let's stop that nonsense. Mm. So um, I think their letter is okay down through here, but this is what I'm going to add. Uh, this is the first and final report of intent to homeschool. You will receive no further communication regarding my family. All activities within the home are private and will not be reported to the state or any agency representing the state. So I'm totally taking out this whole this is the name of my homeschool. This is my address in which we homeschool um, because they don't need to know that. I'm the mom, I get to decide. Um, and then I put two different options down here for, um, for how you can sign. Cause I know that we have different people who have different understandings and you know what you choose. So um, the uh, kind of big version that I've been using is the buy, Doe Jonathan David as father and trustee of Doe Jr. So the kid, right? Beneficiary for the Family Living Trust, all rights reserved, UCC 1-308. So if you're not comfortable with that language, let's make it work for you and your family. Next option is Jane Doe, mother for Junior Doe, all rights reserved. That works too. Um, so down below, they had this interesting thing that I think is worth mentioning. And when you start to learn to look at language in certain ways, the language here is very interesting. So I put a big X over that because you pretty much don't need to worry about it. So when they, when they start saying things like, it is best to send this letter in a certain way, well, it is best isn't something you have to do. Um, preferably the second one there is not something you have to do. Um, and then it is acceptable is not something you have to do. 
And then please is not something you have to do. <laughs> so they've said that that loosey goosey language in there, you know, multiple times. And that tells me, well, I guess it's optional then, right? So I will do the courtesy of sending this letter once and that's it. I'm not going to continue to play the school district game with the school district and the state year after year, submitting to them my personal information about my family and what we're doing in our home. That's ridiculous. That needs to stop. So, so that is Erica's plan for uh, sending out how, you know, how you're going to end that relationship with the school district. Now, um, there's something I need to share with you guys that happens within your family after you decide to, to homeschool. Um, and I know I only, I only have like five minutes left, but I want to give you a heads up because this can be a shocker for a lot of families. Oh, Don't no, think. No, 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 you uh, you have a whole other hour if you want it. Well, but Felicia's here. <laughs> huh? Felicia's here. <laughs> oh, Felicia's early. Okay. Um, so, so what I, um, what I wanted to say is that don't think that you're going to go this afternoon and pull your kid out of school. And then you're going to tomorrow morning, you know, set up homeschool shop at 9.00 AM. And it's going to be awesome because that's not how it works. So I'm going to give you just a reality check for, for how it's going to work. Right. You need what's what we call a period of, uh, de-schooling. And that means that your family's dynamics are changing significantly. So where you guys have been apart all day, going your different directions, suddenly you're home all day and there's different expectations for everybody. You need to work that out, man. Like that's <laughs> something that seriously, like that takes a while. That takes a while to figure out those new relationships, those new dynamics. And there's also... Oftentimes, like think about each of these kids, they've been traumatized being in school, going to school sick, and then being jerked out of the classroom and having to call the nurse, like, or not being allowed to use the potty when you need it as a third grader. That's trauma. That's trauma. Who knows what else, you know, has been taking place. Um, I could make up things, but I think you can, you've got an imagination, right? right. So it's all it's all stuff that needs to be unwound. So I can't remember what homeschool moms, like what the standard is, but it's something like for every month your child's been in school, you need a month of D school, which is kind of interesting. And this it's been, I, I believe that that's what it is, but it's, it's, there's some sort of um, guideline that a lot of um, homeschool moms will, will kind of give that you can't expect that today you jump out of school and tomorrow you have a magical homeschool experience where everyone is well behaved and doing what they should be doing. Well, what you should be doing is 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 de-schooling. Here's what happens for moms or, or dads or whoever's doing the homeschooling, right? Or grandmas or aunts or uncles, anybody can do it. Um, you're not only learning those new relationships, but you're also learning that school and education and learning looks different and it can be different. And if you have bought into the educational system for years and you were raised that way, it's going to look very different when you finally bring your kid home and they don't want to get dressed all day and they want to just get up and read for a couple hours. And in your mind, you're thinking, well, reading is only 20 minutes. What do you mean you want to continue to read in your pajamas on the couch, right? Uh -huh. and, and in my home, that's okay. Like my kid didn't get dressed. Let's see, it is four o'clock. He didn't get dressed till probably two o'clock today. And you know what? That's okay. Because we had the best day. His mental health is in check. Um, he, he did shower, which is awesome. <laughs> He's been fed. He's enjoyed reading. Like he's had, he's had his best day and that is totally fine with me. Well, guess what? Some other parents might not be okay with that. And that's a dynamic change. And that's a switch that not just the kid has to adjust to, but you have to be okay with how your kid wants to learn. They have to be comfortable in their home. They have to be comfortable in their own skin. And once you give them that time to breathe, it's the most beautiful thing to see your child be comfortable. 
I, I got up <clears throat> this morning and we were both like, I was doing some show prep today and, uh, my, my son was out on the couch and he's reading, like, he's just reading. He knows what the expectation is because we've done the whole de-schooling thing, right? Like we, we know what each other's dynamic, we know what the dynamic is and we're comfortable with that. So to walk out this morning and see him on the couch in pajamas reading, it, that was, that was cool. That's what should be happening in my home at, you know, eight 30 in the morning. So <clears throat> my encouragement is to you, if you know, you need to pull your kid out of school, do it today or let them come home from school. Don't let them go in tomorrow. You march in there and you tell them this is, this is not what we're going to do anymore. And I'm saying that in the tone of mom, mom and dad, and, and whoever else might be the guardian for that child, trust your gut. Don't, don't keep second guessing it. If you know, your kid's not doing well, go grab them, go get them out of school. And, um, I want to, I guess I'll end with this. Um, I was homeschooled on and off through school. I went to private school. I went to public school and I was homeschooled. And then I graduated early. I went to college at 17. So I've had exposure, not just homeschooling my own children, but I've had exposure to um, a different educational um, background for myself. Also, if you're pulling your kid out, there are so many moms sitting on Facebook right now that want to give you advice. <laughs> so, so take advantage of that. So many moms. So, so there you go. Okay. So let me tell you my story. Um, I was in eighth grade. My sister is two years behind me. So she was in sixth grade. We were in middle school. Um, day after day after day, we were getting sexually assaulted as we walked down the hall. My mom you know, we would come home and tell my mom about this. My mom was just like, okay, we're going to do something right. Like she's a lady that got, she does stuff. And she was marching into the principal's office. She was talking to the teacher. She was asking, why aren't there people out there protecting my girls? My girls are coming home, having a really difficult time. They are being assaulted. They're being grabbed. And the teacher was like, well, we just don't have enough staff. We don't have enough staff to watch your girls. Like we just, and she's like, no, no, no. If it's happening to my girls, it's happening to other girls. It's got to stop and couldn't do anything. Couldn't do anything. Like just, just couldn't be bothered with it. So I know that my mom was really, she really fought. She really fought to keep us in school. She really fought to make it work. And <laughs> one day she, like, she didn't send us to school and she had five kids. I was the oldest and my sister was the second down. She packed us all in big red suburban. She drove us up. And I just remember being in this car going really fast. She drove us up to the, the middle school and uh, she walked inside with me and my sister and my other sisters. <laughs> and she stood there and she said, I am unenrolling my girls today. They are no longer your students. They are coming home with me. I want to make sure that they are disenrolled today it ends, this stops. And then we all walked back out to the suburban and within 24 hours, she had homeschool <laughs> curriculum for us and a tutor. Like she just, she just made that decision and she just did it. And that is one of the most beautiful examples of being champions in my entire life. Like my mom is my hero. The fact that she did that and she just said this, this is just not going to happen. She knew she was a mom that followed her gut and she knew what was happening was wrong. How can a child learn in an environment where they're being sexually harassed? How can that possibly happen? Um, and assaulted. Um, so guess what? The school isn't going to protect your kid. I don't care if it's bullying. I don't care if it's sexual harassment, mom and dad, it's up to you. So anyway, I just wanted to say, thanks, mom. <laughs> And, uh, that guess what? She raised five really super smart. If I do say so myself, uh, kids who, um, can figure stuff out. She taught us to be problem solvers and, um, be, you know, give the, give your kid that moment. If your kid's struggling, give your kid that moment of being their champion. So yeah, there we are. Floyd, we can get back to, back to you now, the end. 
he's going to go transfer over. So thanks for listening today, guys. I appreciate it. So a little different than I planned, but I think it worked out. So, <clears throat> um, oh, feel free to uh, reach out to me. I now have a Telegram group. Um, and I also have uh, a Facebook group. Um, I am happy to put that in the, the comments and I would be more than happy to um, help coach you through homeschooling, help you figure out what needs to happen for your family. I have some awesome books that I recommend. Um, one is Unschooling Rules. That is a book that I've handed out to more families. It should be a foundational book if you're thinking about homeschooling. If you are pulling your kid out this afternoon, get that book and you and your kid cozy up with books tomorrow afternoon and just read, just hang out, just be together. Um, the next one is Dumbing Us Down um, by John Taylor Gatto. He was a um, school teacher in New York for a very long time. And it's just an amazing book about how he had to dumb down kids and he knew it. So um, anyway, so let's see. So Facebook, Telegram, and I think we are back to Floyd. Are you there? I no? am. Can okay. Yeah. All right. Telegram room is established. And uh, I tentatively called it Christ Child Recovery Investigation Support Team. So the telegram is created. A temporary logo is created. If somebody wants to uh, foo foo that up for me, I've already added. Uh, some guests in here. I know Kayla just called me. So Kayla, if you're listening, uh, I can send you the link. But uh, let me, I'm going to make this a public group. So you guys are more than welcome to come join this, participate, help, assist, do whatever you can. Um, donations, doesn't matter. Um, so, and we have... Uh, your other group, if I can find it. Um, there it is. And this is private families right here. That's what the logo looks like. <clears throat> and you can see there's a, a hot rock and two members in there. <laughs> We're lonely. Come join us. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yep. So uh, that, that's Erica's site. It's all hers. It's hers to run, to do what, as she wishes, to make anybody administrator, help her out, uh, whatever. So that's hers. So now she looks look like. Uh, same logo on Facebook, Private Families. All her information is in the description below. And it's also on the fearlessfloydshow.com. So go to the website, go to the team page. And you'll find Erica's information, all her contacts, and uh, her biography. And I'm happy yeah, to have I, um, I will go back through the uh, show comments um, when I log off and do some responding. So, okay. Yeah. yeah, I haven't even had a chance to look at those. So, I want to get this yeah. set up for you guys. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so we have something to start. So, okay. uh, are, are you bailing? Um, yeah, I've, I've got some comments to, uh, to go through and okay. I've got a Valentine dinner to make. So yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, well, yeah. A... oh. Uh oh. I think I muted you. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was trying to mute myself. There. There. I'll unmute I'll myself unmute. there. Here we go. I apologize. I have a little feedback. So I should just turn that laptop around. You can hear me now, right? Yes, yes. Okay. I will not unmute you in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then make you co-host. <laughs> all right uh okay. have again have a very romantic uh valentine's day dinner yeah we're uh, gonna play uno we're gonna um eat a have a roast and watch a movie together as a family so family valentine's <laughs> are y'all gonna watch white noise tonight um no we are finishing where the crawdad sings or oh, whatever the craw the yeah where the crawdad sings yeah, yeah that's a um Mm, I've read the book. I know who the author is. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating. So yeah, it, yeah it's, it's a good book. Uh, well, I said about White Noise because it's the movie that they made in Ohio about the train derailment and the evacuation of the town. Oh, you know what? I was going to talk about that today because that was part of my parenting conundrum in going over current events today. So I'll save it for another time. So <laughs> uh, kill it. All right, girl. Well, thank you okay. for being here. Uh, just, yeah, just uh, while you're doing the chats, linger in here in case we want to need to touch back with you. You need to jump right. back on. Okay. Yeah, I will. I'll do that. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Hey, Felicia. Hey, I'm so sorry. I thought uh, I thought I got the time. I guess I got the time wrong. <laughs> oh, no. Here, let me take a uh, spotlight off her. No, no, no you're good. Yeah. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm homeschooling yes. my kids as well. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. I think everybody should homeschool their kids. It's, you know, it's horrible what we've done to our country and our people. It's sad. I just, you know, I used to not give a crap, didn't care. It was all about me and, you know, what I could get my own instant gratification. And uh, for some reason, my life's changed and it's not about me anymore. Um, and as you as well, I could see you were making sacrifices and strides toward helping other people. And that's what this is all about. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you for being here. My phone has just been nonstop blowing up. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I didn't, uh, I didn't hang up on you, Kayla, if you are available. So I think I've sent her the link so she can jump on if she wants. Um, and I know Rebecca was going to jump on, but Rebecca is taking a nap. And she has odd hours. So she's going to jump on. Rebecca Presswich. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I just spoke with them. She's making strides today, actually. She called a U.S. Marshal, and she's she's talking. She actually found her own case on Pacer as she is the. Yeah. yeah so there's a just lot going that. on. With her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I found my petition on Pacer against them. And here's my proof of executrix EIN to the IRS. Yep. Oh, that's Kayla that found that. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, I can't wait for her to get on here. Uh, let me text her. Hey, Kayla, if you're listening, I sent it to you through Telegram. I can send it to you as well on text. Where are you at? There you are. Okay, I'm sending it. Just texted it to you. I'm going to telegram it to you. And I just got a reply back from um, Dr. Kia Ebeling. I haven't sent her anything. So, boom. There you go, Kayla. It's in Telegram as well as in your texts. And, uh, oh, awesome. Um, Dr. Ebling, uh, this quote Thank you for inviting me on, the sh on to the show. I'm not sure I can commit every Monday, but every other Monday may work well. Doing a past life regression would be fun, but it would have to be around 7 p.m. or later Central Time, which is fine with me. Uh, I'll reach out to Holly and coordinate with her being available to go live. I'm super impressed with Jason's portion. Wow. Yeah, Jason's a remarkable guy. Uh, doctor, uh, if you're listening uh, or going to listen, yes, thank you. Uh, you're more than welcome to come back anytime, all the time. Absolutely. All right, Felicia, um, do you want to wait for Kayla to break this in? Do you want to do an introduction? You know, we kind of touched on it with Ann earlier. Yeah, you can. Um, I just text Kayla, too, so I think she'll jump on real soon. Yeah, she should. She she thought I hung up on her and I didn't. But, uh, you know, as always, I'm trying to do three things at once. <laughs> There she is. And 
You have co-host ability, Felicia, as does Kayla. So if you want to share anything on your screen, just make sure it's uh, okay with the uh, Google God. <laughs> <laughs> You can unmute. There she is. Unmute yourself. Hi, guys. Go. Oh, God. The lady <laughs> of the hour. Introduce yourself. Tell us who you are. Hi. Well, I'm a woman known as Kayla. And um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, my apologies. You got me on the spotlight now, so I'm a little nervous. Oh, no, no, no. Um, this, is, this is just me and you talking on the phone. Okay, okay good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, hi, I'm Kayla, and um, I've just been in the fire for the past two years, and um, God's brought bringing me through this, so um, I'm, I'm searching for remedy. I provided a lot of remedy, but none of my re remedy is being acknowledged as of right now, but it will be. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm looking for a like-minded man and woman because the Bible tells us that um, counsel is with the ones who have their eyes and ears open. So I'm open to any suggestions on um, what I, you know, if you have any suggestions on what I can do. Um, for relief, um, to get my biological and intellectual property restored to me immediately, or in my my husband, who is currently um, held in involuntary servitude at the David L. Moss Detention Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I I'm open to suggestions. I've done a lot of paperwork, and um, I stood on my square in the courtroom, which I know a lot of people say, you're not supposed to go to court. Well, I was forced in shackles. So um, all my other court has been held on paper, registered mail um, through the Foreign Office of Origin, the general post delivery. So, um, but like I said, nothing has been um, acknowledged. So I've even invoked like the Internal Revenue Service, the Par Department of Justice. Um, I was surprised when I looked on PACER earlier um, there is an active uh, case on PACER, which shows me as a petitioner. And it says, you know, the living man name, House of Fitz, um, in full life to Juris, which is really um, incredible. So, um, yeah, I know. Kayla. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. You're doing amazing. And people are going to share your story. This is what this is for. And since Fearless Floyd just, you know, popped right in there and helped us out to get this out there. Just tell your story from the very beginning. Start with um, you and your husband, you had property. It was private property, private sale. Mm -hmm. You lived in, in an amazing way. So just start oh, yes. there and just tell them why. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So approximately like um, about four okay. or five years ago, we decided. Okay, hang on. When, okay. you, when, you, when you start describing where your real property is, use jurisdiction. It was in this part of Tulsa, Oklahoma, or Okmulgee, Oklahoma, or Cowetta, Oklahoma. So jurisdiction is going to be paramount with what your issue. So get with that, because I've already talked about it earlier, that this potentially happened on the Skogee Creek land. We will have to determine that by the uh, Supreme Court uh, territorial boundaries regarding the treaty with the United States. So this is, you know, we don't, we don't know how it's going to roll yet, but go ahead and explain your story, start to finish, take your time. You're under no pressure. Just, yeah, just tell, tell it like it is. Don't leave anything out, please. Yeah. Not to grow. So we started being enlightened about eight, nine years ago. And uh, we did, were determined to completely make our life holistic. And we were led by the Holy Spirit. And we um, purchased this property, beautiful 40 acres. Um, and the, you know, on the landmass of Arkansas in what's known as um, Pettigrew. And uh, we did this private um, sale with this man and woman. And we didn't know that the land was 
pretty much in dispute, um, a relative of theirs who is an employee for the county road grader um, for the Madison County business, um, wanted to hunt our land since he's had hunted it since he was 10 years old. And my husband told him, no, you know, we're fencing off this property. Um, we have five young ones out here, which um, my youngest two are, we're not registered in any way, no social security number, none of that. We have actual, um, they were born free. So no hospital, nothing. Um, and so when we got this property, it was logged. My husband and I, we worked so hard to make it our own and, uh, turn it into fields. We had cattle, sheep, goats, ducks, chickens, rabbits, ponies. I mean, you you name it. We had our own milk, cheese, eggs. We were in contact with local Amish and Mennonites to get other, you know, supplies that we needed. And um, it started on or about like the July 4th of 2020. Um, we had an officer, an acting officer. Well, it was an unidentified man who came in an unidentified car, unmarked, nothing at 1030 at night and pulled up right to where we were, which we had two wells dug. Uh, generator, wind turbine, there was no address, there was no electric pole, so there was no jurisdiction whatsoever. And um, he pulled up and he said, I'm here to do a welfare check. And it was like 1030 at night. And my husband says, well, you know, where's your, what authority do you have to come out here? You know, like I said, he was just a look like a man. And he said, you know, he was from the Madison County Police Department, and he was doing a welfare check, and he had to see our children. And, um, you know, so I said, you know, you need to leave. This is private property. It's all marked. We don't even have an address. You know, um, you need to leave and come back with a lawful warrant if you want to speak with us. Because he was trying to get our names and birth dates and all this silly stuff. So he left. And then the next night they came out with like two or three more cars um, to the property. There was a state trooper, a, a sheriff's and the county police. And we did not have any participation with them at whatsoever. And then the next night they came out with like four or five cars um, coming out there on our property to look for us at dusk, like right before it got dark. And then the very next night they came out with like five or six cars. I mean, there was a lot coming down on us. And um, I, we believe that they had dogs because we could hear dogs barking to try to look for us. And um, they didn't find us. And so then a month later, uh, my husband and I were stopped at a um, at a, a gas station who was putting air in the tires, and we had all of our supplies. Because from where we are, it's six miles down this dirt road, and um, you know we don't have cell phone signal out there, nothing. I mean, we were completely off the grid. And um, anyways, so we were stopped at this gas station, and this man in a uniform. My, oh, okay, I see. Um, came up to my husband very angrily and said, I know who you are and you have warrants. And my husband wanted to see the warrants. I was at that time pregnant and due to bring forth life into this plane of existence that very week. And um, so they chained us, put us in their cars and took us to the Madison County Courthouse and locked us in there for three to four hours. And then they released us with a charge to a misdemeanor charge to the estate um, for possession of marijuana. That's what they said. They illegally and unlawfully searched the vehicle and found an ounce of cannabis. And we had a hunting rifle and two registered pistols. And uh, so I wanted my babies back and DHS, these acting employees for the Department of uh, Health and Human Services for the state of Arkansas came and took our four creations and transported them 50 miles away to where all of our my husband's relatives live. And his, his um, blood relative came up to there and told them I want my nieces and nephews. And he's actually employed with Madison County as a school bus driver. And they told him no. And he has a four bedroom house, an 80 acre farm out there and they refused. So they took them over 50 miles away without our consent, without a contract, with anything. Um, and took pictures of them and put them onto an unfamiliar woman's uh, computer. 
I found that out by my oldest daughter. She told me the next day they released them 24 hours later, no paperwork, no, no account of this event whatsoever was given to us. Right. And so after that, I was trying to research what I could do for this because, you know, I know I'm not that person. I know I'm not that state. I already had known these things at that time, but um, I didn't have any papers on the record or any, I didn't think, I thought that I could stand on my square that my creator, I'm, you know, I'm a living woman and um, they don't care about those words when you get into those situations. So um, anyways, um, about a month and a half later, the prosecutor and the clerk, the head teller, <laughs> came in together and did an amnesterial process and they created new charges for that one event running the misdemeanor and then they charged the state with a felony possession of uh, marijuana or it was a it was a felony possession of a controlled substance with intent to deliver with simultaneous possession of guns um it's like a class y felony in arkansas and the statutes and codes if you go look it's for gang members with priors which could have never even applied to us even if we were citizens oath takers whatever um so they were running a misdemeanor and a felony concurrent for one event and i didn't know at this time so i had sent in my declaration of status in a a uh, notice to dismiss for lack of jurisdiction on or about like December 15th, right? And then um, around January 19th of 2021, I, I hadn't heard back from the clerk. She didn't give me a new court date because I said, you know, I'm, I'm not going to appear uh, on this day. I'm not going to be at, I told her, you know. Um, anyway, so on January 19th, we were traveling through Arkansas. We were trying to move our, our farm to another man's farm because he knew what was going on. He said, hey, come here. You know, I've got this land, you can stay over here. We wanted to leave. Um, but we were arrested on the side of the road by two, uh, by acting sheriff for Van Buren County, Arkansas, Lucas Emberton. And my husband, he pulled over to be a good neighbor and asked what the emergency was. Well, the sheriff pulled him out of the car and um, wanted to contract with him. For over two hours, he kept asking him, his name, his information. My husband didn't want to give it to him, but they left the car doors open. And my son was only four months old and I'm breastfeeding. And my other four were all huddled, huddled together to try to stay warm. And the officer said, well, if you just tell me your name, I'll let your wife and your babies go. So my husband's like, well, I'm called Colby. And immediately after he did that, they tackled him, put the cuffs on and uh, they cuffed me and this white van showed up and this woman named Mary Ann Conley took off of my babies. And I was like, I love you so much. I'll see you soon. I never consented. I never even said my name. I didn't give them anything over me. Um, but they shackled us. They took us to the Van Buren County Detention Center. And then they transported us from Van Buren County Detention Center to Carroll County Detention Center, which because Madison County, the original, doesn't have a jail. They're, it's just a small little town, you know. And so then they put us in Carroll County Detention Center. When we went before for the, you know, the bond hearing, uh, the judge muted us out. We were not, um, we were not allowed to speak. He set the bond at 50000 I had GSA forms with me, power of attorney, and a copy of the birth certificate. So this is a person. I'm, you know, um, and so I had those GSA forms. I, when I was speaking to my dad, I said, please dad, call, call the sheriff and tell him to come down here and get these paperwork. This will release us. Well, the sheriff sent somebody down there and got our paperwork. And then he brought it back to us and said, you need to get this to the clerk of the court. And I said, well, you know, you have fiduciary duties. Why don't you give that to them? Notice, you know, notice agents, notice principal. I had no way of getting it to the clerk. So uh, they wouldn't give it to the clerk. So we were forced to um, contract with a triple R bonds company to get out because I was expressing milk for two weeks and I had to manually express it in the shower. I had a DHS worker come and try to get my baby's information, like his birth date and all this stuff. And I was like, I don't have birth dates, you know, and it's none of your business. Um, but they were, they were horrible. Um, so anyways, we were released about February 1st of 2021. And like I said, I had to do that contract to get out. He had to spend like 8,000 Federal Reserve notes. And then he gave them our $48,000 tractor that he had just literally received um, to get released from jail. So immediately after that, I did rescissions. I did rescissions on everything. Um, we 
were afforded a, they sent us a message and said, do you want to see your babies? Of course we did. And three of them were with blood relatives and two of them were in this foster care home, right? And they put us on a screen, on a Zoom screen and my babies have never been to school. They, we don't have any contracts with public school system. I homeschooled them. Um, my youngest daughter, my middle daughter would not look at me. She had her hands folded and crying. I was like, baby, you know, are you okay? Do you like school? And she was like, no, I don't like school. And put her hands in her face and was like crying. And my son was like, mom, they're trafficking us. And they're making fun of our lifestyle of, that we get eggs from chickens and that we, um, we get, we milk cows and they're making fun of the way we live. And immediately I was like, I promise baby, I will see you soon. And I, you know, we're crying and the DHS the lady that was conducting this meeting said, um, I told you not to make any false promises and cut off the video. And so that is the very last day that I've ever seen their faces. They never off offered like any, they wanted us to contract and make like do services and stuff. But we said, we don't have a contract to begin with. You know, we sent, they gave us one presentment and it was by way of email. And I sent it back to them, endorsed, and I said, this is not a valid contract. It said that my husband and I were going to go to prison. It said that um, we would give them authorization to perform all medical procedures, including amputation of a body part, um, that they would That's travel. Right. Yes, I have the document. I cannot make this shit up. <laughs> um, yeah, I know it's when it's too real, you just, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, man. I'm just... No. Yeah, I mean, this is how we felt. We were like in shock. You know, we were just like, what yeah. the hell is and, going and, on? And it only gets worse. Yes. And Kayla, okay. and just Please. to recap, this all started because of a neighbor wanting to hunt on your private property and you saying no. Yes. And then they said that there were warrants. They said there was a traffic ticket warrant from the next county over, right? But they never produced a lawful warrant. And if you're like me, we know that all crimes are commercial. It's all just give me the presentment. I'll accept all charges. I accept it all. You can take what you want. But my body is my God's. This is my temple to my God. Absolutely. This is your paperwork. Give to Caesar what is Caesar. That is what we want to do. That was our intention this whole time. So we got this case thing and it said that they were going to be traveling in and out of the state of Arkansas for up to two weeks at a time with the heartbreak. So I was like, I know what a contract is. I'm not signing this. I'm not accepting it. We went to court um, on May 8th, but we didn't go to the court building. I had sent them conditional acceptances. I said, I will accept your offer to contract upon proof that you are who you say you are. You know, bring me forth your W-9, your 1099s, your foreign agent registration, you know, um, your oath of office, your bond, give me proof of all this, and then I'll We'll talk, you know, I sent them a default notice when they were in it. I filed though they were certified mail. I put them on the land records. I sent them a default judge, you know, a default notice because I did the judge, the prosecutor, the ad litem, all of them. And I had a power of attorney over my baby's estate. I said, do you have a power of attorney? Do you have any of this information? They would not provide it to me. So they offered us a Zoom court, right? Um, which we said we don't consent to, but we had the judge calling us living man and woman. They, we never said Kayla or Colby. Um, we never said any of those things. And I asked them on the record, you know, do you realize that you're violating the Holy Covenant with God? The whole, everyone was like, oh, and like it shut down, like the, shut down the whole thing. Cause I've asked them, where's your delegation of authority to take what I create and give to another for pecuniary gain without consent, without a contract, without you don't have, you don't have delegation of authority. What law says that you can do this? Nobody has brought me forth anything. Uh, yeah. they, they started a page, like a sovereign citizen page. They started calling me a paper terrorist because I was filing my documents on the record on May or April 31st. I was at the record with a witness. Um, and she put the documents on there for me. Um, an acting officer came out there, opened her car door, pulled me out and said there was a warrant, took me to the jail. They beat me and forced my fingerprints and my photograph and everything for 13 hours. And they released me. There was no charge, no, no warrant, no, no, nothing. They just did it for their entertainment. Right. Because I kept asking, you know, I want to speak to the magistrate. I never admitted to being that name. When they released me on the website, it said refused and read. I didn't, this, is I, in, this is in Arkansas? Yes. 
it was at the Washington County Detention Center and the sheriff there is Tim Helder and he got several notices. So when they released me, I had noticed the, the governor, the acting governor, Asa Hutchison, uh, Leslie Rutledge. I had uh, John Thurston. I did all my revocation, all my paperwork sent to them, registered. Please, now, right? please as, you, as you tell this story, I want you to put out every name that you know, every title that you know, and associate okay. those individuals that are wrongdoers okay. who have evil in their heart, because what you're describing is 100% pure satanic evil, right. you know. Yeah, I mean, there's just, you know, it's not illegal. It's it's evil what yes. they're doing. Malum and say, evil in itself. And when a contract is malum and say, it's voidable. Like it's void. It's no, there's no, there's no contract. That's what this is. And, you know, I've been asking questions this whole time. The Madison County Court official, um, her name is Judy Foster. And uh, I asked her. Ma I Madison her. County, Arkansas or Oklahoma? Yes, Madison Arkansas? County, Arkansas Court. Okay. Uh, she's a clerk, the head teller, Judy Foster. I asked her for all my documents. She laughed on me on the phone and say, how do I know who you are? Um, and she's like, and I had been threatened by the acting sheriff of Madison County, Rick. Evans. Um, let me, let me pause you right there. Okay. okay. As a duly commissioned officer of the state of Texas, do you solemnly swear, tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but truth. So mm. help you under your creator. Yeah. Right. So stated. You are officially sworn in. Oh man, that's a good one. <laughs> that's good. Absolutely. You know, I asked for their oath and bonds, and uh, the acting sheriff for Madison County said, "If you ever come to my county again, I'm going to uh, arrest you." And I was like, "On what grounds?" Because he still held the warrant on his website, and I called him to ask him to take it down. I had these recordings, everything that I. I called these men and women because they were not acknowledging my mail. I called them and I recorded everything. I had over like 70 or 80 calls from like all the acting departments of states, all these officials, the judges, uh, clerk, the judge's clerk. I don't know her name, maybe Stacy, uh, the judge, the acting judge for the baby's case is Diane Warren. She's actually lost her oh, heart. Oh, oh, her, which, which court? Which county? Madison County. Madison okay. County Court for the case. What? We had two separate cases going in Madison County. Okay. Um, actually, which three, courts? Because, Do they have court numbers? Uh, man, I don't. I do not. That's know fine. That yeah, I'm just trying to get you as specific as possible. So, okay. if people hear your story, you know, they uh, somebody in your that jurisdiction because I know you're not there now. That they automatically know who you're talking about, what court you're talking about. They may not know the specific person, but they've been there. They know that. So what I'm trying to do is, and I had to teach myself to listen like this, to take generalities out of the conversation, especially when you're talking about things like this and under oath on the record, because this is on the record. This is worldwide. Um, you know, I'm accredited under IMDB, which is the International Movie Database. So this is, you know, this is the real deal. You're on a real, a real, a real television program. Absolutely. Um, so. Um, and you're under oath because you know I have my commission. So we're out here on the ground. Uh, my notary commission. So my have, my God tells me to say, let my yes be yes and my no to be no, and yeah, my work, my um, bond. And, and, and I, yeah, absolutely. And I, and I and before we go on, and and I know this is a you ha you have as much time as you want. So we're not demarcated at five o'clock. So don't even think that. So if this goes till 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, midnight, February 15th, so be it. Um, and I didn't anticipate all this coming on this early. So oh. <laughs> for one, um, I want to applaud you on your knowledge, your research, your diligence as a spiritual human being on this planet, raising your offspring the way that you've done that i mean when you described everything that y'all are living through i was like man i so want to do that i want ducks and geese and pigs and goats yeah. and yeah all that i want to eat fresh eggs i want to go every morning and get my own fresh eggs from the chickens that ate the bugs and the and the seeds and the grains and all of that yes absolutely beautiful so, it's heaven yeah, on yeah. earth that's how um, we are to be living that's how yeah, God intended us to live.
Yeah, absolutely. And it just, it breaks my heart to see, you know, some greedy bastard who, you know, wanted his own gratification, didn't respect your, because this is a culture and mm-hmm. we're actually getting back to our roots. And that's what this is. And that's what it's all about. Getting away from, you know, what I call the big, I live in Houston, Texas, and I hate it now. I know where Houston is. <laughs> and the house, and, and y'all are going to find this crazy. The house I live in now, I used to hunt right here where this house is. Absolutely. Because there's a bayou that runs right by my house. And I used to walk this bayou and hunt squirrels and rabbits and birds, all that. So your knowledge and your research, uh, stellar. I, I just, I, I, everything that you did and said, how you guys conducted yourself from what I've seen in the videos, you acted in honor, good faith, with clean hands, respectable. Um, I just, I can't comprehend why all this has happened to you, this chain of events, how it's dragged from one, from one state to another. Yeah. And this is astonishing. So uh, from there, I'm going to pause everybody, go to the YouTube, subscribe to Kayla's YouTube, please. Um, we need to support people like this. We've set up a Telegram group. Um, I'll, I don't know if it's open to the public. I don't have time to deal with that right now, but I'll go back over to the public. If it's not, uh, one of my, somebody who else is in there, please open it up um, behind the scenes. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank uh, you for having welcome me. To, yes, you're more than welcome to come back at any time uh, to discuss this. I will even give you your own hour once a week until we can remedy this and hold the people accountable. Uh, that's how near and dear all this is to my heart. I mean, you can hear it in my voice. Uh, this is, you know, um, you know, yesterday I walked outside and now I see all these damn chemtrails in the air and I keep posting on Facebook, you know, and all my, all the people I grew up with, they think I'm just lost my right. goddamn. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they just don't get it. I do my own research just like you did because the ability to um, elicit the vocabulary that you have and you're talking above and beyond and past all the people that you're encountered because they follow policy and that's all they know is policy. And that's a problem that we're going to have to have. Now I've talked to you behind the scenes. I've talked to Felicia and Rebecca behind the scenes. So you guys know what's coming. <laughs> and I see that smile. <laughs> Look how big it is. Cause it's coming folks. Uh, people will be held accountable. It, it, it may not be through their system, but it's coming. Just take my word for it. Be patient. Please be patient. It's coming. So uh, until then, we have to get in their sandbox and throw sand at each other, uh, unfortunately. And she came in and wanted to settle the claim honorably. And they, and they, they acted dishonorable, and that's what they're doing. So. I'm going to allow her to continue. Um, Also give your contact information, your email, um, telegram, whatever. Uh, Go ahead and do that now. And then you continue into your story. If Felicia or Rebecca doesn't have anything to add while I've uh, made this little pause for everybody. Um, I just, are you going to put this on your tele? Are you putting this on YouTube or is it live right now? We are live girl. (laughs) Oh, okay, sweet. I um, invited Deloy on here too, so hopefully he'll show up. Oh, awesome. Okay, great. Thank uh, you, Rebecca. <laughs> oh, Alicia, yeah, I, lo- I love you. I love I'm you so too. So <laughs> happy that this is that we got you on here now, and Floyd's awesome, and Felicia's awesome, and yeah, yeah thank you, Felicia. It's so awesome to be working together. Yeah, absolutely, girl power. This is this is what it's <laughs> all about, right here. Yeah, because you know, and. And, and I'm, I'm look. I'm always the first one to stand up and admit my mistakes, my errors, my wrongs. And you know, I've wronged a bunch of women, and I have taken advantage <laughs> of the situation by being the dominant male. Uh, so I am guilty of that. I do have a daughter. She is a remarkable woman, even though she, you know, if she wasn't my daughter. And I, when I see young women like yourself, I see my daughter, and you look almost like my daughter. Dark brown hair. <laughs> you know, she looks like me. You got the square head. You know, the Indian head. <laughs> Are you uh, saying I have a square head? I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can see the the <laughs> the indigenous in you that we talked about earlier. Uh, so uh, my whole attitude towards women changed, and I understand that you know you you're the underdog, and you do need support, and you need 
dominant males who will act yes. with, with integrity and honor and good faith, clean hands at all time to be at your assistance. Yes, because you men, you, I mean, I, a man is, he created first. We are your help me. You know, you are to guide us and you're supposed to be the, you know, the spiritual leader. So I mean, that's, that's what I believe because that's what the word says. You know, so I, I appreciate you for saying that because there definitely needs to be more men that are out there. And I've been duped by many men that have been like, Hey, if you pay me this and this, I'll help you. And I, I give them money and then they just don't. So I was like, you know, I'm not taking anybody's if you want to help me for free, that would be wonderful, but I cannot give you any funds because I'm doing my due diligence on this. And a lot of things that you're telling me, the people that I would pay would be wrong when I would go back and look. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I put that in there just because someone told me to. So learning along the way, I've learned those things. I made my mistakes and I've, I've learned from those things. Um, awesome. Um, I'm going to digress and let you dive back into the story because you know, we're still in Arkansas. We, we're going to end up in Oklahoma kids. So yes, and we go through like three other states. So, (laughs) okay. So everybody got to stop at Bucky's and get you some coffee, some soft drinks, pop you some popcorn. Now we're back in the car. So buckle up, (laughs) let's go for a ride. (laughs) Okay. So I had contacted, Uh, um, the acting secretary of state. I revoked all benefits, privileges, the driver's license, all that stuff. I had received no response. I got, I sent them three notices, you know, and I have, I keep a really, really good, my, like my firm accountability log. I don't know if you know what that is, but I learned from this from the beginning. And I said, all my mail tax per queue, you know, the, you got your federal witness of everything you're sending. You don't have to have a notary there. The clerk, the postal clerk is your notary. She's witnessing what you're putting in, what you're going at out. Um, that trumps a lot of things. You keep your green mail receipts, everything goes in this book. So I had very, very good records of who I was contacting. I contacted the auditor for the, the acting auditor for the state of Arkansas, Andrea Leah. I contacted the acting commissioner for lands, Tommy Lee or Tommy lands, Tommy lands, and he's a land commissioner. Kind of weird, huh? But then I, I also contacted, of course, you know, like I said, the secretary of state, the governor, the attorney general, um, the, uh, treasurer, Dennis Milligan, Dennis Milligan. I contacted all these people to try to get these accounts closed. You know, I just want to know what do I need to do? Can you please get me these presentments? Can you please provide me with any information regarding this matter? Um, I never got a response. And so when I had the, I had the acting bondsman, Jeremy Rollins and Sabrina Creighton and, uh, the prosecuting attorney, the acting pros- the acting debt collector for these accounts, um, Kelly K. Brown over the baby's case. And she's a virtual attorney. I hired a service processor to serve her. I could never get her. So I sent it to the United States uh, courts administrator in Little Rock, Arkansas uh, with no response. Um, Cause that's where you could, I could contact Melinda K. Melinda McElroy was the ad litem over the case. Um, and then uh, Britton Bryant was for the criminal charges. Um, or the civil charges, uh, was an acting debt collector. He was noticed acting judge, Mark Lindsay, over the, um, the criminal charge. And Dale Ramsey was the misdemeanor charge. So we had the misdemeanor charge running for one event and the felony charge running for one event, which is double jeopardy. They cannot do that. You got to pick one, you know. But anyways, so I had them all in default. I had sent so many notices, registered and certified mail, and I had them all in default, default judgment. So uh, then I did an injunction for relief. Um, And I sent that to the um, acting marshal at the time, uh, Gregory Tabor in Fort Smith, Arkansas. I sent it to the Western District Chief Judge, Susan um, something. I sent it to the John Dan Camp, which is the Arkansas Supreme Court judge. And then my husband and I, we were homeless because they took everything from us. So we we were staying in an area known as Branson, Missouri. Um, and we stayed there and we were just hotel to hotel because we literally had nowhere to go. And when we were staying there, we got another, when we were arrested on August 27th of 2020, they ruined, we had a Cadillac Escalade. It was beautiful. So our, each of our babies could have a seat, you know, and we, we knew we had to travel an hour to get to any town. So we wanted them to be comfortable. 
Well, when the police searched the vehicle unlawfully, they ruined it. They smashed the orange watermelon that a farmer had say, we were so excited because we never tried an orange watermelon, right? They smashed it in the carpet. They took out the wood grain, they broke it, threw it on the, they trashed the whole vehicle. And so we sold it because they knew about it. And then we got a new one and it was just a small crown, a little crown big. So it couldn't fit all of our babies. And our whole goal this whole time is to get them back, right? So we have to have two vehicles to get them back. So he per made another purchase of a private vehicle in Missouri. The woman's name is Vic Vicki Beechler. And we did a bill of sale and I took that title and immediately deposited it into the trust. And um, a state trooper, an acting state trooper pulled behind my husband. We were on our way to take it to a storage unit so he could make repairs to this vehicle because it was an old Buick. He just needed to make a few, you know, changes, to make it better, you know? And so he was pulled over by a state trooper. His name is Zachary Costley. And uh, my husband did not want to contract, did not want to give him his name. They um, pulled him over because there was no tags or the registration was wrong or something on the car. And he literally just purchased it. And I had no interaction with the officers at this time. I had no, no involvement. So they pulled him over. They put you, him in Kayla, cuffs. You were, they, wait, Kayla, you were driving behind him, but you didn't even pull over when they pulled him over. You just no. went on. No, yes. And, yes, this, I, and I you on. just picked up the vehicle. So it wasn't there. You didn't have time to register it anyway. No, so literally just picked it up. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. So they put him in handcuffs immediately and they threw him on the cement, the asphalt. They stood on him while he was handcuffed. They tased him four times without notice. We have like the audio. They didn't have their body cam footage on, or if they did, they wouldn't give us body cam footage, but we have the audio of it. And you could hear my husband like crying out, you know, I mean, in pain, it was awful. And, you know, they're, they beat him up so bad. They took him to the hospital. He was in the hospital for three days. His kidneys shut down and they gave him a heart attack. He was released without any charges to the estate on that day, right? It was about, I think it was like August 8th of 2022. Um, oh, I think, yeah, I'm skipping a lot. <laughs> that was the incident in Missouri. Okay. <laughs> how, old, how old is your husband? My husband is 38. 38 and he had what did they do to him they threw him on the asphalt and they stood on him they beat him because he didn't want to contract he didn't want to give him his name they said that there was a warrant for the name um well he didn't give the name yet they i think i don't know it's like weird because it was a setup or something i don't know how this all happened i don't i don't know because i was not there okay right. so i can't give you the exact story but except that he was beat up and tased four times on the side of the highway by three state troopers and he was ended up in the hospital and they had to release him with no charges right and so then after that he was like babe like let's just get out of here he wanted to leave my family like I said before is from Santa Bernardino California and I wanted to go get records like all the records from there and we wanted to get away from Arkansas Missouri and I had like a traveling office in our car, the a printer, my scanner, my uh, laptop, everything. So I was doing all my documents on the go, like, and I would go to each post office and they would honor my tax per queue and things like that. Um, and at this point, all the acting heads of the state of Arkansas had received our executor notice, knowing, knowing in our POAs, like all of our private documents about the estate and what was going on. So, um, we went and we were stopped in Arizona at Page, Arizona. And I got an email from the, um, I got an email from the prosecuting attorney, Kelly K. Brown, who I couldn't find to service a process, anything for her, right? She's supposedly a virtual attorney. Well, she was sending me, she wasn't sending me any court documents. She was sending me uh, doctor's visits, like where they were vaccinating them, where they were giving them psychotropic drugs of them. Uh, who's them? Who's them? Uh, the the employees for the Department of Human Services uh, Children's Division. I guess it was their orders. The judge. I don't know. I don't know where they got their legal determin to determination to make these uh, medical determinations without my consent and a contract. I don't. I don't Do you, know. Your so, children? Is that what you're yeah. talking about? 
Yes. My biologic property, they started vaccinating them. I had sent them a notice not to vaccinate them too. And I was trying to get them back. Like everything that I was doing, I was fighting this civil, this civil case and this case for my babies. Right. And I wasn't trying to fight. I wasn't trying to be in controversy. I tried to settle it so many different ways. And when I got stumped at that, I just, you know, I didn't know what to do anymore. I was like at a point where I was like, oh my gosh, what can I do? Because I feel like I've done everything you know, to get them back. And they would never give me court dates um, because, and I was holding court by my paperwork, you know, they, but they would never give me like a physical court date. They never served me with papers. The clerk refused to file any of my documents. That's why I had to go file all my documents on the land record um, because she refused to file them into the case. And, and this, um, this is the problem that I encountered as well, you know, through my multiple litigations Mm -hmm. is that they don't follow their own freaking laws. Yeah. They're corrupt. They just refuse to act. Uh, mm -hmm. Or as I showed with an internal email where they held my writ of habeas corpus for over a year in Harris County when they were required by law to forward it to the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals in Austin. Yeah, I have that internal email. And, you know, the fraud, the corruption. And, and you reach a point where you've just, you've, You've exhausted every avenue that you can possibly imagine, think of, heard about, you know, tried, attempted, and you're just, you're just mentally, physically, yeah. spiritually exhausted. And you just, what the hell can I do next? And you're just, and it'll at that point, I was, uh, we've always been very close with our creator. Like everything that we've ever done was for him. But at this point I was asking God, I was crying out, why, why are you doing this to me? Why if we have been separated it, it like set apart from the world and we were not of the world and we had done all these things. Why would you do this to me? And I was kind of angry at God, honestly, you know, that's me being honest. I was upset and that doesn't get you anywhere. That energy that is not good. Um, so we were kind of in a bad place, you know, right. And that attracts those, you know, those demons. They do that on purpose. They, mm -hmm. they want to stress you out. They want you stressed. They want you in fear. They want you yes. anxious. They want your adrenaline just at 110%. Uh, they want you sensory overload. So you cannot, yep. you cannot cognitively and rationally, reasonably have a conversation with them because they're always trying to agitate you and push your buttons. Just like what they did with your husband. They're putting him in the car, uh, you know, how they were twisting fingers all around that one young cop that shouldn't be a cop that guy yeah. yeah yeah I know it broke my heart to watch that because I didn't get to see that like yeah. there and now when I saw that I just cried because I was like man it's really hard to see your loved ones being treated that way and he's been abused and beaten I mean they almost killed him those troopers in Missouri they almost killed him and took him from me for no reason for failure to register a vehicle whenever we don't drive for commercial purposes. We didn't buy, it was a private conveyance. And after that, the office, the troopers, I got a message from the owner, Vicki Beachler, and she said, troopers arrived at my door and they wanted to, wanted me to say that this car was stolen and they were trying to get coerce her into following a narrative. And she was like, no. And then I was trying to get a new bill of sale when it was destroyed and she won't talk to me. So like, I know that she's been threatened. I know that she's, um, yeah, so, and I, they took the car and I never, I've never seen the car again. I, I had called the troop D, um, in Missouri to get with the, um, you know, my, my trust indenture and say, Hey, this is trust property. I want to get it back. And they, they would not talk to me. I had sent the commissioner, um, a registered email and the acting judge for this County. Um, I noticed that we're not persons, we're not commercial commodities, you know, like we're private men and women, we're come in peace, you know, we're foreign nationals to jurists, like I sent them notice. And that I don't, I think that that's why they didn't charge his estate right away for anything. They dropped, they didn't do it. They released him from the hospital. Let me um, stop you um, right there, Kayla. Um, just because as we know, the media is used for all purpose of evil. I, oh, you, I mean, you said that they put a special, allegedly. like, a special announcement for this cop that um, he got your husband and he caught kidnappers and included you in that. Yeah. So tell that, tell that what happened because they can look this up and see what the media did to try to twist to get ahead of the narrative to put this out. 
Um, about December 6th, you can go and look on Missouri. If you look up Zachary Costley, Officer Missouri, uh, they gave him a medal. Say, say that again. Say that again. Real slow. And Zachary, spell it if need be. Okay. Z-A-C-H-A-R-Y Costley. C-O-S-T-L-E-Y. And he is with Troop D. He's an acting trooper for the state of Missouri. Um on December 6th of 2022 or 20, yeah, 20, it's hard for me because I've been locked up for so long and even remember the year, uh, 2021. Yeah. yeah. My two years are running together. You know, I'm going on three years now I'm dealing with this. So, um, so on December 6th, they gave him an award because they said he stopped a potential kidnapping. And when they, when they searched the car, they found duct tape and zip ties. And they said, hey, hold on, hold on. They, they gave him an award for arresting you and your family. For, for arresting my husband and beating him and almost killing him. And and again, Kayla was not even pulled over in the side of the road. She never even pulled over, but they included that in the report that they stopped both of them. I mean, it's all fraud. Everybody has to know how bad the media portrays people just to help themselves. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, and, and, and I'll, I'll give you all an example, you know, because I'm full of them. Uh, my own life experience uh, when I was in prison second time, um, I got involved in a writing program with Wharton County Community College through a PhD prof associate professor to um, her students would send us their essays and we would critique them and grade them and send them back. And it was a program to interact between the community you know it was a good thing it was a real good thing uh because it got uh prisoners who actually wanted to learn or wanted to uh, uh become a better person to interact and get involved with kind of a you know a college educational thing and i was involved in it until it fizzled out and the reason it fizzled out was because of all the students um beliefs that had been programmed into them, what a prisoner, you know, what they thought a prisoner was. So they really didn't, you know, understand that, you know, just because you're in prison, you know, you're, you're not necessarily a bad guy. You may no. be in there because you had some addictions, uh, some behavioral issues, you know, it could be a whole host of different false things. obligations. <laughs> Yeah. And there's a bunch of people in there that are in there for that. You know, I mean, I even saw a guy in there. He, he got convicted. He, he got a misdemeanor DWI in Smith County, Texas, and they sent him to prison for his first DWI. And, and it's a misdemeanor. You know, you're not even supposed to really go to jail for that. But no. uh, yeah, I mean, some of the things I've seen. But anyway, that was my own experience in dealing with that. Um, so I'll digress and let you girls go. So when we left Missouri, we, we traveled to, we stayed at the location known as Page, Arizona. And when I was there, I got a email and it talked about that, you know, they were doing these experimentations on my baby. Can I, can I pause you for one second and ask mm -hmm. a question? Apparently you're doing a lot of traveling across the country, going from area to region, region, really. Um, kind of explain why you guys are traveling so much. Well, we were left without a home and my husband and I, we wanted to get away from like the Arkansas, Missouri, because, well, he looked, he just, um, they almost killed him for nothing. You know, we felt like we just, we needed to get away for, for a second, you know, and I, I had a traveling office, so I'm not, I'm not leaving my, my babies. I'm, I, we were coming back. So we're just going there to San Bernardino, California. I was going to get records and I'm coming back. Right. And we stopped in Page, Arizona. And um, I sent off a fax there from the hotel because when they send you something, you need to immediately get on it, right? I don't consent to you. They were talking about, um, you know, performing surgery on my youngest son's testicles. He was a year old at the time because his testicles hadn't dropped and he wasn't walking. All my babies walk at nine months old. They've never had a problem. They've never had a problem talking. They never had a problem doing with this. So I had sent them every vaccine that they sent me that they were giving to my babies. I went online. I put in every ingredient. I It was like 18 pages. Every ingredient and what the side effects were 
for those harmful chemicals. And I sent it back to them to the, I sent a uh, certified mail and registered mail to like the doctors that were going to do the, that were doing these things to my babies. And I said, look, you have trust property. These are, we, I, do, I don't have a contract. There's no consent. Do not vaccinate my babies. Do not put these harmful chemicals in their body. I sent it to the judge. I sent it to everybody. And, you know, they do not have the delegation of authority to, to vaccinate them or, or make medical determinations without your consent or authority to do so, you know? Um, so I sent them notice. And then 24 hours later, um, at 7 a.m., my husband went out to the car to get his clothes. He was just in his, his shorts, shorts. That's it. And I was in a nightgown. I didn't even have any underwear on, nothing. And four marshals, they had marshal uniforms on and they were in a marshal vehicle. We're like, get on the fucking ground and calling us vulgarity like crazy. They were like, there's warrants for your arrest. And I mean, they, they threw me on my face and uh, my husband was on his face, two of them on him and two of them on me with loaded guns in our face. I said, sir, where's the warrant? Can you please show me the warrants? And he brought out his phone and the bondsman had put out a wanted Bonnie and Clyde $1,000 reward. So they were acting as bounty hunters for the bondsmen's that were already in a default process that had already received revocation that had already received all of these things. And, um, they took us immediately. Uh, they chained us, shackled us. And I, I urinated myself cause I was so scared. I was so scared, so scared for my life. I was just like, Oh my gosh, you know? And I, he was like, if you piss in my seat, then I'm going to charge you extra and like all this stuff. And then they were whispering. Bring up, I kept asking questions. I was like, so where's your lawful warrant? Don't you know, didn't you not take an oath uh, to protect, defend, and serve the constitution from both foreign and domestic, um, you know, terrorism? And then they started whispering and I started asking them questions, you know, and like, so on the way we were traveling to the detention center, one of the guys, I heard him say what, you know, something about their liability. Yeah, you're liable, buddy, because we had uh, endorsed endorsed birth bonds in the hotel room. We had um, my green, my mail receipt book, um, social security cards for all of us uh, that were endorsed and ready to send out. I had a tort claim package and ready to go. I had, oh my gosh, I just had so many things, a terabyte card, my laptop, just so many things in this hotel room. They left. They left everything and they transported us to the detention center. This man and woman um, stripped me naked and forced their clothes upon me. I never signed in. I never gave them my name. I never gave them any consent. They took a couple hours later, they took me before a screen and there was a, an acting judge. So I said, is this a court of record? And he was like, um, he said, yes, it is. And then I was like, okay, well, this is a special appearance. I reserve all my rights. I reserve all presumptions and assumptions. He goes, oh, no, no, this isn't a court of record. You'll get your court of record on Tuesday and literally ran from the podium. We were transported from this Page, Arizona detention center to Coconino County detention center in Flagstaff, Arizona, um, both of us together. And then we were locked in padded rooms with a literal um, square hole in the floor for a toilet for 10 days time. Um, they were trying to get jurisdiction and get us to admit that we were a name. We did not consent. We did not give them any contract. We did not give them fingerprints, photos. We didn't eat for 16 days time. We did not see a, an acting judge until 14 days time. And when we went to see an acting judge, they said we were going to be going together, right? They did not let us go together. We were separate. And this judge says, okay, Kayla Fitz. And I said, excuse me, sir, do you, do you claim to be administering from the Kayla Nicole Fitz estate acting as executor based on tort? And he sat back and he took off his glasses and he rubbed them on his robe and he was like, uh, I don't know what that is. Do you are you talking about a tort claim? And then I asked it again. And he said, ma'am, this is an informal meeting. And I asked it again. I asked it three times. And uh, he just said, well, this is an informal meeting. Um, and he had, it, it wasn't in a courtroom or anything. It was the four uh, guys who arrested us and abducted us by gunpoint were in there. And they were like, there is a warrant. And I said, well, can you please produce the lawful warrant? Because a warrant has to have certain elements to be lawful. And prior to this, I had endorsed the warrant and I sent it back to the judge and the clerk has it on their website. She got a copy of it and she posted it. It was one of the only things that she ever posted was my endorsed because I got, I got it from their online uh, website. Right. So then they pull out and I said, well, isn't that an accusation? Because it was just 
uh, an accusation from the prosecutor and the clerk. They both signed it. There was no judge's signature. There was no verified complaint under the pains and penalties of perjury. There's no affidavit. And I said, isn't that just a, claim, uh, com a complaint? An accusation, or I said an accusation. He was like, uh, uh, well, we just need you to sign these act, uh, extradition papers. I said, well, why would I do that if I'm not that name? And um, he was like, but the meeting was over. And then I was held in solitary confinement at this Coconino County Detention Center for 103 days time while they got a warrant. He said, well, we'll get a warrant. At every court appearance, they muted me out because it was teleconferenced. Um, so they were, they didn't have a warrant, but they were getting one. So they held me without a warrant, without a charge or anything while they got a warrant. They said they got a governor's warrant from Asa Hutchison. I couldn't even believe when they said that because Asa Hutchison knew about my default process. He knew about everything that was going on. Why would he sign off on an extradition warrant when he knows I'm not that name, right? So- um, well, well, what, what do you mean governor, then acting governor Asa Hutchison knew about your status? So- you know factually 100% that he personally knew? I mean, right, uh, you, I sent him five registered mailers. I had accepted his oath of office and bound him to it. Okay, and, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. That, that, all that mail goes through, you know, they have people who vet all that mail before they even get it. Sometimes they, they never even see that stuff. Okay. Well, I sent it registered. E yeah. I sent it registered emails. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I guess, like you said, I wouldn't exactly know for sure if he got it unless I hired a process server and had him serve it on him personally. So I redact that. I don't know for sure if he knew personally because I did not hire a process server for that. I sent registered mailers and I read, I registered emailed him these things. So you're right. right. Thank but you. Under for the mailbox me. rule service, to yes. the program, as long as you did a certificate of service and included yes. it in the record of it. Yep, I did. You, I always do a certificate of service. You are golden. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. I had it. I knew what was on the line. My life was on the line because they were Arkansas was trying to put me in prison for ten to forty to life. Are the if you are found in guilty of this code and statute, then that's what and you consent to be the same. That's what you're going to prison for. So, so, you know, I knew that in my babies, I was just thinking about my babies. So I was trying to do everything exactly right to be able to hold them accountable. So, um, was, so the bondsmen, the four, the four marshals that were off duty, come at you guys in the middle of the night or late at night at, at seven in the morning. Oh, seven in the morning. Yes. What bond were they after the, the Bonnie and Clyde bond that was. But, but where, where's, what is that from? Is exactly, that from? exactly. And get this, I, they had the contract up between me and the bondsman and I never signed the contract. So there was never even any contract between me and the triple R bonds anyway, from the beginning, I didn't even have to rescind that because I didn't sign anything with them, but I did rescind it just in case, you know, and I sent that uh, certified mail to them, my rescission and all that stuff. So, because I was forced under duress to make a contract with them. I, you know, I, I had no other way. I had the remedy in my hand and they wouldn't accept it, you know? So that's why I accepted those services. But when you go and look at the contract, I had pulled it up and I never even signed it. Never. I didn't make any marks on it, nothing. So, um, and that's why I told them, I said, please produce the contract. And they, they didn't do that. So Sabrina Creighton came. Okay. So they had a hearing, DHS did, with the judge on December 6th of 2021 and for a termination of parental rights. I was shackled and handcuffed, and I only had a phone to be in this meeting. Um, you know, I appeared as a living woman, and they said they terminated our rights. So they this terminated was, our rights was when by you way were, of phone call. This was when you were locked up for 103 days. In Arizona. Mm -hmm. In Arizona. And on that and day, just, just hold on. I want you to describe shackled and handcuffed. And then all you have is a cell phone, right? So you're shackled and handcuffed and you can use your cell phone, but you're shackled and handcuffed, right? Oh, they didn't even have a phone. I was on a speaker phone in this little booth that you go like visit an attorney or whatever, your right. family. I was in there and they had the phone on speaker phone. I was handcuffed and shackled at my waist. And my legs were shackled. So I couldn't move. And I'm sitting in this little room by myself while this 
woman acting as a judge as she has any authority to do so terminates my rights. And I said, you know, how can you do this when my rights are given to me by the living God? That's the, my rights are not given to me by you or the state of Arkansas. I'm not of the state of Arkansas. I am of the living God. So um, she terminated the rights, right? And then Sabrina Creighton came there with an appointed, um, an appointed um, official by Asa Hutchison for my safety. They came in an unmarked, like a rental car to get me. They trafficked me from Arizona to Arkansas without contract, without any delegation of authority to. And when I got to Arkansas, uh, Sabrina was horrible. She was crazy. She said, um, this is what she said. She pulled up her phone and told me that she was sleeping with this marshal in Fort Smith, Arkansas, showed me his picture. He's a tan dude. I don't remember his name, but she said she was sleeping with him and he had the connection to hire the marshals in Arizona to come and arrest us. They were off duty. They weren't even on duty. They just used uh, the car, the weapons, their badge and everything while they were off duty to arrest us. Right. Oh, they were wow. paid. Yeah. They were paid as bounty hunters to get us without a lawful contract. Um, and she used her sexual relationship to get that for her. She who admitted is, that. Who is this Sabrina? Late? Who is she? Yeah. Sabrina Creighton, C-R-A-E-T-O-N. She works for Triple R Bonds, a bond company in Arkansas. And uh, she made up a lie. On the way back, she said that I had told her that I was going to go kidnap my children to, to further this, whatever. They had a story that they had planned, right? She made up that I told her. Why would I tell her that? Anyway, why, am I that stupid? Obviously, I'm not stupid, okay? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pause that right there. <laughs> and any name that uh, Kayla mentions in this story, you have an open invitation to come on the Fearless Floyd show with Kayla under oath and rebut any claim she makes. That's for anybody whose name's mentioned on this YouTube. So anybody who watches this YouTube and you know any of these individuals that she mentions, they're more than welcome to come on the show under oath and rebut every single claim that Kayla has, whether it is physical or oral documentary proof. And with that, I'll digress. Thank you. So uh, she said that I told her that. And back up just a second. When I was in Arizona, I hand wrote a habeas corpus. I sent it into the superior court clerk and uh, she never filed it. So I, I bumped it up to the uh, chief, the acting chief judge for the Supreme Court. And he returned it saying that I didn't start out with a proper channel and start out with the circuit court. So I filed it again and they denied it for lack of um, whatever they say. And uh, I had noticed the attorney general that there that I was, I don't know who he, what his name, but the judge that was involved in this case is Ted Reed and Dan Slayton uh, were the judges that were doing this in Arizona. So then they trafficked me to Arkansas. And uh, she said, uh, we had stopped, made a stop in Texas, right? And uh, we had went into a convenience store and she said, if you promise not, you, you can't make, you can't make a scene in here. You can't let them know that we're transporting you or you're going to go to jail in here in Texas. When I got in the car, I, you know, I was like, I, I, before they shackled me and took me, I said, look, I'm not going to fight you. I'm peaceful, but I'm just telling you right now, I don't consent. I don't consent to you trafficking me. I don't consent to any of this. So I made it clear that I didn't consent. So when we were in Texas, they told me that and when I got back in the car, they were both laughing. And they said, well, if really, if, if they would have found out that we're trafficking through Texas, we would have been going to jail because they didn't have any permission to traffic up me through Texas. So we, we get to Arkansas and she was like, uh, we were going, actually, we're going through Oklahoma. Okay. And this is, we're in a rental car and we got stopped by a police officer um, in Oklahoma. And I'm, you know, I got my cuffs on at the front. They let the ankles off, but I had my cuffs, the cuffs on up front. I'm sitting in the front seat and she had pulled out her guns and was from the back seat and was like, I felt threatened. I felt, felt like my life was threatened. And this officer was like, are you okay? And I wanted to say something so bad. And I wish I would have said something to that man. I was trying to hint around that, you know, he was like, what are you transporting this woman for? And they were like, um, 
they said, because she had an ounce of cannabis and guns, he was like, that's all, you know? <laughs> I mean, he just acted like it was appalling, but he, he said, you know, are you okay? And I really should have told him, no, I'm not okay. Cause then I consented right there. Right. I felt like I did, I messed up and I should have told him, no, I'm not okay. Because I had no reason to be trafficked across like that. But don't, but don't, but Kayla, don't those, don't they all have body cams on them? So you, you have that recorded. That's yeah, something you I, can pull is, is that she threatened. I mean, basically she threatened you saying if you said anything. No, she you know? didn't have any body cam footage when she came to get she didn't yeah, have, see, I mean, that's proof right there that they're, that's just so much proof that they're, they're not even following. She, she had to have had that on. No, they have to record all of that. That's another proof that it's all, it's all about the corporation. Mm -hmm. They, and they came and got me in a rental car. They didn't even get me in like a, um, like a nothing. I mean, it was just all fake. They should, yeah, they had no, no, no official, no government. Yeah, so we have to get, vehicle. We, I mean, you have your affidavit against her and she. And I did write an affirmation of facts. Mm -hmm. By the way, while we're talking about that, every person that has ever been pulled over, every person or actually every man and woman that knows no that they can go to a county and request the did. body cam footage? She, you know, there, it wasn't recorded. Oh, sorry, Rebecca. I didn't know you were talking. She's cutting in and out. Yeah, she was cutting out. Your phone is cutting in and out, Rebecca. Um, but every person. Oh, she, yeah. Sorry, yeah. my bars are like up at the top of a mountain. <laughs> but but she's going to have to have a sworn affidavit rebutting that or else she's what, what you say is the truth in your affidavit. I mean, have you written this whole entire thing down and done an affidavit yes. of your entire experience? Yep. And I yeah. sent it to them so, I mean, these certified guys, mail. This seems and they to be a federal it. case. This seems to be part of a federal case, the entire experience. You take it to federal court. It and is. The, all of these names are going to have, all of these names are going to have to come and they're. This they're, is the record. The, the, this is the record. This is under oath. This is a record. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. On, you know, have you done some? Yeah. So. Rebecca's buffering. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, she, maybe, she's I'm too not, fire. Uh, Her phone isn't working. Too fire. <laughs> I have like one bar right now, but yeah, I mean, a class action, like with all of our stories and take it to federal court and combine all uh, of them. Uh, I don't, you don't want to really do a class action. That's when the, oh, really? the waters get muddied and the, that's when the attorneys come in and it's a, uh -huh. it's like throwing blood and body parts into the water and here come the sharks and the, the sharks okay. are just, you know, up to feed themselves and not looking out for us. Um, so, so yeah, um, but how do we do it in federal court? Like um, Kayla was saying, it has to be this a court is, claim. This is this is a civil RICO, hands down, uh, and right. that's under the title okay. 18, 18. 1961 through sixty eight. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I filed filed probably a dozen of them in my lifetime. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm an expert. Really? When it comes to Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Just go to go to then Travis to teach, County there's District Court of, Office. There's lots. Of yeah, go to the Travis uh -huh. County District Clerk's Office in Travis County, Texas, and mm -hmm. Floyd Pleasant Tarvin the Fourth, and you're going to see them. Okay. And I filed them against the entire parole board, um, mm -hmm. the executive director, TDC, the director, the governor, by judge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've seen mm -hmm. freaking buddy. And uh, you know, when it comes to the point where you know, just like Kayla has experienced. You just, mm -hmm. you know, they're not going to let you win. It doesn't matter how right you are, how much the law is 100% on your side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. But I mean, what about this Brunson case? You know, the Brunson case holding these guys, because who holds these guys accountable when they violate their oaths? They're all violating their oaths. So if this Brunson case goes through, I think that's going to help a lot of us because that's their whole case basically is that these guys are, aren't being held accountable for their oath of office. I, I agree. And my, in my own experience, having, you know, I'm published in the Supreme Court Reporter, y'all can go look it up. Okay. Uh, I mean, they're twice, I think. Um, 
they are all bar members. They're still part of the same club. And I just don't see them throwing their brethren under the bus. Like but the Brenson brothers are getting so much coverage, even if it doesn't go through in the Supreme Court. This I, I get, is being, yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. And yeah. it's, you know, it's kind of an awakening for a small group of people. Um, mm -hmm. I'm surprised the Supreme Court even took the motion for rehearing and put it back on the docket. Because they I just do think it's I think it's it. part of this story. I think it's part of this movie that's going on. They the have to do yeah. it slowly, you know. And so, like, because if they just like do it all, all the if they just allow it, like, it's just too many people are gonna like they'll realize everything they've ever learned is a lie. So right. I feel like purposely it's being done. They're slowly leaking it, and it's for a reason that it hasn't gone through yet. Right. Well, I don't know if y'all watched my. Um, you know, I don't mean to get off topic. The video I did a couple of days ago on the DoD. Directive Department of Defense for the transition. No, uh, oh, yeah. Hang on. Let me uh, let me pop that up for you guys real quick, just so you can take a quick peek at it. Uh, and while you're doing that, Floyd, I just wanted to mention if if I didn't know, I did not know you can just go and anytime you've been pulled over, you can just go into the county website and request a police report and the body cam footage. We should all be doing that and posting these live and and showing this corruption that's happening, these officers that, that are acting outside of their duties but, and outside. Yeah, if you can get the body cam footage, that's the most powerful because in mine, they lied in the supplemental police report saying I punched the police officer. I never punched the police officer. They're charging me for assault on the police officer, which the body cam footage clearly shows them assaulting me. Mm -hmm. So they're, they love that's another that. thing. It's just so crazy. I just, yeah. This is what um, it's based on right here. I don't mean to interrupt, but uh, this is the President Tra Presidential Transition Act of 1963. Okay. And the DOD put out their directive. And let me see if I can go to it. Beautiful um, call. Uh, February 3rd. Uh, and that is uh, DOD. There it is right there. Oh, no, that's actually it. Oh, no, that's wrong. I'm sorry. That's the video. Maybe you can drop that link in the comments or something of that, you know, so we can, Here it is. Um, pull, so right we here. can pull that up and watch it. Yeah. Planning for presidential transitions and, and the transition of political appointees and other officials. And you can see right there, it's dated February 3rd. Wow. Yeah. February 3rd of 2022? 2023. I mean, sorry, 2023. Oh, cool. Yeah. 11 so days what, ago. What, sorry, what exactly does that mean? Um, it means that they have the planning mm -hmm. protocol in place for presidential transitions and the transition of political appointees and other officials and other officials, uh, they give you a description in here are pretty much your career administrative employees uh, mm -hmm. and others who uh, are assimilated in as contractees through like Defense Department and stuff like that, um, mil uh, military contractors. But yeah, it breaks it all down who all these different mm -hmm. entities are. But I found it interesting. Oh. Uh, I've, you know, because it's all based on that, uh, um, the uh, the Act of 1963, that Presidential Transitions Act, where's it at? Uh, and this uh, executive order, let's see, the Presidential Transitions Act, which I found odd because this is obviously when Kennedy was assassinated. And they created wow. this LBJ. Yeah, yeah. So when you see those dates, man, you got to like put two and two together, figure out what that's all about. For sure. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't want to get off topic with that, but uh, Kayla, please continue. So <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'll put that in the link too. Okay. So I guess we're, when we got to uh, Arkansas, the Washington County uh, Detention Center, um, Sabrina, I'd already spent 130 days in jail and it was super hard in solitary confinement. And I wanted to get out to get my baby. So it was my motivation. They just terminated the rights. You know, I was anyways. So she said, like, if you 
you know, if you comply with me, I will give them a good report for you. Right. And so she lied to me because I, I went in there and um, I was held for like two days uh, to be booked in. And she gave them a bad report because she told the judge that I told her that we were going to go kidnap our babies <laughs> and put that in an affidavit. I'm thinking, I don't know. I have, I forget if it's an affidavit or if it's not really, if it's a fake, but she put it in a statement and sent it to the judge. Did she, did she use the word kidnap? Yes. Why would she, why would a mother but, say, I'm going to go kidnap my own babies? Right. Yes, exactly. I mean, why would I say that? Why would I say that to anybody? If, like if I had a plan to go get my babies, I'm certainly not going to kidnap them. I'm going to go get them by right. They are my but, right. I'm the rightful owner. When they, when they do the termination of parental rights, the thing is, is everything they're doing is contract. So you yeah. contract law requires two signatures. Okay. And it, and both yeah. parties have to sign. And if you didn't sign anything and the thing, and you Never. also have the right to counter offer, that's what contract law is. And that's all they're doing in these courts. It's, it's trust yeah. law and contract law. So you, so it's all, it's all fraud. I know because you never signed, you never agreed to it. And then when they do their affidavits, they never have them notarized. Right. And you know? yeah, I mean, none of it is real. I know it's not real, but when you have, when you go through that experience and they're telling you, you know, your terminated rights and I was calm about it. I didn't even let myself cry in front of this woman, which is what she wanted. She literally danced at the, in the jail in front of all these people on camera that my rights were terminated, which I told her like, my rights cannot be terminated. My rights are from God. Yeah. So anyways, we get to the Washington County Detention Center and which Tim Helder is the acting sheriff and he had received plenty of notice that, hey, you know, I don't, we don't consent to the, ever being held in your jail. Uh, so the bond was 150,000 cash surety, right? They changed it based on her statement uh, to 250,000 cash only. My husband had the bond, he was bonding out and when he was bond, when they found out he had the, the money to fund the Federal Reserve notes, the debt notes to get out of there, they changed it immediately. And her statement went on there and the judge changed the bond. He was almost out the door. They locked him back up. He had the paperwork done and everything. The bondsman was like, I didn't think they could do that. I didn't think that they could do that. I've never seen that before. So, um, yeah, so we were put into Washington County, or yeah, Washington County Detention Center. I was held there for three months. They did all their video court. It was all video court. They were muting me out at five months in, in jail total, like two months in Washington County. I had these people on the outside. They were saying my friends, they were my friends. Right. And they knew I did not, I'd already done my UCCs. I've done all my paperwork, everything I'm supposed to do. I'd done it. And I, I didn't want to contract with an attorney. Well, they were like, the only way you're going to get out of here is if you have an attorney, you, they said, if you don't contract with an attorney, you may never see your children again. When they do that to you, I know, I felt like I was about to win. I kept thinking like, they're going to let me out. Or, you know, I'm, they just have no reason to hold me here. Um, you know, and my husband was just so broken. He was so broken. Like, I've never even really seen my husband cry. We've been married together for 10 years. I've never, he was just broken. He was begging me, let's just take this deal and get out. They wanted us to take a, a deal for a probation, 15 months probation, a $1,500 or 18 months probation. $1,500 fine. And I was thinking, okay, I just need to get out of jail and I'll rescission this contract, you know, because obviously you just told me that if I don't contract with you, I'll never see my babies again. That, you know, I didn't believe that, but my husband did. He was like, hold up. Hey, I'm your leader. God says you're supposed to follow me. You need to follow me. So I contracted to get out of jail, but I hadn't even contracted to be in the jail to begin with or contracted to be taken across the States or nothing. And at that point I knew that there was so much pressure corruption. I didn't know what to do. You know, I had nobody in this area that was awake that knew any better. I, there was already a sovereign citizen page set up. My family had deserted us, our friends, everybody, they were all done because they were like scared. My, uh, his cousin has said, you're dealing with a mafia. Uh, they were scared and they were, they didn't know what they could do to help us. So we contracted to get out. And, um, so it was probation we transferred it to Missouri. So immediately my husband, they didn't let him out. They brought up the, the incident from Missouri. They charged him with assault and battery on a peace officer and attempted kidnapping charge with failure to register all these traffic violations. They charged his estate with that and transported him from Washington County to Forsyth 
uh, Missouri to Taney County, Missouri jail. The sheriff there is Brad, Brad Daniels. The prosecutor is Bradley Hughes. The clerk is Amy Strahan and the judge is Tiffany Merrill. They had no contract. They had no reason to take him to Missouri. So they keep him there for three months and uh, release him on an ankle monitor after that, right? Well, they charged my estate too. They charged my estate with attempted kidnapping. They said when they took his phone illegally and unlawfully, they searched it. And there was a text message from me to him saying that I wanted to go get my babies by this date. It doesn't say I'm going to go and hurt people and, you know, like go kidnap. And the Supreme Court has made a ruling. You cannot kidnap your own children. You, you can't, you know, I, I cannot do that. So anyways, they charged the estate with attempted kidnapping as a misdemeanor for my estate. And they issued a warrant, a warrant. Well, we had a report to probation officers. And at that point, all my documents, everything I'd worked so hard for, all that evidence was gone. I didn't have, I got out with a nightgown and my wedding ring. That's all I had. And I had my brain. And so at this time, I was like, okay, look, I'm just going to have to play along until I get my lap, a laptop, my office set up again. You know what I mean? And then I'll do my papers. And so I, I, the, when I was talking to the probation officer, I told her the whole story. And she's like, are you a sovereign citizen? I was like, I, I believe in the law. I believe in the written law and I believe in God's law. And I, God's law is written on my heart by the living God. And there are certain laws that you as oath takers are supposed to uphold. And I don't have a contract with you. I don't think that I'm a sovereign citizen. It's an oxymoron, unless you can definitely give me a definition of that word. And it pertains to me in any way. Um, but anyway, so I had to like report and do these things, even though I, I laid it out on the table to um, the probation officer that, you know, I, what had happened to me and I only did this to get out. I'm not that name. Um, so, you know, this is all under duress. I said, this is all under duress because I feel like my life is threatened. If I, I'm kept in a box or be let free and I'm trying, my goal is to reunite my family. I made it very clear that is to discharge these accounts and reunite my family. That was it. So she was like, well, they're showing a warrant on their website for you. And if you go to those websites, there's an active disclaimer that says that these things could be false. Like you need to check with the clerk get, to get the records, right? So anyway, she was like, if you don't want to be transported, I suggest you just go to court. So I went to the courthouse and I had a special appearance uh, and I had the request for the charging instruments. I wanted the bill of particulars, right? So I, I stood up and I went to the gate when she called the name and I said, I'm here on behalf, especially on behalf of that matter. I reserve all my rights without prejudice. I rebut all presumptions and assumptions. And um, could you please provide me with the bill of particulars? And she said, no, on the record. And uh, I, could you please provide me with any documents? No, I was denied that right. She was like, you're a warrant, you are a fugitive from Arkansas and uh, ordered the bailiff to take me and do a drug test. And so I said, I reserve all my rights uh, under duress. And so I did a drug test. I don't have anything to hide, I don't do drugs, you know, whatever. I mean, I didn't wanna do that, but under duress, you're threatening me. You obviously are working with Arkansas, these Arkansas employees to do what you're doing. So um, anyways, that happened and I, she was like, you know, set a new date and obviously she got jurisdiction that day, but I, I was not wanted. I did not want that at all. And I had these paperwork and she just didn't honor it. So uh, I kept having to uh, appear in court and we had, my husband was in there for three months and in order to be released, we had to contract with a Wampler and Associates attorneys at law. They knew we had UCC1s, all this stuff in place. I told them everything about our situation, everything about our situation. They were like, don't worry, we're going to get the charges for your estate dropped and Colby's charges dropped, everything. They didn't do that. Uh, she, there was an order in place that me and him were to have no contact with each other, although that's like a violation. We're married, you know, they can't do that. They wrote it in on the bond. So, uh, okay. So anyways, we did that and uh, I got my husband out on the condition of him being on a ankle monitor, right? So on the day of, I had fired Wampler and Associates because 
I got a presentment, that, I endorsed it and sent it back to the court. I that, finally got my. That's first another presentment. contract with the uh, yes. whole ankle, ankle monitor. Yes. Yep. Missouri bench for bracing. But get this. We find out later while I'm in jail in Tulsa, I hired a seven series broker to get the QCIPs on these accounts. The accounts that are supposedly in my husband's estate name are in my estate name. He has no charges in Taney County whatsoever. So he was wow. in jail for three months on an ankle monitor without any charges at all. None. And he's holding, they're holding him in the David L. Moss Detention Center right now for nothing. They dismiss the charges in Tulsa. They, um, uh, there's no charges in Missouri and they're just, he's on a hold. They're just holding him there. So yeah, I mean, I just. Holding him uh, hostage. Hold, yeah. Holding me a hostage for no slavery. reason. Slavery. No. Yeah, slavery. Yeah, we, in all my documents, it says slavery. And okay, so um, back in Missouri, I had done all my documents again. I s submitted them on the record record I went to the clerk when they said there was a court date because I had them in a default process right I hired a notary um I sent them a certificate of non-response this notary her name is Julia Bobby Miller she works for the business state of Arkansas and uh she has a cop I gave her a receipt book I bought her a receipt book and a uh, an entries book so she was supposed to record everything that she's done for me and everything I paid her give me the receipts and she kept my documents right she, like, I promise you, they'll be safe. She went to the courthouse with me on the court date. They said I did not appear. I was late. I was like three hours late to the court, you know, whatever. And so I went to the clerk. I deposited all my documents, my security agreement, the copyright. I mean, I did everything all over again. All of my documents I had all over again. I deposited them for the record. And um, I asked her for her 98, or I mean, her, e, her EIN. She refused. Uh, she pulled up on her screen. She was like, what's your husband's name? Because I said I wanted the document. She pulled up in front of Julia, the screen, and searched my, my husband's estate name, and nothing popped up. There were no charges at that moment for his estate. Everything was in my name, even though I had never even had interaction with those officers on that date. So it's all, it's all just bull, you know? So I was like, how me and her were like, how can you have a man on an ankle monitor and put him in jail for three months without any charges? She was like, uh, uh, um, I don't know. I can't tell you that. So we left there. I deposited all my documents. I didn't get any records back. Um, I left there and my husband went to, traveled to Ohio to work um, with uh, this people who are supposed to be our friends, right? They were definitely not our friends, but um traveled to work with them. And I stayed in Missouri and I was doing my documents and I was sending out mail. I, again, I had them in a certificate of non response. So I decided I want to go see my husband. I went up to, um, I took a bus up to Ohio to meet my husband. And then we, he wanted to leave Ohio and come back. And he had a court date, uh, their court date. You know, I had been holding court again by paper. I revocated everything and, um, with Missouri and, he was supposed to be there on August 4th. The day we're arrested at that hotel, he is supposed to be at that court. But we had found out that there was no charges and there was no reason for him to have an ankle monitor. There was no reason for him to even be at the court. So why would he go to court? They're not giving us paperwork and there's no charges, right? So we get to Tulsa. I, we, I flew. I went through the Department of Homeland Security and TSA checkpoint. There was no warrants. Otherwise, it would have picked me up from there because it would have been in their system. And I had an affirmation of identity and my Bible. And that's what I used to travel. I boarded an airplane. We traveled from Ohio. Our flight was to Dallas. So, so they, let, they let you through Homeland Security with um, a Bible and um, they didn't require any ID besides the, that? My Bible and my affirmation of identity signed by the notary that says, oh, you know, cool. my authenticated birth bond number with the Department yeah. of Homeland Security. I have mm -hmm. that in there. The fact that we're foreign nationals, um, just like. Can you share that document? Are you I willing can. to share that? Yeah, you'll okay. see it in the body cam footage. If you were to watch the YouTube channels, they're like affirmation of identity. Where do they get this stuff? How do they get a notary to sign this? I mean, they're making fun of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, are you serious? Uh, you know, they just don't know. And I bless their heart. Right. Bless their heart. Bless okay. them. You know? Well, yeah, we, we have to, we, you know. As sad as it is, we have to pray for those people. I do. Every night yeah. I pray for them. 
Yeah, to get that evil out of that heart, their ignorance out of their yes. spirit, because that's what it is. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and they just don't don't know any other way. And it's no. so sad. People it's live so life sad. like that. Yeah, they're missing it's a out. Program. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, they're corrupt in life. It's not that they're missing out. They're corrupt in everybody else's life. Yeah. You know, we're just trying to live free. Leave us the hell alone. Mm -hmm. We know what the hell to do. Yeah. You know, when we go when we travel in a car that we probably should uh, have airbags since they're available, a horn, headlights, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the basic fundamental stuff of survival out on the road. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So um, we traveled to Oklahoma and my the whole reason I traveled to Oklahoma, right? was because Oklahoma has a big IRS building. Tulsa has an IRS building and it's an FBI building. And I wanted to settle the accounts. Mm. I had gotten the executor EIN. I had done the executor notice. I had sent it to all the heads of the state. Um, and we had made our trust again. Like everything was back in place, right? So, and I had the authenticated birth certificates again, all of them. And they had given my babies birth certificates and social security cards um, when they took them. So, um, yeah, um, you'll see on August 4th, we were arrested. They said there was a warrant. There was never any warrant. Yeah. He still has the ankle bracelet on, even though we found out there was no reason for him to, because we weren't trying to destroy anybody's property. We wanted it off peacefully. You know, my whole goal was to go to the IRS building, do the 1099 A's, whatever, whatever documents I needed. They have a advocate there to help you walk you through whatever you might need. I just wanted to settle the accounts. Okay, so that was my intent. We were literally off the plane 10 to 12 hours before they busted in the hotel room and said there was warrants. And I, I just asked questions and he literally says, he's charging this day for obstructing an officer for asking questions. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's the gist of everything okay, that we've been now, doing now, the past two Now, years. Which, which officer was that? Because two officers entered the room. One came in with a shield, and then the other yeah. one came in beside him. So was it the one on beside him? Um, well, the one that was in charge of it, his, he goes by loving. And the uh -huh. other one that was like his second in command was Franks. Um, there was five guys. I've got Shock, Ward, uh shock ward maury loving and franks and i have all five of their body cams and i haven't went through the other threes yet i just went through sure. the first two so i mean and over and over again they say there's no warrant you know and so i i just i don't get how they did it and we were held for six months my husband's still there again like i said we never contracted since we wouldn't contract or um, give them any of our information it, which the the bonds woman who let him out on that ankle monitor called. She's the one who called and said that there was a warrant. Well, they just took her word on it instead of, you know, actually having a real one. And uh, they never showed it to me, which they have to do. And um, provided them with the social security number. Well, Title 42, subsection 408 says no one has the authority to compel or use those numbers without your consent. And they have held us for involuntary servitude, making pecuniary gains using those numbers without our consent. We never gave them that information. It came from somebody else. So they were employing us without just a compensation, which is also a violation of their constitution. Their constitution says that you cannot go to jail for a debt. And that's all this is. It's a debt. And we don't, we're not obligated on that debt, you know? So, um, you know, that's in all my paperwork. I did so much in there. I did notice of counsel, memorandum of law, memorandum of fraud, affirmations in support of commercial discharge, because any presentment I did get, I endorsed it and I sent it back to them, um, you know, and I deposited a Bible, a whole Bible. I said, this is my trust. This is my security instrument. And this is my bond. And they didn't care. I had mailed it to them. I, and, um, so, I mean, the whole time I stood on my square and I said, because I, I was not backing down this time. You've already taken everything from me. You've taken two years. No one is going to get me to that because the public defender came and brought me pictures of my children, my, my babies. And they were like, we know all about your past. You were you did this. You did this. You did this. You did some college. And uh, we know more importantly, you're a mother and sat down pictures of my children. And I was like, what? 
So they're trying to coerce me already to contract. And they're using, I said, are you not an employee for Tulsa County? And I said, is the prosecutor an employee for Tulsa County? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, is the judge not a pro uh, employee for Tulsa County? I said, do I got a contract with you? Cause I don't want one. And y'all that creates a monopoly against me. I don't have, I, you know, y'all, you all have hard cards. I don't have one. I try it cited title 15 USC subsection two, the monopolizing of trade. You know, they're prohibiting me from anything. They're, they're forcing me to be this dead entity that I know for a not, I'm not. And I already went my, against my conscious and my heart and everything I believed in one time before. And I had vowed, like I told God, I will never do that again. I will never do that again. I'm not, I will never say that I'm that, that name or I'm not that person again. And so this time I was determined, no matter how long they kept me a year, two years, whatever I was going to stand. And I was not going to contract with them. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I stood, I, uh, the last thing I did was I filed, uh, counterclaims and charges on them for genocide of a family, deprivation of rights and the color, color of law. I sent it into, uh, Connolly, Colm Connolly. He's, um, for district of Delaware. They accepted my habeas corpus, but they never acted on it or sent me anything back. And, um, uh, it's on PACER right now as us, the petitioners, Colby hyphen Blake, and Kayla, I think Nicole, House of Fitz, and Full Life Sue Juris. We are the petitioners in that claim. Um, anybody can go on Pacer and see it. So I, I'm just trying to get remedy. I'm trying to get relief. I want this all to end. I know there's a plan and a purpose for God, and he's going to use me for good and use this for good. And their plan was to harm me, but they only made me stronger. So that's the gist of my story. And that those words are all true and faithful and correct. And again, if you maybe if you feel like I made a mistake, you can come and uh, we can address that issue, but I don't want any controversy. I don't want any problems. And, you know, God's the Lord's prayer. He says, you know, I'm supposed to forgive them as I've been forgiven. And I do, I forgive them. I pray for them every day um, because where I'm going is going to be amazing. And if they continue to do this to people and hurt others for no reason, for just for federal reserve notes, debt notes, then, you know, they're, their eternal soul is not going to be in a good place. So, and that's, that's, that's what I mean. I'm sad for them because they'll never get to experience the power of the Holy spirit and how good it feels to um, have God on your side, you know? So may I? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Hey, this is Marshall Meekham here in Utah. I'm sorry. First of all, that you've had to go through all this mess. It's unbelievable. But unfortunately, you got into the worst place in the whole country, and it's in my jurisdiction that in Page, Arizona, you're talking about a place that used to have a group called RUSA, and the cops got so involved against those people because of the, the you know, the sovereign citizen or whatever you want to call it, uh, mm -hmm. American state nationals or whatever. They had a group there, and the police there was actually went to war against those people. And, uh, wow. and you can look this up when I give you a name, you can look it up, you can Google it and you can get your own story. His name is Bill Faust. He was kind of their, their coordinator or their leader. F-O-U-S-C? Yeah, B, B, uh, F-A-L-S-T, Faust. Okay. Faust. Okay, and when, and when you do that, and I'm gonna tell you what happened, and you'll see how they twisted around where it's something totally different, but they did, ki they did, they killed him. They brought, they, they actually contracted out or one of their deputies went over to his house, shot him in the face with uh, uh, bullets that are illegal in the gun. They, they, oh. they blew it. They wanted to make sure they uh, make sure they blew his face off so they couldn't be recognized. He went, he went to the hospital and of course he was dead, but. Uh, oh my gosh. What do you think they did to the cop? Nothing. Nothing. They did Gave him nothing. a medal. Yeah. And it was all it was all just a big trick. It was just a big setup. And anyway, read about that. And okay. I, Thank we've you. Got, we've got a judge down there now that uh, he watches all this stuff for Is him. is that from the book about the horse? Um the oh gosh, I don't know. There's a guy that wrote a book and then he did that to him. I can't. Like, I'm not, sorry, I'm not sure if there's ever, I can't a book. think of the name. Oh. There could be a book by now, but that was a terrible thing. And I, I will say that Bill Faust was, uh, he was, he was their leader, but he's one of the, he kind of, uh, stood out heavy. And so 
the town, he become the town's enemy, the police's enemy. So you got to be in the worst place in the world for that to happen to you there. That's just a terrible place that way. And I've got a guy down there that watches it and he tells me stories about that all the time of things that's happened to people there. I'm sorry that you had to go through all that bit, but it, it's a terrible place. And we're, we're going to try to do something about that place, but we, mm -hmm. we haven't got anything done yet. I mean, it's, it, we fight the same battle you're fighting and unfortunately yeah. it goes on and on and on. Yes. Yeah. That's why it's important groups like this, you know, like we all can support each other because I know that God has this, his purpose for me from now on is to help others. Like, Whoever's going through this, once I, you know, it, overcome this situation, that's going to be my life goal. Oh, like, well, there's well, so much corruption everywhere. If there's anybody going to go to heaven, it'll be you. <laughs> oh. I have a question for you guys. Has anybody so ever much. seen, has anybody ever seen a lawful warrant that has the imprinted seal, the wet signature and um, accompanied by like an affidavit? Have, has, that. have we ever seen that? Because that's how the warrants are supposed to be. That's a lawful warrant. Yep. Have you guys ever seen a legit warrant? And signature. I've I've actually seen my judgment and sentence that's wet ink signed by my judge in blue ink. Wow. It's in the archives. Yeah. Yeah, he signed in blue ink, not black. Wow. He your knows. copy, it's black. Yep. I mean, yeah. I think we need to do something where we set up something to educate these these guys, these um actors on the truth. Well, and that's another reason I put those videos on there. Uh, it wasn't uh, in any malicious intent. My intent for putting up those videos is to one, have those officers educated. They need to be educated on those things. You know, those documents, those are securities with the Security and Exchange Commission. Those are big penalties that they're facing for what they did, you know, and like just labeling people sovereign citizens, just saying there's a warrant. I mean, they really, really need to be held, you know, held accountable no. and they need to be trained better obviously yeah. they didn't were not trained well at all and you know and it's for us it's for men like us if, if you you guys feel like maybe i did something that i shouldn't have done or you know like it's like educational for our experiences you know what i mean you've done you've done everything right i mean you're like the only i i can't believe what you've done there's nothing you've done wrong it's it's just uh, yeah, because absolutely. we're we're up against the enemy you know anything that any any hint of they call it sovereign citizen then they they label you as that but it's because they're not educated they don't know and we don't even call ourselves that you no. know it's them labeling us putting that label on us when we don't even that doesn't even come out of our mouths title eight subsection 1001 is it immigration and nationality act it's there i even put it as an exhibit on the record anybody can, it's it's there you know what i mean uh, it's lawful it's i just yeah, I, can't I mean believe they just don't want to read <laughs> you know all, all the thing is that they need to learn that all crimes are commercial there's no way that we can we're not we're not commercial they're, they're committing the crimes against us they're committing the commercial crimes against us we're not you know yeah. we have the right it's slavery it's mm -hmm. it's involuntary servitude what, what, is what's what, funny is what they're that, doing attempted kidnapping charge it's literally under peace officers and public defenders it's like what they're to be held to not me like it said it says it right there you know i didn't take an oath i've been asking this for two years where's my oath of office where's my contract where's my appointment if i've ever done any of these things it's a mistake i rescind it you know like and bring forth the evidence nobody's brought me anything ever i've never seen anything that i've done except for when i was forced to contract to get out of jail and that was my mistake but literally when you're in there for six months time and just you've done everything prior to not go to jail and to secure your rights and then they put you in there and then they're muting you out and you just they left me with no other option you know I mean that was my only option was to act in their play and I had even put that in my paper I don't want to act in your play I'm not I'm not a fictitious entity you know so the only way yeah I mean like with all the girls when I was in jail recently, they all told the story. They, 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 first of all, they don't have any, um, they don't have any lawyers information in there on purpose because they want everybody to be, to have a public defender. And the only way you get out is if you have to take a plea, even if you're innocent. Yes. Yes. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. and it's they all for them. And it's so they make money off those pleas. Yeah. All There's conflict a, a of girl interest. in there 
right now she was held in solitary serve to, or, I mean, in solitary confinement for, for a whole year because she shot a man who came into her home and was trying to steal something from her. And she was kept in there for a year. And then they came at her. She was taking it to jury trial. She was like, there's no way they're going to convict me of this because they charged her with like um, a very violent, like murder charge. And uh, then they, they said, if you please, we'll get you out. This kid oh. is the title to my Lexus. And as you can see, it has a gold border. Oh, and you can I love see that. It is exempt. <laughs> and uh, it is in my trust name. Awesome. Uh, and you see it's free and clear. That's amazing. That is really and amazing. I'm giving this away with the car to anybody who can go to my certified official clerk's record and reporter's record and use the Texas Penal Code uh, at the time of July 10th, 9th, or 2021, or I'm sorry, 2001, and prove beyond a reasonable doubt that I committed a third degree felony under Texas law at that time. I will give you my car if you can prove it. <laughs> there you go. Alexis. <laughs> Alexa, with a clean title that's already gold. That's amazing. Yeah, that's my challenge to everybody. Um, I put my money where my mouth is <laughs> because I am actually innocent. Uh, was I drinking and driving? Yeah. Um, did prison do me good? Absolutely. It turned my life completely around, made me a different person. And praise all for that. Uh, right. And here I am today. And this is the result of that. So for all that time, Time I did 14 years and two months flat. Do not for one scintilla of a moment feel sorry for me because I used it to educate myself and I took it as an opportunity. Uh, I could either go to college and probably have a PhD by now, or I could litigate and try to get myself out. And that's what I did. And I exhausted every avenue, you know, just like Kayla has anything and everything. I was throwing stuff at them they've never seen before. And that to this day, they still cannot, pursuant to their own laws, prove that I'm incorrect or wrong uh, because I'm correct. And the reason they can't do this is because every D felony DWI conviction uh, that I've read since 19 September 1st, 1994 to August 31st, uh, 2005 um, are not written correctly in the charge, which is the complaint the indictment, nor charged to the jury. They're all written as misdemeanors with habitual misdemeanor enhancements under 12 Texas Code of Criminal Procedure 1242B or 1243B or uh, habitual felony offenses enhancements under 1242D. So that's what's going on with that. And I'm sorry to dive into that, but I just want to allow the audience here to show that, you know, when we make these claims, and I make all mine under oath as well, uh, we will back them up, okay? Because what we're saying is 100% true. So all you out there who are on the other side of the fence, those ignorant, um, poorly trained officers who are trained to be policy enforcers for the municipal charter, because that's exactly what you're doing, for a for-profit corporation, and if you don't believe us, go do your own research and look it up on Dun & Bradstreet because it's there. Uh, um, you know, everything we're telling you is absolute truth. So that's why I decided to do that and put that up is, hey, you know, here's a car. You can Google it. It's worth 10 grand all day long. All day long. And I'm putting it up. So Mark A. Stroud, my original uh, trial prosecutor, you're more than welcome to come back and retrial this case, and we can do a live YouTube like we are right now. Uh, Mark Kent Ellis, my uh, sentencing judge, you're more than welcome to come back. My uh, now disbarred trial attorney, J.T. Wilhite, you're more than welcome to come back, and we can re retry this in the public sphere with the evidence that you have. And uh, yeah, let's play this out again. Let's have a rehearing. <laughs> a retrial. Okay. So um, I'm sure Kayla would be more than happy to do the same thing. Now, I want to ask you this because, you know, I don't know what your husband does, but I'm going to presume 
that apparently whatever he did was very well paying uh, to support five children, yourself, to be able to travel, buy property. You said you had a multi-thousand dollar tractor that you had to give up as well. And I know the Garden of Eden you created, uh, you know, <laughs> that costs money. And I totally understand that when you you finally have your destination, your home, that you put all your heart, passion, soul, creativity into this yeah. to make it, yes, to make it your bliss, your, your, your sanctuary, and to have that all destroyed and taken away from you and your family just disintegrated um, yeah. and held captive and given to other people and stabbed, jabbed. Man. Um, you are a true heroine on this Valentine's Day. Uh, I got to give it to all the girls on here, man. All y'all are fighters. You know, y'all are my heroes because, you know, y'all are getting down, doing it for yourselves, for your family, and for other people. And you're being uh, very selfless with this. So I applaud you for all that. So thank you. I, I digress. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you. <laughs> the world, really America. Do. The world appreciates people like you that will are willing to fight and not give up. And once you uh, you hit the brick walls, you you do get back up and you reach over the wall. And that's what you're doing right now for help. And hopefully we can be here to pull you over the wall and continue on your journey and get you the relief that you're seeking. Thank you so much. That means the whole <laughs> I appreciate you for having me on. Thanks, ladies. Yeah, you're awesome, Kayla. You're my hero. You're my yeah. hero, too. <laughs> Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. We're going to get your baby back, too, Rebecca. I know. I, and uh, she's she's one like step you. closer. Hey, Rebecca, give us a, while you're still here, give us an update on your circumstances as much as you're uh, able to okay. fail us. Um, okay. Well, like, I mean, I've been fighting this um, <clears throat> the whole time too, since they took her. Like I, when I, when it first happened, I was disabled and my whole family, you know, after they took Elizabeth, I mean, emotionally, I was just like disabled. And for a minute and my whole family's like, you have to have an attorney da da da. So we ended up hiring, hiring one to make my situation worse. I fired her. The judge wouldn't dismiss her um, you know, like for a year, you know, and during that time, I, even before that, I submitted all of my documents. They've seen everything. Then they called me a vexatious litigant, of course, because they didn't like what I was submitting. So basically, I mean, they, they haven't acknowledged anything, nothing about, you know, the truth of who this guy is that they gave her to. But so I had to basically surrender again and just play, I'm playing their game now, but um, it's finally being turned around. Like, you know, all the evidence that you know, she's in danger. It's finally being turned around because my sister actually had to um, hire an attorney and come in as an intervener. intervener. So it, it's being turned around now. He's, um, we have a hearing on the 21st. He's being held in contempt because he hasn't done anything that they've told him to do. She's not getting good grades. Um, he hasn't taken her to the therapy, even though like I didn't, I didn't tell them they could put her in therapy, but that's part of the order. He, we, I got all the medical records and those school records that he hasn't done it once. Um, he was supposed to talk to me about parent time. He hasn't done that. Her grades are like D's, D's and F's. We have that. So, um, and like all the time that I was supposed to be given, they haven't given me any of it. And so um, like, she, we're going to try and get a return during the hearing at the hearing. Um, all the time that he hasn't given me, it's like 122 days. Um, like that's, that's the goal is to get a return on the 21st. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, the, it's being turned around to actually get the, uh, you know, get the high, the spotlight off me, even though I didn't do anything, it was all lies. The spotlight's off me now and it's on him. And I don't think he's going to show up to the hearing. He lives in Oregon. If he doesn't show up to the hearing, then we can get a writ of assistance. So, uh, yeah. Wow. That is such good news. Uh, but I man. did get the birth certificate in the mail today. I was, um, I told Felicia and. Kayla that um so I, I showed you that other um you know how I got final orders because his name's not his real name is not even on her birth certificate it's um a different name anyway I got the birth the, the order said I can change her name take him off the birth certificate I got that birth certificate today so it has awesome. his name's removed from the birth certificate and it, it, her last name is now my name beautiful so Man. so yeah what what a what a Valentine's Day gift 
<laughs> I know, huh? That's so true. <laughs> right? Awesome. Yeah. Man. Wow. But Beautiful. every, but all the suffering, I, but all, all the suffering in the lives, I know it's all part of like what Kayla was saying. It's, it's something I had to go through because I'm supposed to help others. Absolutely. So, you know, I don't, I'm not, I don't sit there and think I'm a victim. I'm just grateful for the experience. Um, cause I know it's part of my journey and it's part of what God wants me to do. Absolutely. Yeah. We're all here because, uh, you know, you ladies are the trailblazers for, I think what could be a really big thing, just like bonds for the oh, win yeah. for, uh, for you sure. know, the school board and stuff. Uh, so mm -hmm. Let, let's hope this is the germination of something that we can uh, stop that's widespread across the country is, you know, human trafficking and the disintegration of the, of the institutional family. Uh, it's horrible. It's all human trafficking. And I, yeah, I feel like we're going to be part of changing the laws. I mean, the, the actual laws, right? I mean, none of the stuff right. that they hold us, hold us on is actually, it's not, it doesn't even apply to us. It applies to the actors. All of that applies to the actors and they, and that's the whole education that we need to teach these guys is that we, we aren't bound by those things. They are. Yeah. Um, you know, because we're creations of God. So, you know, the hierarchy of creation is law. So it's very simple. If you look at it like that, we, we were created by God. We created governments, we created corporations and all these corporations are not tax exempt. So it's all taxable events. Everything that's going on is a taxable event. And, um, it's all a conflict of interest because it's only about money. Yep. Right here is the new telegram group. Stop human trafficking. And it's called Christ child yeah. recovery investigation support team. Okay. Awesome. All right. So when you want somebody to join this group, it's called stop human trafficking. And I have no idea why that was still available. You, you would have thought that would have been the first one taken, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. So uh, when you want to, uh, any, any, everybody's welcome to this, uh, to join at any time. I sent you all your girls, the links to this. That's currently who uh, is in here. Please join. Thank you. Yeah, as you see your titles. Because mm -hmm. you're all heroines. So thank, thank you. you, Floyd. You're more than welcome. Um, anybody else have anything else to add? Close. Uh, do you want to give out your emails, uh, contact information, whatever that looks like, um, support? Um, yeah, go ahead. Um, Rebecca, go ahead. I'll let, I'll, I'll let leave our uh, illustrious hostess last oh well my email is just rebecca r-e-b-e-c-c-a and then press switch p-r-e-s-t-w-i-c-h at gmail that's fast oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i have a proton mail too but it's like just it's longer so this one's just easier i know like google and gmail is like we're, you know we're trying to get away from that i have proton stuff but i mean it's okay like yeah that's that's my main one that i always check and she's Rebecca Prestwich on Telegram as well. Yeah. Yeah. And you can reach her. She's uh, in the Fearless Floyd Show on Telegram as well. So uh, if for some reason y'all didn't get that, Fearless Floyd Show at yahoo.com. Uh, and I will relay any messages or materials. We're trying to get uh, away Deloy. I have protons. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, that's, that's my main one that I always check. Okay. Hey, Deloy. Prestwich on telegram as well yeah. yeah and you can reach her she's uh in the fearless floyd show on telegram as well so uh, <laughs> for some reason y'all didn't get that fearless floyd show at yahoo.com uh, and i will relay any messages or materials uh, yes sir <laughs> yeah yeah you can get a hold of me at dmc hbac at yahoo.com yeah okay and that where, you, where are you currently at, Deloy? Aren't you in the four corners? Uh, say that again. Uh, where are you currently located at? Aren't you in the four corners area? No, I'm yes, in sir. the northern end of uh, Utah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. DMC, at, at that feedback. Okay. Oh, yeah. I better turn that one off. Okay. There we go.
Hey, appreciate letting me listen to this. I, you know what? I got nothing but tears for these ladies. They, oh, they all work very hard at what they're trying to do. I, I just hope we can do whatever we can to get it done. Yeah, the tenacity is just overwhelming with these two uh, ladies. Actually, all of them. So, yeah, thank you for being on here, Deloy. Um, send me a text tomorrow. Uh, I'll get you on the show. Uh, Eric will be on at 1. And then I have Mel coming on at uh, 2 o'clock. So, yeah, come on, join us. Thank you. You're more than welcome. All right. Uh, Kayla, Nicole Fitz, the floor is yours. You want to unmute yourself? Oh, okay. Uh, you can reach me at Kayla Nicole Fitz. That's K A Y L A N I C O L E F I T T S at gmail.com, or there is a YouTube channel at Kayla Nicole Fitz 5878 um, on YouTube. And that's where you can see like the body cam footage or um, other videos. And then I have a website. And it is B Colby, C O L B Y F B Colby F dot Wix site, W I X S I T E dot com slash P notice. And um, that's been up since like March 2021. And it has all the actors that we mentioned, not all of them, but the beginning from Arkansas, those actors, their information, their fax number, their email, their address, like all that information is on there. And then if you want to, if there's anybody willing to contact the David L. Moss Detention Center or the Sheriff's Office to help call and get my husband out, I would appreciate it. Uh, the David L. Moss Detention Center number is 918-596-8900. And the sheriff is 918-596-5608. Sheriff at tcso.org. Um, if we can like bombard them with phone calls, emails, whatever, to try to get him out because there's no reason for him to sit in there, I would really appreciate it. Um, so any on, help would be appreciated. On that note, um, if you will for me, can you put that together, um, uh, like on some PowerPoint presentation? Uh, and if you have some type of like form letters that we can also email and mail or fax, mm -hmm. uh, I'll have you back on tomorrow at noon from noon to one. And okay. we can show everybody that and just kind of keep touching up on this because this is, this is freaking horrible, man. I mean, and is there any way we can send this video, Floyd, to like, um, you know, like send, put it on their website or send it to the clerk or something like that, letting them know uh, that you um, can, you, we're yeah, you can send them, them the link. You can send them the link. Mm -hmm. So I sent the YouTube. I sent the um, body cam footage to the sheriff already on Friday. I gave them a notice uh -huh. that hey, you have my property. I want him released. There's no charges. There's no nothing. It's all fraud. You need to release him now. And I gave him like a a note of simple notice, um, that it's treason. You know, I mean, you have to take an oath of office and you're committing treason right now. So I sent them a notice Friday. I sent them the body cam footage and I told them I was uploading it to where everybody can see it. And well, so you only need two witnesses to, uh, at, to declare to, treason. Yeah. 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 So I would hire me some notal mobile notaries. Okay. If you've got the funds, yeah, you know, 20 bucks a pop. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I, he I, has a court hearing on the 22nd and I was going to hire a, a notary or a stenographer or something to come into the court and hear it. I'm going hard. to internal revenue services and getting some the forms that I need. I'm going to slap them down. Let's let's handle the tax situation. You know, let's let's do the taxes right now. Trustee, you know, he's a trustee. We've already made a fiduciary appointment. He's got form 56s. They're not honoring nothing, you know, so. I got some ideas, but I mean, I can bounce them off of whoever will listen, not live, you know, because I don't want right. to tip my hand, but I mean. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Strategy, strategy, strategy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, now on your, right here on your YouTube, and I left this up for a reason, your about page. Mm -hmm. Go in here and put your description in here, all your contact information, oh, a little okay. bit, tell a little bit about your story. Okay. Because uh, we're going to already see you've got, you know, more subscribers now than you did when I just clicked on this. So thank you. Oh, guys yeah. I just went from 78 to 79. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, well, you guys I think are it was awesome. like 74 so when I first clicked on it. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, uh, 
Awesome. I appreciate y'all so much. I know if you watch the body cam footage, she's like her fan base. I never had anything uploaded before. Like I had started videos um, in March, 2021. And I was telling everybody what the birth certificate is, what the social was. I was going through all the codes and statutes and like telling them about it. And I had like eight videos up and then they threatened me and put in an order, like a gag order, which was all pretend anyway, but my husband begged me to take it down. So I took all my stuff down and I didn't do social media at all. Yeah. So now I'm just like, you know, I felt like God was telling me to do that. Someone had told me my website was not equitable, but you know, I brought equity and they denied it. And I, I've been trying to just close the account. So I, I did a website just for my own, you know, my babies are mine. I claimed them online. You know, they're mine. That's my property. So I appreciate all of you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for having me Floyd. And I hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you. Happy Valentine's day to you. Everybody, you. Um, if you speak to your husband today, wish him a happy Valentine's Day. Tell somebody who's, you know, done some real time, some real heinous circumstances. So, yeah, until, that's a lot yeah. of time. Ugh, I commend you for that. Yeah, he's doing hard time. You know, I'm good. my time is easy. You know, I'd already knew how to do the time, so it wasn't difficult. Um, you can you can judge one's intelligence by how quickly they adapt to their circumstances there. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, I can easily, you know, blend in like a, a chameleon. So with that, Kayla and Nicole, yeah, thank you very much for being here. Um, man, so what a, you know, I want to say what an awesome story, but you know, uh, <laughs> Terrible what a, story. What an awesome, <laughs> what an awesome present presentation you did. So let's, let's, let's do that. Thank you very much. The telegram. New Telegram channel for everybody. If you're watching, stop human trafficking. Stop human trafficking. Go to Telegram. Stop human trafficking. Join it. We're going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. You. We're not going to try. We're going to make a difference. We are. <laughs> That's right. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Kayla, we'll talk again. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow at noon. Good night, everybody. Thank Bye. you for being here. The Thank you. Show, Yahoo dot com, Floyd Show dot com. It's not behind me now. It's on my other. <laughs> uh, like, subscribe, share, leave a comment below. Um, I will put all the information for Kayla in the comments below in the description. Rather, uh, if you want to see the video I did with Rebecca, go to my very first live to five. Go to the one hour mark, and that's where Rebecca's story starts. And it definitely does not end there because she will be back on. And hopefully we're going to do a live video of her and her first encounter with her daughter, Elizabeth. I think that would be just. Oh, uh, yeah. That would be okay, amazing. For sure. thing. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. I would love to see that. Yes. We yeah, all. Would. It's coming soon. And it's yes, coming soon. And so is yours, Kayla. We're gonna, I know. We're going to get this squash here soon. I, I believe it. I believe it. And I receive it. You know, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Um, would you, either of you care to say a prayer? I, I don't mind. Uh, Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this day. And I thank you even more for this moment and these wonderful, beautiful people that you brought me um, brought into my life. I thank you so much for them. And I thank you for the men and women that are watching this and that receive this message. And if you can just put all the right people that need to see this, um, to watch this, I would, I love you so much. I lift up your name and praise. And I, I just thank you again. I think that you're, I ask that you will be done on this day and forevermore. So be it. So be it. So be it. And all so things it. It shall be. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla, Rebecca, Deloitte, and Erica, all my viewers, subscribers, future viewers and subscribers. Like, subscribe, share, leave a comment below. Thank you, girls. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Good night. <laughs>